in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question longest substring without repeating characters this is a medium problem and we see bunch of like given a string h find the length of longest substring without repeating characters this is the first example in this example we're given this string in this string the longest substring without repeating character is ABC. The length of ABC is 3, so we have to written a 3. For these examples, we're given this string. In this string, we see that longest substring without repeating character is B. The length of B is 1, so we have to written 1. For this string, the the longest substring without repeating character is WKE or KWE. The both having the same length. So we have to return 3. For this input, we have to return 3. Now, how to solve this problem? This is a popular coding interview question. Now, let's talk about the brute force approach. In brute force approach, what we will do, we will generate all possible substring from the given string. Then we will check every single substring. If the substring contains unique character, we will keep track the substring of maximum length. If the substring contains unique character. But this solution will take O of n q time complexity and this is not super efficient we can transform this time complexity to a linear time complexity using the concept of hash math data structure now let's see how to solve this problem in linear time complexity using hash math data structure let's assume this is our hash math data structure and we will have a variable let's call it answer in this variable we will store the longest substring the length of longest substring initially let's assume the length of longest substring is zero now we're going to declare two pointer two pointer initially points to the first uh, to the first character in the string so left and right will point to the first character so left and right pointer is pointing to the first character now we're gonna check the the character at pointer right we see the character at pointer right is p p does not exist in the hash map so let's insert this character p into hash map we will insert the character as key and as value we will insert the index the index of p is zero so let's insert here zero now let's calculate the length length of this substring in this range from left to right we will we will apply our logic to maintain a condition such that in this range we will have always unique characters remember it we will have always unique characters in this range from left to right in this range we have unique characters the length of substring uh, p is 1 so let's update answer with 1 we will take the maximum length in this answer variable now the maximum length of substring is 1 and that is p now let's move right pointer to the next element so right will point to this element or uh, to this character w this is a string not an array now we see w does not exist in our hash set so let's insert w as key and the value as index the index of w is 1 so let's insert here 1 we see in this range we have we have unique characters as we mentioned earlier we'll apply some logic such that in this range we will have always unique characters now in this range we have two characters 
this substring a p double the length of this substring is 2 so let's update answer with 2 at this point the maximum length of the substring with the repeating character is 2 now let's move right to the next character so right will point to double now we see that in this range we have duplicates we have to maintain our properties that in this range we have all the unique characters so what i will do we will get the value from hash map for this character double we have one it means that on the left we have this character double and for this character the duplicates occur now we're going to move the left to one plus one okay to the right of this character so let's move left right here now we see that in this range from left to right we have unique character that is w now let's update the value for this character w so let's update one with two now let's calculate the length length is one we already have here two so we don't care because we have here the length that is lower than whatever value we have in our answer variable now let's move right to the next so right will point here we see k k does not exist in our hash map so let's add k in our hash map and the index of k is 3 let's add it 3 we saw that we are moving left left if the duplicates occur with the value with the with the corresponding value for current character in our hash map but this formula will not work always for this type of input a b b a this algorithm will not work so we'll see why it will not works we'll we will see when we will get to this example now in this range we have unique character right in this range we have unique character so let's update this value answer and we have here two already let's move right to the next right will point here now we see that e does not exist in our hash map so let's insert e so e will insert as key and value the index of e that is 4 now we see that in this range we have all unique characters the length of this substring is 3 so let's update answer with 3 let's move r to the next so r will point to this character now we see duplicates in this range we have double right so we'll get the index of this double we have in our in our hash map okay we'll keep tracking that the previous uh, the occurrence the immediate occurrence on the left of double that is this double at index 2 so we'll move left to we'll move left to this 2 plus 1 or we'll move this left to the next of double so left will point here the uh, we see that now we see that in this range we have unique characters so let's update the value answer with 3 we have already 3 here this is working we're moving left to the to the next of our occurring elements uh, the the index exists in our hash map but it will not always just works for this type of input we'll see when we'll get to these examples now in the next iteration we'll move r to the next element or to the next character we see there is nothing on the right we're out of the string boundary so we'll return the answer this is the this is the intuition of this of this solution and this this algorithm will take speak of in time complexity and this solution will take of in space complexity for this hash map data structure now let's try to understand the tricky part of this problem let's see how we will solve this problem for this type of inputs now let's see how to solve this problem for this type of inputs okay so left and right pointer will point to this first element and let's assume this is our hash map and initially in our answer variable will have zero because initially we assume that the length of longest substring with the repeating character is zero now we see it does not exist in this hash map so let's insert so let's insert 
a as key and 0 the index as value. Now let's move right to the next character. So right will point here. We see we see b. b does not exist in the hash map. So let's insert b and the index of b is 1. We mentioned that in this range from left to right we will have all edges unique characters. We will apply our logic to maintain these properties. In this range we will have all edges unique characters. Before moving R to the next and before adding to this hash map, first we have to calculate the length of this substring when we inserted A onto the hash map and the length is 1. So let's calculate the length first. 1. Now let's move right to the next right will point here. Now we see B does not exist in our hash map so let's insert B and the index of B is 1. Now we see in this range we have unique characters. Now let's calculate the length of this substring. The length is 2. So let's update answer with 2. Let's move right to the next. Now we see duplicates. Now how to how to shift left such that we will have no duplicates in this range. So we'll move left to the to the right of this B. Okay, this is the immediate left occurrence of B. So we have to move one step forward from this B so we can move to this value plus one. So at index two. Let's move uh, left right here. Now let's update the value for B that is two. Now we see that in this range we have unique unique characters so let's calculate the length of this substring that is one we have already two now let's move right to the next right will point here we see that we see that a exists in our hash map so what i will do we will tend to move left pointer to this index plus one a is the immediate left occurrent of a and we're keep tracking using this hash map so we'll We'll ignore this, we'll skip this, and we'll uh, move our left one step forward from this immediate left occurrence of this A. So, left will point here, right? But in that case, we'll have wrong answer, right? We'll have length 3, but the actual length of longest substring with a repeating character for this input is 2. To, to solve that issue, we will take maximum of, maximum of left and whatever value we have on our hash map plus one okay so zero plus one for this for this input so we'll take the maximum we'll see how to do this when we'll write the algorithm we'll not move left to this right we'll have left right here we'll take the maximum of the immediate left occurrence of a so zero plus one is one will not shift l here because one is less than two so L will stick to this index. Now, now let's now let's update the value for a with three. Let's update this value with three. And this is the algorithm, and this is the tricky part of this algorithm. Now let's calculate the length. Length is two. We have already here two. Now let's shift right to the next. We see we are out of the string boundary, so we're done. We'll return this answer. That is two. This is the algorithm. This algorithm will take big of in time complexity because we are traversing the string from left to right once and it will take off in space complexity for this hash map data structure. Now let's see the algorithm. First we are going to create a variable int answer equals to zero. In this variable we will store our answer. Now let's create a hash map data structure. So hash map will store as key character and as value integer. Let's call it map equals to new hash map. Now let's create a pointer left. Left will point to the first element initially and we'll have right pointer inside loop. So int right equals to zero. Right pointer will point to the first element initially. Well right is less than this is the condition right less than is dot length. Now right plus plus. Now let's get the current character. So char ch equals to is dot char at our current index right now if if current character does not exist in the hash map then we'll insert the current character into the hash map so if 
math dot contains key ch if current character does not exist then we will insert into the into the hash map so map that put ch and the index right else this else statement will be executed only if the current character exists in the hash map so in that case we have to shift left so left equals to left dot max we have to take the maximum for this type of input okay a b b a left and we have to get the value from hash map for our current character so map dot get c h and we have to add one to that because we have to uh, move one step uh, forward we have to move to the next of the the immediate the immediate left occurring of our current character now we have to update the index for our current uh, character so math dot put ch and write this line will be executed only if we have in this range from left to right all unique characters so here answer equals to math dot max answer and we have to calculate the length of our substring so right minus left plus one at the end we have to return the length of our longest substring with the repeating character so answer this algorithm will take a big of in time complexity and it will take big of in space complexity this loop will iterate in times and we might have for the worst cases in items so it will take of in space complexity this is the algorithm now let's run this algorithm okay it's accepted now let's submit it we have solved this problem we have successfully submitted this solution this is the optimum solution of this problem hope you have understood this video explanation if you have any question you can post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video welcome back to this video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question minimum repeating character replacement in this problem we are given a string and we are given an integer so in this problem we are given a string and an integer the integer value k tells us we can replace up to k letter to any other letter and we have to find out the longest substring that contains same letter by performing k operation in this given a string we see that this is the longest substring that contains a same letter by performing key operations here we have k equals to one it means that we can replace at most k letter to any letter we see that in this substring we can replace this one letter from b to a so by performing key operations in our uh, string we find out this uh, string this is the longest uh, string we have to return the length of the longest uh, string that is 4 so for this given string and k equals to 1 we have to return 4 if we are given this uh, string and k equals to 2 we have to find out longest uh, substring that contains uh, same letter by replacing 2 letter with any letter we see that in this a string this is the substring this substring contains same letter if we replace two letter with a so let's replace this b with a this b with a we see that by performing key operations in this a substring this substring contains same letter so we have to return the length of this substring which is five so for this given string and k equals to 2 we have to return 5 we may have multiple valid answer we have also this substring in this substring if we replace this a with b 
if we replace this a with b we get all the letter are the same in this substring also the length of this substring is 5 we have to return the length of the longest substring so for this given input the length of longest substring is 5 for example we are given this a string and this integer k k equals to 1 first let's talk about the nib solution in our nib solution what we are going to do we are going to find out all possible contiguous substring and we will check if that substring contains the same letter by performing key operations we will keep track of the length of that substring and we will return the length of maximum substring but this algorithm will take time complexity o of n square in order to find out all possible contiguous substring it will takes n square time complexity and this algorithm will take a space complexity o of n this is for hash map in order to compute whether the substring contains same letter or not by performing key operation this is not the efficient solution let's see how to solve this problem efficiently now let's see how to solve this problem efficiently in the efficient solution we are going to use sliding window technique let's declare the boundary of our window with left and right pointer left is pointing to this first character initially and right is pointing to this first character this is our current window we are going to apply some logic some formula in this window such that we will always just have same letter if we replace k letter now let's declare a variable max length in this variable we are going to store the length of longest substring that store the same letter initially max length equals to zero let's declare another variable max frequency equals to zero in order to compute the max frequency we need a map we need hash map data structure in this problem in the given string the string always contains only uppercase english alphabet we know that in english alphabet we have total 26 letter so we can find out the frequency instead hash map we can use an integer array of length 26 we will see that just for sake of understanding let's assume this is our map this is our map to compute the maximum frequency of a character in our current window in our current window this is our first character let's process this character let's store this character as key and as well the appearance of this character in our current window the appearance is one so the max frequency of a character in our current window is one let's change this value from zero to one now let's validate our current window now we're gonna check does this window contains same letter or same character if we perform key operations let's check that so if length this is the length of our current window from left to right we can find out this length if we apply this formula right minus left plus one we'll get the size of our window this is this length minus max frequency the maximum frequency of a character in our current window if we saw that this is greater than k it means that in our current window we have to replace more than k characters such that our current window contains the same letter so what we are going to do now we are going to shrink the size of our window we're going to move left to the next if we saw this condition is true we will see this if we check this condition for this window 0 minus 0 plus 1 minus max frequency this is the length this is max frequency this is not greater than k this is not greater than k k is 1 so our current window can contains same letter if we replace at most k characters now let's find out the length let's keep track the length of longest substring right minus left plus one equals to one so let's check the max we get here the max length equals to one so up until this point we have processed this substring and we saw that 
we find it max length equals to 1. Now let's move right to the next. We are sliding our window. Now this is our window. This is our current character. Let's increase the value of this character A since A exists. So let's recompute max frequency. We get 2. Now we are going to check this condition. This condition is evaluated false. If we saw this condition, length minus max frequency max frequency is less than or equals to k if this condition is a uh, true it means that in our current window if we replace at most k characters our window contains same letter so here 1 minus 0 plus 1 so the length is 2 2 minus max frequency 2 this is not greater than 1 this condition is false our window can contain same letter if we replace at most k characters let's take the length of this window we get 2 let's move forward here we see b b does not exist in our map so as key let's insert b and as value let's insert 1 the appearance of b is 1 now let's scan our map and let's find out the max repeating character we see max repeating character is a and the appearance is 2 so let's store in this variable max frequency equals to 2 it tells us in our current window in our current window we have a character which is repeating twice this is the maxed repeating character so what we are going to do now we are going to find out the number of characters that you have to replace since a is max repeating if we find out the length of this window that is 3 minus max repeating 2 equals to 1 it means that we have one characters that is not max repeating character so we have to replace that character we see that in this window we can replace at most k characters we see the non max repeating character we have here a oh, one we have one non max repeating character so we have to replace this character with a and we see this condition is true so what we're gonna do we're gonna find out the length length equals to a uh, three let's move out to the next we're sliding our window at this point we see that this is our current character let's increase the appearance of a so we get three so in this window we see that the maximum frequency of a is three let's find out the number of non max repeating characters we have in this window that we have to replace the length is four minus max repeating character is three so we have to scan this we'll get max frequency equals to three so 4 minus 3 equals to 1. We have one non-max repeating characters. So we can replace that. We have k equals to 1. So this window is valid. This window can contain same letter if we perform key operations. So let's take the length of this. So we get length equals to a 4. Let's move a forward. Let's move right to the next. Now right is pointing here. Let's compute the max repeating. Max repeating is 3. And here b the appearance of b is the appearance of b is 2 now in this window we see b appears twice let's find out the max repeating which is 3 so maximum frequency is 3 let's find out the length length minus max frequency we see 2 now we see that this window is not valid that's because we have to replace two characters to make our window that contains same letter we cannot make this window that this window contains same letter so what we are going to do we are going to shrink our window this condition is true now this condition is false so what we're gonna do we're gonna move left to the next so let's move left here and let's decrease the value of left so in our current window we see the max frequency equals to 2 now let's compute the non max repeating characters in our current window the size of this window is 4. We can find out that using this formula right minus left plus 1. Now let's find out the non max repeating characters. The number of non max repeating characters we have in this window. We see that the maximum frequency is 2, either for A or either for B. Now let's find out non max repeating character. The length minus max frequency equals to 2. So in this window, we have two non-max repeating characters. We have to replace two characters, but we can replace at most one character. So this window is not valid. So what we're going to do, we're going to move left to the next. So left is pointing here. Let's decrease the value of A. So we get here one. 
let's find out the non max repeating character here that is 3 the length is 3 minus max frequency is 2 which is 1 so this window is valid this window is valid we are moving by this condition if this condition is 2 we will move left to the next and we will decrease the appearance of left character so we are moving left so this window is valid let's find out the length length is 3 let's take the max of 3 and 4 we see the value we have here 4 that is maximum so we will not change it now let's move R to the next now what we're gonna do we're gonna find out the max repeating character we have to replace this value to with 3 because the appearance of B is 3 up to this point so here max frequency equals to max frequency equals to 3 so we get max frequency equals to 3 let's find out non max repeating characters number of non max repeating character we see we have 1 so length is 4 minus max frequency is 3 so we get here 1 we have 1 non max repeating character so we can replace that so this window is valid let's find out the length of this window the length of this window is 4 we have here already 4 so we're not going to change it now let's move R to the next R is now pointing here let's increase the value of A now we see that in this window we have to replace two characters but we can replace at most key characters so let's move left to the next left is pointing here so let's decrease the value of this so we get here two now we see still we have to replace two character to make this window that contains same character so let's move uh, here it will be changed with two let's move forward left is pointing here so the appearance of a is now one we have one a in this window so non max repeating character is a we have to replace one character so this window is valid so what we are going to do we are going to find out the length of this window the length of this window is 3 but we have already computed 4 let's move R to the next we see R is pointing out of bound so we are done we have solved this problem successfully we're going to written this max length 4 this is our algorithm this algorithm takes time complexity O of n times n is the length of our given uh, string times we don't have to create hash map we can create an array of size 26 integer array to keep track the frequency since we have only uppercase English alphabet we have to find out the maximum frequency by scanning our array so it will take 26 this is equivalent to O of n this is linear time and the space complexity is O of 26 we know that 26 is a constant value so space complexity is O of 1 this is the complexity analysis of our algorithm now let's implement this algorithm then we will see how to improve this time complexity from O of n times 26 to O of n first let's implement this algorithm now let's implement this algorithm first we're going to create an array to keep the frequency of a character in our window so preq n c equals to new int size 26 because our string content only uppercase english letter now let's create here two variable max length in this variable we will keep track the longest the length of longest substring that contains same characters after performing key operation so max length equals to initially zero and we're going to create a variable max frequency let's call it max f max f equals to zero initially now our sliding window left and right pointer so int left equals to zero left points to the first character initially let's use this right pointer inside this loop so right equals to zero right is pointing to the first character while right is less than is dot length then right plus plus right inside here what we're gonna do we're going to increase the frequency for our car for our current character so what is our current character that is is dot char at right this is our current character let's increase the frequency of this character so we have to find out the index of our current character if we substitute the ascii value of a we will get the index of our corresponding character and we will add one value if we find out a character we will add one in our frequency so here we have to increase frequency we'll get the corresponding index here we'll get the index for our character and we're going to increase value at that position in our frequency array 
Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna find out the maximum frequency here. So if we apply this int here, we don't have to create this variable. So max frequency equals to math dot max, the max of our current frequency and of this frequency. So let's use this right over here. So what we'll get here, we will get the maximum frequency we have to do here pre-increment before comparing we have to increase this value right so here we'll get the maximum frequency now what we're gonna do we're gonna check the length minus max frequency if we saw this is greater than k that means our current window is invalid so here we're gonna check this condition so here if if this condition is if this condition is true that means our current window is invalid we have to move left pointer to the next and here let's compute the length of our current window so length equals to right minus left plus one length of our current window here what we're gonna do we're gonna decrease the appearance of our current character who is we have at left pointer so here let's copy this quote from here now here let's use this left okay here what we're doing we are subtracting so let's subtract here we can subtract by using this post increment right below here what we're gonna do we are going to move our left pointer to the next and we have to find out the frequency the max frequency we have now so max frequency equals to find max frequency find max frequency we're going to provide our frequency we're finding out the max frequency in our current window here actually we don't have to create this variable so we can remove this line when we hit this line this window from left to right this window is valid in this window we have all the same letter by performing at most key operation so we have to find out the length of this window right minus left plus one we're going to take the max of our max length that we already computed so math dot max max length and this right minus left plus one we're going to take the max and let's update this variable max length with this value okay when you're done at the end we're going to return this max length return max length we have to implement this function now let's implement this function right below here so public int find max frick it takes an array so nums we can call it frequency frequency table int max equals to initially zero now for int in in frick let's take the max so max equals to math dot max max and our current value n this should be uppercase m right below here let's written the max this is the maximum frequency this is our algorithm to solve this problem this algorithm takes time complexity of n times 26 and it takes a space complexity o of 26 we can improve this time complexity for o of n times 26 to o of n first let's compile this code it passed two sample test cases let's submit it we have solved this problem successfully we can improve this time complexity now let's see how to improve this time complexity from o of n times 26 to o of n in order to solve this problem in o of n time complexity we have to keep track the maximum frequency we don't have to reduce the value of this maximum frequency when left was pointing here right was pointing here the maximum frequency was a three right at this point we know that e appears three times b appears once when you moved right here and we slide left here we moved right here and left here we saw that in this window we decrease this value from 3 to 2 why is that 
that's because in our current window we have two maximum repeating characters but we don't have to decrease this value we only keep track the maximum frequency we are not going to decrease it anymore if you look at this equation we see that length minus max frequency less than equals to k so let's write out this equation this equation right here length minus this is the length of our current window or the size of our current window minus max frequency less than equals to k here we see that this value k is constant and the maximum difference in between these two the maximum difference in between these two is k the maximum difference in between these two value length and max is this value k so we can say that we will get the length of our window we will get the maximum length of our window only and only if we maximize our max frequency let me explain it again we know that from left to right this window is valid if we have this condition where this length means right minus left plus one the size of our current window we know the difference between these two value length and max frequency the maximum difference in between these two value can be k this k is constant for a given example so if we want to maximize the length this is the length of our current window if we want to maximize this length we have to maximize this frequency right this is the trick that we need to solve this problem efficiently we don't have to scan our math entire math if we only keep track the maximum frequency if we only maximize our maximum frequency this value will be maximized for sure this is the trick so we don't have to iterate over our math here we saw that we have left is pointing here right is pointing here the maximum frequency was 3 the maximum difference in between these two can be k that is 1 and the length here we see 4 and, and here this value is 1 if you closely observe this equation you will see that this length will be maximized if this max frequency is maximum this is the core intuition of this improvement so if we don't iterate over our math it will take time complexity o of n single patch and it takes a space complexity of 26 which is constant so this algorithm takes linear time and constant space complexity let me explain it one more time we will find out a window that is valid if this window is valid we will see this condition is true here let's rewrite this equation if we rewrite this equation we can write this equation something like this length minus max frequency here we can move this max frequency to the right so less than equals to k plus max frequency okay here if you look at this equation this length will be maximized if this max frequency is maximized now let's find out here two condition now we have to understand when this equation will be evaluated true and when this equation evaluated true this equation will be evaluated true if k plus max frequency is not greater than is not greater than the size of our string if this is our string h if this condition is true if k plus max frequency is not greater than the size of our string then this condition will be evaluated true for the longest substring that we are looking for and we will see this condition length less than k plus max frequency if we find out a window a longest substring that we are looking for for input like this if we have a a a a a something like this and we have k equals to 2 so here left is pointing here right is pointing here we see the size is 5 so here we get 5 and k equals to 2 we get 7 and here we get length length of our window is 5 
but if we have something like this we have here b then we have here let's say c if you find out this window we see maximum frequency is 3 k is 2 and length is we see 5 2 plus 3 equals to 5 so we will see this condition if this is not greater than the size of our given string and we will see this equation and we will see this condition for the longest substring that we're looking for and we'll see this equation for input like this for input like this if we have a, a, a something like that now if we closely observe these two equation if you look at these two equation here we see k plus max frequency is greater than length here we see that k plus max frequency is equals to length if you look at this equation you can understand it easily we see k is constant so this length will be maximized if this frequency is maximum same here if this is maximum we'll get the longest window size this is the intuition of this algorithm now let's implement this logic we already implemented our algorithms here we don't have to find out the maximum frequency if we apply this formula here we will get the maximum frequency okay and we can remove this function we don't have to iterate over our entire frequency array to find out the maximum frequency that's it now this algorithm takes of n time complexity and 26 is constant so it takes a space complexity of one i hope you've understood this algorithm now let's compile it accepted let's submit it we see accepted we solved this problem successfully i hope you've understood this video explanation if you have any question you can post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video welcome back to this video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question minimum window substring in this problem we are given two string this is string t and this is string h we have to find out this string in this string let's generate a window this is a window we can say this is a window in this window we see that this string exists a exists b exists and c exists so this is a valid window so up until this point we see this is the minimum window substring in this window this string exists also we see that this is a valid window in this window we see a exist b exist and c exist this is a valid window in this window we see that this string exist a exist b exist c exist but it does not exist in this string in relative order relative order doesn't matter we see a exist b exist c exist so we can say this is a valid window this is a valid window we have to find out a minimum window substring a minimum window that contains all the characters of this string so this is a minimum window in this window all the characters of this string t exist so for this given input we have to return this a string b a n c this is the minimum window substring now let's see how to find out minimum window substring in order to solve this problem we are going to use two hash map this is a hash map r count this is a hash map window in this r count hash map what we are going to do we are going to store as key the character of this string t of this string t and as value we are going to store the appearance of the character we see here we have a so the character a and appears it appears in this strings one so let's use here one then b we see b appears in this string once so b uh, the value is one then c we see c appears one so c and here the count or the appearance of c is one so 
in our R count hash map we will store the character as key and the appearance as value in this R count hash map from string t. Now what we are going to do? We're going to generate window from this uh, from this uh, string. The size of window should be at least a three. The size of window should be at least three. So this is our first window. In this window, we see that this uh, string exists. First, let's count. Let's count the number of element we need in a window. So the number of element we need here, let's call the variable name record. Record equals to the size of our R count hash map. We may have duplicate element. We may have here A. So in that case, we should have the appearance of A2. So we'll just uh, store in this variable record a 3. The size of our hash map. Not the size of our string, the size of our hash map. If we have here A, then here, we will have a two. We will have here two. So in that case, also we will have in our record variable a three. Now we are going to generate window. This is our first window. In this window, all the characters exist of this string t. Instead, generating all possible windows, what we're going to do? We're going to use two pointer, left and right. Left and right pointer points to the first element initially. Now let's write out the index number. So left and right pointer points to the first element. And we're going to use a variable count. Let's use a variable count. Using this count variable, we will keep track the number of characters we have in our current window that exist in the string t. So we'll store in our count variable and we'll have a boundary, we'll have a window. Our window is window is from index left to index right. This is our window. Now our initial window is this. In this window we see we have only one character A. Now we're gonna increase the count from 0 to 1 because this character A exists in our string T. And the appearance of this character same as the appearance of this character. So here what we're gonna do, we're gonna store this A in here as key and as value we're gonna store the appearance one. Because we may have duplicates. If we have here A, if we have here A, here we will have, we will have here two. So if we saw this character exist in our hash map or in T, we cannot increase this count from zero to one because we have to find out two characters to increase this value of count to one. So here we have one, let's remove A. Now we see that this character A exists in our R count and the appearance of A same as the appearance of the character in this window. So here we have one. So we're gonna increase, we're gonna increase the value from 0 to 1. We'll take the appearance of this A here in this hash map and in this hash map. This is our window hash map. In our window, in our window, we see we have A element. We have element A and the appearance of that element is 1. Let's move forward. R is now pointing here. D. Now, we're, now what are we going to do? We're going to insert D in our window. So this is our current window. In this window, we have A and D. D appears once. D does not exist in this R count, so we cannot increase count anymore. Let's move forward. We see O. O appears once. Let's move forward. R is pointing here. B. B exists in our hash map. First, let's insert B and the appearance of B is 1. Now, let's check the appearance of B and the appearance of B in our R count. We see the appearance are the same, so we're going to increase the value of count from 1 to 2. Let's move forward. R is pointing here. We see E. Let's insert here E and the appearance of E is 1. And here we see E does not exist in our R count. So let's move forward. We see C. Let's insert here C and the value 1. We see the appearance of C is 1 and the appearance of C is 1 right here. So in our window, we find out this character. Let's increase this value from 2 to 3. 
when we find out the record when we find out the record equals to count that means we find out a valid window so let's keep track the length of that window so initially the length of our window is we can assume infinity okay we find out this window of length 6 so let's update it with 6 and let's keep track this uh, left boundary of our window and the right boundary of our window so our left index we can say left index equals to this index 0 and the right index equals to 5 so right index right index equals to 5 we will update left index and right index if we find out another uh, another substring another valid substring where all the characters of this string exist and the length is less than this mean length only then we will update left index and right index so we find out this condition count equals to record since we find out this condition now what we're gonna do we are going to move we, we find out our we find out our window and we can uh, we can keep track our string using this left index and right index and we have your mean length now here what we're gonna do we're gonna move left to the next since you move left to the next what we're gonna do we're going to uh, we're going to decrease the value of a in this window because this is now this is our window so you have to decrease the value of this of this character so we'll have here zero if we decrease now here we see that this value of a is not equal to this value of a so what we can do here we can decrease the value of 3 to 2 because now we have count equals to 2 because we have here only two characters b and c here we have b and c so we find the two characters in our we find the two characters in our window so we decreases the value of our count variable now what are going to do are going to move the right pointer to the next so right is pointing here o we see o already exist let's increase from 1 to 2 this is our current window let's move forward r here we see d d does not d exist so let's increase from 1 to 2 let's move forward r is pointing here we see we have uh, e e exist here so let's increase this value let's move forward b let's increase the value of b so we get here too we see that b exist here and here as well the value of b and the value of v here are not the same here we have 2b in our current window we have 2b we need 1b we already computed that we, we already keep track that in this count variable we'll increase the value of count only and only if if the value of b of this b and this b are the same since this value is greater than this so we don't uh, update this value of count from 2 to 3 so we already keep track that value of b so we will not consider this b in our count now let's move forward r we see a exists in our window so let's update let's increase so we get one now we see the value of this a and this a are the same so in our window we find out three characters we find out three characters we find out three characters b c and a so we find out three characters so this is a valid window but the size of this window is r minus left plus one size is so 11 minus uh, not 11 10 minus 1 plus 1 so the size equals to 10 but we have the mean length 6 so we'll not update the index of left index and right index now what we're gonna do we are going to move the left to the right the left pointer so let's decrease the, let's shrink our window size from the left so left is pointing here since left is pointing here we're going to decrease the value of d d is not part of our this d is not part of our window anymore so let's decrease so we get here one here we have o let's decrease the value of o so we get one left is pointing here this is our current window now now we see b let's move forward left is pointing here now 
this b is not part of our window so what are gonna do we're gonna decrease this value from two to one now we see the value of this b and this b are the same but we'll consider we will consider only when we are moving right pointer we not consider when we are moving left pointer we have here one here we have one when you're moving left pointer it means that we already we already keep tracked this b so we don't consider this update now let's move uh, let's move l to the next this e is not part of our window so let's decrease now let's move left right here we see c c exists in our r count also in our window now here when we moved left right here up until this point we have count equals to 3 right since we are moving left to the next what we will do we will check the length of our current window using this formula r minus l plus 1 so here 10 minus 5 plus 1 equals to 6 10 minus 10 minus 5 plus 1 equals to 6 and our minimum length of our window is 6 so we'll do nothing let's move forward left is pointing here this is not no longer this is no longer part of our window so let's decrease this value from 1 to 0 now we see that the value of this c is 1 but the value of this c is 0 so what are we going to do we are going to decrease our count from 3 to 2 now we see our count is not equals to required so let's move right now so right is pointing here we see n n does not exist in our r count we'll just add here in and the appearance of n is 1 let's move we see c c exists in our r count and we see c exists here as well so just increase this value while moving right we see that we find out after processing this c this value and this value are the same so we're going to increase this value from 2 to 3 now we find out count equals to record so what are we going to do we're going to find out the length r minus l plus 1 so 12 minus 6 plus 1 12 minus 6 12 minus 6 plus 1 equals to 7 but our minimum length we have already 6 so let's move left to this here we see o is not part of our window this o so let's decrease let's move forward this d is not part of our window so let's move uh, so here when we have l here the size of our window is 12 minus 7 plus 1 6 we have minimum window already we stored in this left index and right index we keep tracked the, our minimum window substring so let's move forward l is pointing here l is pointing here let's uh, let's uh, decrease this value d is no longer part of our window so we see that our current window size is 5 so we're gonna change this mean length to 5 and left index to 8 and right index to 12 here we have e let's move forward this is not part of our window so what are we gonna do we're gonna decrease this value to 0 now let's compute the length of our window we see the length is 4 so let's update million to 4 and the left index 9 and the right index 12 now let's move forward left is pointing here this b is not part of our window so let's decrease this value from 1 to 0 now we see this value of b and this value of uh, so we see the value of b is 1 the value of v is 0 in our current window so count is equals to now 2 we have to decrease now count is no longer equals to record so let's move right to the next we see we are done we have processed this entire array so we solve this problem we find out this left index and right index this is the left index this is the right index so this is our substring this is how we can solve this problem for the worst case we'll iterate this array from left to right twice for the worst case so the time complexity is o of 2n that is equivalent to o of n so the time complexity of this algorithm is o of n also we have to iterate this uh, this string to construct our hash map so the time complexity is o of n times m if the length of this string is m and the space complexity of this algorithm for the worst case we might store in our window hash map in items so the space complexity is o of n also we may store in uh, m number of uh, 
characters in our R count hash map so the space complexity is O of n plus O of m this is the complexity of our algorithm now let's implement our algorithm first let's create our hash map data structure hash map we're gonna store as key character and as value we're gonna store integer so let's call it R count we're gonna store the character of string t as key and as well the appearance of the character uh, that exists in t so new hash map this is our hash map for a string t we'll store here the string t now our second hash map for a window hash map character character integer let's call it window equals to new hash map here i will store the character of a string t uh, of character string h so this is our two hash map now let's iterate over this string t so for int i equals to zero i less than t dot length i plus plus right inside here char ch current character equals to t dot char at i now here r count r count dot put current character if current character exists so r count dot get ch here get or default if ch exists in this uh, hash map get the value so get or default default otherwise let's get the value if ch exists otherwise zero and let's add one and let's add to the hash map as key value pair okay this is our for loop this for loop will construct this r count hash map now here we have to uh, we have to declare the index of our current window so int uh, int left index this is the left boundary of our current window uh, minus one initially minus one and right index this is the right boundary of our current window so initially minus one and the mean length equals to int mean length equals to infinity initially so integer dot max value the maximum value we can have in a 32 bit integer we're storing in this variable now right here we have to find out the we have to find out the record the record the size int uh, first count count equals to zero and record equals to the number of uh, number of items we have in our r count so r count dot uh, size now here our left and right pointer so int left equals to zero right equals to zero initially now let's run a loop for int for right equals to zero from zero while right is less than s dot length i plus plus now here let's find out our current character ch equals to let's call it current character current character equals to s dot char at at this right pointer now what are we gonna do we're gonna insert in our window hash map so window dot put ch a uh, current current ch here window window dot get or default if ch exists if current character exists return the value otherwise return zero let's add one and let's uh, let's add to our window hash map so here we have inserted our current character in our window hash map now here we're gonna check if we saw our current character exist in our r count hash map so r count dot contains key contains key current character if current character exists in our r count hash map let's compare the value of if it exists let's compare the appearance of a current character in r count and the appearance in window so first r count r 
account dot get current ch equals to window dot get current character it will return object integer object okay we have to convert that into integer value so if we compare object and object it will gives us wrong answer wrong value because two object the object one and object or the object one and object one are not the same thing so here let's get the integer value to compare so int value and int value okay if we find out the appearance of our current character sim in our account and window that means we have to increase the value of our count let's add one to this count variable okay so up until this point we inserted current character in window and we check if we saw the appearance of current character in window and in our count are the same we're increasing the value of count now right here let's check if we find out required equals to count if this condition is true that means we find out a valid window so in that case what we're gonna do we're gonna check the length of the window so our mean length mean length if we saw our mean length is greater than our current window so right minus left plus one this is the index of our uh, this is the length of our current window if this condition is true let's update mean length with our current window length so right minus left plus one now here let's move our left index this is the boundary of our left boundary of our current window this is the right boundary of our current window so left index equals to left and right index equals to right here we have to use while because we have to move our left pointer as far as possible while count is equals to record so here we have to move left uh, pointer to the next before moving left pointer to the next we have to update in our window by rem we have to remove our current character from window because we are moving left to the next right so here what we're gonna do we're gonna first find out the left character so char left ch equals to s dot char at s dot char at left here let's update so window dot put left character uh, window dot get or default if our current character does not exist in window so get or default get uh, the value for current uh, left character for left character or return zero and subtract one okay we're we are just removing our current character we may have duplicates character so we have to subtract one the appearance now here we removed our current uh, our left character now we're gonna check if this left character exists in our r count so let's check that if r count dot contains key if r count if r count dot contains key left ch let's give it a little space so you can understand uh, so you can see what's going on here so if if our left character exists in r count now let's compare the value so here let's compare the value r count dot get r count dot get left ch so it will return the the value from our r count and here if we saw this value is this value is greater than whatever we have in our current window so window dot get left uh, c left uh, ch so here we're comparing if left character the value of left character in our if it exists in our r count then we're checking the value if this value in our r count is greater than the value we have in our window that means we that means in our current window we are missing at least one number or we're missing our left character this condition is true so what i have to do we have to uh, subtract one from our account from our count variable then we are moving left to the next 
this is our core algorithm and here when we're done with our for loop what we're gonna do we're gonna check if we saw left index is equals to minus one or right index is equals to right index equals to a minus one that means we don't have a valid window so we have to do it an empty string otherwise what we're gonna do if this condition is false that means we find out a valid window we have left boundary this left index and right boundary this right index so here what we're gonna do in that case we're gonna return is dot sub string is dot sub string starting at left index this is the left boundary left index and right index plus one we have to add one to the right index to find out the string from left index to right index okay this is our algorithm this algorithm the overall time complexity is o of n where n is the length of our given string h plus o of o of m where m is the length of our uh, string t and the space complexity is also o of n plus o of m this is our core algorithm now let's run this code if we saw something wrong we'll fix that okay we uh, i'm so sorry guys here we should have write not i let's let's run it okay again we have this issue we have this issue also we have couple of issues let's let's fix our issue first we have to check using equal operator right here we have to use double equal not single equal and here we have to get the integer value otherwise it will give us wrong answer so here as well int value okay now i think it should work if we find out anything wrong we'll fix that we see accepted it passed three test cases successfully now we can submit this code I'm sorry for the little mistake. Uh, we see that it takes 18 millisecond runtime. We solve this problem successfully. This is a difficult algorithm. If you don't understand it, please rewatch this video. It will make sense. If you have any question, you can post your question on the Q&A forum. Thanks for watching this video. I will see you in the next video. Welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to solve this coding interview question, valid anagrams. In this problem, we are given two string, S and T. We have to check whether the two string are anagrams of each other or not. Two string are anagrams of each other if they contain same character in same quantity. In this string we see, we have this character A. The appearance of this character A is 3 and in this in this string we see 3 then n n appears once n appears once in this string in this string we see n appears once g z appears once then r r appears once and m appears once so this two strings are anagrams of each other because this two string contains same character in same quantity so if we are given this two string we have to return true if we are given this two string s and t we have to check whether this two string are anagrams of each other or not in this uh, string we see r r appears once in this string r appears once in this strings a appears once in this strings a appears once here we see t appears once and we see that in this uh, string we don't have the character t so these two string are not anagrams of each other so we have to return false now let's see how to solve this problem first let's see the naive solution in the naive solution we are going to use two hash map data structure because we have to check the characters and the quantity so first we are going to construct our hash map one map one 
in this hash map organa store the string h and in this hash map organa store the string t now let's construct our map one we see a a and a we see a appears three times so a the appearance of a is three then we have n we see n appears n appears once then we have g g appears once then we have r r appears once then we have m m appears once now let's construct our math too we see n n appears once then we see we have a a appears three times then we have g g appears once then r r appears once then m m appears once now what we are going to do we are going to iterate over the key of this hash map here we see we have a for a we have value 3 in this hash map we see for a we have value 3 it means that the character a contains in the both string in same quantity the quantity of a in the both string are the same let's move to n we see n appears once here we see n appears once so the appearance of n in the both strings are the same then g z appears once here we have z appears once r appears once r appears once m appears once m appears once so we see that these two strings are anagrams of each other so we are going to return true but this is not the efficient solution because this algorithm will take time complexity for the worst case o of 3n which is equivalent to o of n and it will take a space complexity o of 2n which is equivalent to n so this algorithm works in linear time and in linear space complexity we can improve this space complexity from linear to constant now let's see how to solve this problem in constant space complexity in order to solve this problem in constant space complexity we are going to create an array of length 26 this is our integer array of length 26 we have index number from 0 to 25 we have characters in our string s and in our string t we have all edges lowercase english alphabet we have all edges english lowercase alphabet we know that in english alphabet we have 26 characters so we can map 26 character with the 26 cell here we have 0 with index 0 we're going to map a with index 1 we're going to map b and so on up to 25 25 maps to the character g now what we are going to do we are going to iterate over this uh, string we have this character a now we find out the character a so we're going to increase we're going to increase the value at index 0 because a maps to 0 so here we're going to increase how we can get the index we can get the index if we subtract the ascii value of a the ascii value of a from the ascii value of a what we get we get a zero if we subtract ascii value of a from this character n what we get we get the value 13 so at index 13 we are going to increase so we get here value 1 the default value are zeros when we created an integer array in java programming language we have the default value is zero so we have here the value one we just increased by one so we get value one then we have a we find out another a so what we are going to do we are going to increase the value at a so here at index zero we get value two then we have g if we subtract the ascii value of a from g the ascii value of g what we will get we will get six so at index six let increase so we get here one now we have the character r we have the character r if we subtract the ascii value of a what we get we get the value 17 so let's increase value here 
now let's move forward we have a we find it another a so let's increase the value of a so we get here three now let's move forward we have this character m if we subtract the ascii value of a from the ascii value of m what we get we get 12 so at index 12 we're going to increase so 0 this is for a 6 6 for G then we have 12 12 for M then 13 13 for N and 17 17 for R we see that by processing our first uh, string what we get we get we get 3 a we get 3 a we get 1 G we get 1 M we get 1 N we get 1 R now let's iterate over our second string the first character is n we find out n so what we are going to do we're going to subtract one from the index of n the index of n is 13 so let's subtract one we get here a zero let's move forward we have this character a so let's subtract one from the index of a we get here two then g let's subtract one from the index of g we get here zero let's move forward we get a so let's subtract one we get one r from index of r let's subtract one we get zero let's move forward we get a now let's subtract one from the index of a we get zero let's move forward we get here this m now let's subtract one from the index of m so we get a zero by processing this string t we see that we get value zero for a zero for g zero for m zero for n zero for r it means that in our both a string each character contains in same quantity so we can return true so after processing what we are going to do we are going to scan this we're going to scan this array if we find out non-zero value will immediately return false after processing this is two string if we find out in this array we have non-zero value will return immediately false here we have empty cell empty cell means we have the default value zero if we have any value that is not zero in this array what we are going to do we are going to return immediately false this algorithm will take time complexity o of n o of n plus n here instead of traversing this two string one by one we can traverse this two string together so by traversing this two string together it will take time complexity o of n then we have to traverse this array to check if we have any non-zero value that will take n plus 26 26 is constant we know that from complexity analysis we discard the constant part so we get this linear time complexity and it takes a space complexity of 26 26 is a constant value from complexity analysis we discard the constant part so the space complexity is o of 1 this is the complexity of this algorithm now let's implement our algorithm first thing what we're going to do we're gonna check the base case if we saw the length of the two string are not the same there is no possibility of anagrams if the length are not the same we are going to return immediately false so if s dot length is not equals to t dot length we are going to return false now let's create an array indexed array so int let's call it math equals to new int of size 26 in this problem both strings contains only english lowercase alphabet so we can create an array of size 26 to math is character we know that in english alphabet we have total 26 letter now let's iterate our string now let's iterate our our string so for int i equals to zero i less than s dot length if this condition is false it means that the length of the both string are the same so we can use a s dot length or t dot length 
the both are the same and here I plus plus right inside here first let's find out our character from this string h so char c1 equals to s dot char at i and let's find out the character from t so char c2 equals to t dot char at i now math now here what we are going to do we're going to subtract the ascii value of a let's subtract the ascii value of a from c1 and let's add one to our indexed to the corresponding indexed and right below here c2 c2 minus a let's subtract the ascii value from this character c2 and let's subtract after processing the two string we are gonna check our math array let's iterate over our math array so int i equals to zero i less than math dot map dot length i plus plus right inside here we're gonna check if we saw math i is not equals to zero if we find out any non-zero value we are going to immediately return false if we find out no non-zero value we're going to return at the end true this is our algorithm this algorithm takes overall o of in time complexity and o of 26 which is equivalent to o of 1 this is the complexity this is our algorithms we are we are implementing our logic together in this loop for the characters of h we are increasing we are incrementing the value at the corresponding index and for the character of t we are decreasing the value at the corresponding index we can do this using two separate for loop but we are doing this using this one this one loop this is our algorithm now let's run this code we see it passed two test cases now let's submit it we have solved this problem successfully if you guys have any question you can post your question on the Q&A forum thanks for watching this video I will see you in the next video welcome back to this video in this video we are going to solve this coding interview question groove anagrams in this problem we are given an array of strings for examples if we are given this array of strings we have to groove all anagrams together we have to groove the anagrams together two or more string are anagrams of each other if they contain same character in same quantity here we see that in this array of strings e a t t e a and a t e these three strings contains same character in same quantity so we groove them together then we have this 10 then we have in a t we see that this two string contains same characters in same quantity so we grouped them together then we have b a t this is a single string for this string there is no anagrams so we have this single string here we grouped this single string right here so if we are given an array of strings we have to return the groove anagrams we have to groove all the anagrams together and we have to return the list of list so for this given array of strings we have to return these groove anagrams now let's see how to solve this problem for sake of understanding let's assume we are given this array of strings first thing what we are going to do we are going to create a hash map data structure let's create here a hash map data structure let's assume this is our hash map data structure as key we are going to store a string as key we are going to store a string 
and as value we are going to store a list of a string first we have this string this is our first string now first what we are going to do we are going to sort this string if we sort what we get we get a e t now we are going to check does this sorted string a e t exist in our hash map we see no this sorted string does not exist in our hash map so let's store this sorted string as a key so we get here a e t as value let's insert empty list in here we are going to we are going to store the anagrams in this list we are going to insert a string if the string contains same character in same quantity of this string compared to this string we get this sorted string by sorting this string now what we are going to do we are going to insert this string as the value of this key in our hash map so let's insert e a t let's move to the next string this is our next string now let's sort it if we sort it what we get a e t now we are going to check does a e t exist in our hash map as key we see that a e t exist in our hash map so what we are going to do we are going to insert this uh, string this unsorted string as the value of this sorted uh, string so let's insert here t e a let's move forward this is our current uh, string if we sort it what we get we get a n t does a n t exist in our hash map as key we see that a n t does not exist so let's insert here as key a n t and let's insert here empty list in this list we are going to groove the anagrams in this list we are going to add the string that contains same character in same quantity compared to this a string we inserted a n t as key and as value we inserted empty list now let's insert this uh, string as the value of a n t so what we get we get t a n now let's move forward this is our current uh, string let's sort it if we sort it what we get we get a e t now we are going to check does a e t exist in our hash map as key we see exist so let's so let's insert this uh, string a t e in our hash map to the value of key a e t so let's insert here a t e a t e let's move forward this is our next uh, string if we sort it what we get we get a n t does a n t exist in our hash map we see yes a n t exist so what we are going to do we are going to insert this in a t in our in our hash map against the key a n t so let's insert here in a t let's move forward our next string is b a t if we sort it what we get a b t after sorting what we get we get a b t now we're gonna check does a b t exist in our hash map no so let's insert as key a b t let's insert here empty list now let's insert this string b a t b a t let's move forward we see that we are done we have processed every single string of this array so we are done now what we are going to do we are going to return the values from this hash map as a list we are going to return this groove anagrams here we grouped all the anagrams we have in this uh, strings so we are going to return this groove anagrams this is how we can solve this question this is how we can solve this problem i hope you have understood this algorithm now let's see the complexity analysis of this algorithm this algorithm takes time complexity 
O of n. n is the length of the given array. n times k. k is the length of the longest word in the given array. We have to sort for every single string we have to sort the string for sorting it will take time complexity o of n times k log k this is the overall time complexity of this algorithm and this algorithm takes space complexity o of n times k i hope you have understood this algorithm now let's implement this algorithm using java programming language now let's see the implementation of our algorithm first thing what we are going to do we are going to create our hash map data structure hash map as key we are going to store a string and as value we are going to store list of a string in the list we will group the anagrams let's call it math map equals to new hash math now let's iterate over the array so for string str in strs right inside here what we are going to do we are going to sort our string str we know that string are immutable string are immutable in java programming language so what we are going to do we are going to convert the string into character array so char chr character array equals to str dot to char array so we converted our string into character array and we stored it in this variable chr now let's sort this array so arrays dot sort chr now let's reconstruct our string from this sorted array so string temp equals to new uh, string let's provide this array chr so this will construct our uh, string it will gives us the sorted uh, string we can say temp or we can say sorted string sorted str after sorting we get this uh, string now what we are going to do we're gonna check does this sorted string exist in our hash map as key or not so math dot contains key math dot contains key sorted str if our sorted string does not exist in our hash map what we are going to do we are going to insert as key this sorted str this sorted uh, string and as value we are going to insert an empty an empty list so math dot put sorted str sorted string then as value we are going to insert empty list empty array list when we hit this line we are guaranteed that sorted string exists in our hash map so math dot get sorted str dot add so it will it will gives us it will gives us the access to the value of sorted str we know that the value is a list of strings so we can add using this add method so add let's add our current string str so str when we're done with this for loop what we're gonna do we're gonna return the groove anagrams as a list against all keys we have we have a groove anagram so we're going to return new array list new array list math dot values this is our algorithm this algorithm takes time complexity of n times k times log k and it takes a space complexity of n times k or n is the length of the given array given string array k is the longest word we have in the given array now let's run this code we see it passed three traced cases now let's submit it we see accepted we have solved this problem successfully if you have any question you can post your question on the QA forum thanks 
for watching this video welcome to this video in this video we're going to solve this coding question valid parenthesis in this problem given a string s containing just characters opening closing brackets opening and closing this is called curly braces then this is called square braces opening and closing determine if the input string is valid an input string is valid if open brackets must be closed by the same type of brackets open brackets must be closed in the correct order in these examples we are given this combination of parentheses we saw this are valid so we have to read them true in these examples we see we have this parenthesis these are valid parentheses these are in correct order so we have to read them true and for this input we see invalid ordering they are not closed this opening parenthesis is not closed and we have here this closing parenthesis there is no there is no opening parenthesis in correct order so we have to return false for this type of inputs this is the problem statement if we are given input like this then we have to return true this is a valid combination of parenthesis okay now how to solve this problem let's see how to solve this problem let's assume we're given this input string first thing what i'm going to do i'm going to create a hash map data structure i will map the closing parenthesis this parenthesis with its same type opening parenthesis so this is closing parenthesis this is opening parenthesis of same type then this square this square bracket and this opening square bracket this ending square bracket with this opening square bracket then this closing curly braces with the opening curly braces with the same type so we have closing and opening parenthesis in this hash map so first thing what we will do we'll construct a hash map data structure then we will use a stack data structure to solve this problem let's see how to solve this problem using stack data structure when we encountered parenthesis problem for most of the time we consider stack data structure this is our stack data structure now first we constructed our hash map then we created this stack data structure this stack data structure initially empty now what we're gonna do we're gonna iterate the given string from left to right the first character is opening bracket when we find it opening bracket we will insert that onto the stack so let's insert onto the stack this is the opening bracket let's move to the next next character this is the next character which this is a closing bracket when you find it closing bracket we will remove the top element from stack we'll remove the top element from the stack so we find out this element now we're going to return the value from our hash map against this key we see that is this opening bracket and we see this two are equal they're identical it means that this part valid this is a valid portion we have to remove it from stack this is a valid portion so let's remove it from the considerations because this part is valid let's validate the rest now we see this is our opening so let's insert if we find it opening we'll insert onto the stack let's move forward this is closing so let's remove from the top of stack we get this this opening now let's find out whatever we have against this this key on our hash map that is the opening okay we find out the opening second bracket so we see that these two are identical the popped element from stack we're popping out the top element from stack and we're finding out the corresponding opening bracket and if we find out they are identical it means this part is valid if we find out this is invalid this part is invalid if they are not identical we'll immediately return false we see this part is valid so 
let's remove from our considerations because this part is valid input now let's validate the rest this is our current bracket opening bracket so let's insert onto the stack next we see closing so let's remove from top of stack we find out this bracket now let's find out the value against this key in our hash map so let's find out the corresponding opening bracket of this bracket that is this bracket so we see that the popped element and the corresponding opening bracket of current closing bracket are identical so we see that this part is valid we can assume this is valid now we see we're done we have no more character left so we can return true we can return to but if we have some element some element or some item on stack exist then what do you have to do we have to return false if the stack is empty only then we should return true for input like this if we have input like this so first we have this character or this bracket so let's insert it since this is opening so let's insert onto stack then this is opening so let's insert onto stack now we see we're done we have nothing to do now we left to it this two uh, this two item on this stack so stack is not empty if stack is not empty what it will do will return false now let's take another example let's assume we're given this kind of parenthesis we see this is invalid okay let's see how we're gonna check this is invalid first this is opening so let's insert onto stack this is opening let's insert onto stack now we find it closing so let's pop out the top from stack that is this opening bracket this is square bracket then the corresponding opening bracket of this bracket that is this bracket and we see these two brackets are not identical if they are not identical we will immediately return false so for this input we will return false let's take another example for example if we're given this combination of parentheses first we'll construct hashmap let's construct hashmap we have constructed here a hashmap data structure we have three types of brackets we are mapping the closing bracket with the opening bracket of same type now let's create a stack data structure right here this is our stack data structure this is opening so let's insert onto stack this is opening so let's insert onto stack this is opening so let's insert onto stack now we see this is closing this is your current bracket this this is closing so let's pop out top from stack that is this okay now let's find out the corresponding opening that is square bracket okay as well so we see they're identical it means that this part is valid this part is valid now let's move to the next this is closing so let's pop out the top from stack that is this now let's find out the corresponding opening the corresponding opening we can find out from our hash map that is this so we see they're identical so it means that this and this valid combinations the valid ordering now let's move to the next this is our next we see this is closing so let's remove top from stack this is the top at this point so we find a top and let's find the corresponding opening bracket that is this curly braces we see they're identical so they're identical it means that this this part is valid so we find out valid ordering so we have to return true we have the stack the stack is empty so we can return true for this input so for this input we can return to and we see that this is a valid ordering for this type of input on our stack we will have this three item okay we'll have this three item on our stack if we find out our stack is not empty at the end if we traverse this from left to right when you're done with traversing then we'll check if the stack is not empty we'll return false if the stack is not empty we'll return false this is our algorithm this algorithm will take off in time complexity and it will take off in space complexity for the stack data structure in the hash map data structure we are always just storing three item three is a constant it doesn't depend on the input side so the space complexity only for stack that is o of n for the worst for the worst cases we might have n item onto the 
for the worst cases we might have n items onto the stack so the space complexity is o of n and the time complexity is o of n now let's implement this algorithm now let's implement our algorithm first thing what we're going to do we're going to create a hash map data structure so hash map will have character as key and as value we will have character so character character let's call it math equals to new hash math we have three types of brackets so we'll math the closing bracket with the opening brackets of same type so math dot put the closing bracket the same type the opening bracket math dot put square bracket closing square bracket and opening square bracket the type should be the same math dot put curly braces and then opening curly braces this is our hash map we'll have all just three items onto the hash map now we're going to create a stack data structure in the stack we'll store we'll store the character so character let's call it stack equals to new stack now we're going to iterate we're going to iterate the string so for int i equals to zero i less than s dot length then i plus plus now first let's get the current character so we're gonna store the current character in this variable current so current equals to s dot char at current this is our current character now we're gonna check if the current character exists in the hash map if math dot contains key if the current character exists in the hash map it means that we find out the closing closing bracket if we find it closing bracket we have to pop the top element from stack so char pop equals to this will be the top element so here we're gonna check if the stack is empty will not pop so if stack dot size if we have something like this at the beginnings so we'll have stack equals to empty and here if we pop from stack without checking then it will throw an exception so we have to check the side so stack to side if the stack to side is not equals to zero then stack dot pop remove the top element if it's zero then you can store any character whatever you want a b c or any character here i'm using hash now we're gonna check if the pop this top element and the corresponding opening bracket for our current character so you can get it from hash map so map dot get current if the top element and the corresponding opening character are the same then it's okay if they are not the same then what we have to do we have to return false so return false if the current character does not exist in the hash map that means our current character is opening bracket if the current character is opening bracket we have to insert into the stack so stack dot push the current character at the end when you're done with this loop will return true but for this type of input if we have something like this then we will have we will have some item left on the stack or something like this then we will have this one square bracket in our stack so we can return we can return true if the stack is empty so we can do it if stack dot is empty if the stack is empty return true otherwise return false this is your algorithms this algorithm will take off in time complexity for this for loop and it will take off in space complexity for this stack and for hash map we'll have always just three items so this is constant this is your algorithm now let's run this code and let's test it i'm sorry here we should have i because this is the index not current let's run this code accepted now let's submit it we have solved this problem successfully 
this is the algorithm. Hope you have understood how to solve this problem valid parenthesis. Thanks for watching this video. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to this video. In this video, we're going to solve a software engineering coding interview question, a valid palindrome. Given a string S, determine if it is a palindrome, considering only alphanumeric characters and ignoring cases. So we should consider only letter and number and we should ignore case it. Now let's see some examples. For example, if you're given this strings, in this strings we see we have lowercase letter, uppercase letter, space, commas, and semicolon. We have to consider only alphanumeric characters. In this strings we have English alphabet. So we have to consider only English alphabet and we have to ignore case it. Lowercase a and uppercase a are the same for this problem. So we can generate these strings from these strings. And we see these strings read forward as backward. So this is a valid palindrome. So for this given string, we have to return a true. For example, if you're given these strings, if we generate new strings by ignoring the speech, then we get these strings. And we see that this strings is not read forward as backward. So this is not a valid palindrome. So for this given string, we have to return false. Now how we can solve this problem? To solve this problem, we're going to use two pointer. Now let's see how we can solve this problem. Now I'm going to go through the intuition. Let's say we're given these strings. Now we're going to use two pointer to solve this problem. And these strings will be represented something like this. If we ignore case it and if we consider only alphanumeric character. Now let's declare two pointer. P1 will point to the first character. P2 will point to the last character. Now we see that uppercase A and lowercase A. Since we have to ignore case, so these two characters are the same. When we found two characters are the same, we will move P1 to the right and P2 to the left. So P1 pointer will point to this space and P2 pointer will point to this character M. Now we see that now we see that P1 pointer is pointing to a space. So we're going to move P1 pointer to the next character, not P2 pointer, okay? Let's move P1 to next character. Now P1 point to this character M. And we see that P2 is pointing to the character M. They are the same. So let's move P1 to the right and P2 to the left. Now we see that P1 is pointing to the character A. P2 is pointing to the character A. Now let's move P1 to the right and P2 to the left. And we see that N and N are the same. So let's move P1 to the next and P2 to the left. Now we see P1 is pointing to the character comma. Now let's move to the next only for P1 pointer. Now P1 is pointing to the empty space. Now let's move P1 pointer. And we see that P1 is now pointing to the character A and P2 is now pointing to the character A. We see that they are the same, so let's move P1 to the next, P2 to the left. Now we see P1 is pointing to the empty space character, so let's move P1 to the next character. And we see P1 is now pointing to the character P and P2 is now pointing to the character uppercase P. Since we have to ignore cases, so they are the same. For comparison, we will convert our current character to lowercase for comparison. Now let's move P1 to the next and P2 to the left. Now we see P2 is now pointing to empty space character, so we'll skip. Now we see P2 is now pointing to colon, so we'll skip because colon and space is not alphanumeric character. Now let's skip and now P2 is now pointing to L and P1 is now pointing to L. They're the same, so let's move P1 to the next, P2 to the left. Now we see this two pointer is now pointing to the same character. So let's move P1 to the next and P2 to the left. Now there are two pointer pointing to the same character. So let's move P1 to the next and P2 to the left. Now we see P1 is now pointing to commas. So let's move only P1 pointed to the next. So let's move P1 pointed to the next. Now we see P1 is now pointing to empty space character. So let's move P1 to the next. Now we see that P1 and P2 is now pointing to the same character. So let's move P1 to the next and P2 to the left, since they are the same. Now P1 is now pointing to empty space character. 
So let's skip the empty space character. Now P1 is now pointing to the character C and P2 is now pointing to the character C. Again, we see that these two pointed is pointing to the same character. So the comparisons will be evaluated true. At the end, we see that there is no unmatch in these strings. So we will return true. During moving this two pointer, if we find out the two pointer is pointing to two different alphanumeric character, we'll return false. Since it's never found to unmatch alphanumeric character for this two pointer, we'll return true. Now let's implement our algorithm. First, let's declare two pointer int p1 equals to zero. p1 points to the first character, p2 equals to s dot length minus one p2 points to the last character now while loop while p1 is less than or equals to p2 now let's find out the character at p1 and the character at p2 so char c1 equals to s dot char at p1 then char c2 equals to s dot char at p2 now we're going to check if c1 if the character at p1 pointer is not alphanumeric then we will move c1 to the next let's check here if character dot is letter is letter or digit character dot is letter of digit c1 if we saw the current character is not a letter or digit then what we will do we'll move p1 to the next we'll move p1 pointer to the next else if we're gonna check if the if the character at p2 pointer if the character at p2 pointer which is c2 is not a letter or digit so character dot is letter or digit c2 if if c2 is not letter or digit then what we will do we will move p2 uh, we will move p2 to the left p2 minus minus else if we saw c1 is a letter or digit and c2 is a letter or digit then what we are going to do we're going to we're going to find out the lowercase of c1 and c2 let's find out the lowercase of c1 and c2 if we saw the lowercase of c1 c2 are not the same we will return immediately false so character dot to lowercase character dot to lowercase c1 if it's not equals to character dot to lower to lower case c2 if they are not equal what we are going to do we're going to return immediately false if we saw the character are the same then let's move p1 to the next and p2 to the left this is our core algorithm when this loop end when this loop end will return at the end here a true if the given string is not a palindrome then this loop will be terminated by this return statement by returning false if this loop successfully terminate without returning this or without hitting this statement at the end will return true if this written false statement never executed that means our given string is a palindrome so at the end we're returning here true the time complexity of this algorithm is o of n for the worst case we'll traverse the given string once and the space complexity is o of one because we're not using any additional data structure now let's test this code let's run it accepted now let's submit it 
accepted we have solved this problem successfully i hope you have understood this video explanation if you have any question post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question longest palindromic substring we see bounds of like here this is a popular coding question the difficulty level is medium in this problem given a string h return the longest palindromic substring in h now let's talk about what is a palindrome a substring is a palindrome if it read forward as backward this string a b a it's read forward a b a and it's read backward a b a they are the same so this string is a palindrome a b a b we see in this string this is a palindrome this substring is a palindrome because this substring read forward as backward b a b as forward and as backward b a b also this string can be a valid palindrome because it's read forward a b a and it's read backward a b a this is our first example in this example we are given a string b a b a d in this string we see this substring is a palindrome this substring read forward as backward so this substring is a palindrome and also we can have a palindrome b a b so here we see that this can be a palindrome as well so we can return b a v or a b a we have to return the longest palindrome here we have this is the longest palindromic substring b a b also we have a b a we can return any of them this is our second example in this example we are given this string c b b d in this substring we see we have this longest substring b b the length of this substring is 2 this is the longest palindromic substring so we have to written this substring now let's see how to solve this problem for example let's assume we're given this string now let's talk about how to solve this problem first let's talk about the naive approach in the naive approach what we will do we will generate all possible substring from this given string and we'll validate every single substring whether the substring is a palindromic substring or not if the substring is a palindromic substring we'll keep track the substring of maximum length this solution will take o of in q time complexity generating and validating the substring will take big of in q time complexity this is not super efficient in terms of time we can improve this time complexity to quadratic time complexity using the concept of expand around center we can solve this problem using dynamic programming but the dynamic programming solution will take o of n square space complexity for the dynamic programming table we can solve this problem in constant space complexity using the concept of expand around center also we can solve this problem in linear time complexity using manisers algorithm but the manisers algorithm is not trivial for a coding interview settings for coding interview o of n square solution is accepted so this is good solution for coding interview settings now let's see how to solve this problem in quadratic time complexity using the concept of expand around center first thing we have to create two variable start and end start equals to zero and end equals to zero and we'll keep track of the length of our current longest palindromic substring so the length 
len equals to end minus start plus one that is one initially we assume that the longest palindromic substring is the first character that's why we're storing the index of first character in this start variable and in this end variable now let's iterate this string from left to right and let's see the concept expand around center first we have this character this is for our first iteration for first iteration our center is i and i so this is our center so i is 0 and i is 0 so we'll have left and right pointer now what are we going to do we're going to expand around this center and in this problem we will maintain a condition such that in this range from left to right we'll have all the edges palindromic substring we'll apply our logic to maintain these properties in this range from left to right we'll have all the edges palindromic substring now let's expand it if we expand left will point right here and right will point right here now we see that left pointer points to out of our string boundary so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna shift left to the next element and left and right to the left now we see that we are maintaining the here we see that we are maintaining the properties in this range from left to right we have palindromic substring that is b the length is one but we have length one already so will not change the start and end index we'll keep tracking the start and end index because we have to return the longest palindromic substring not the length now let's expand around this center i and i plus one now our center will be this position in between these two characters this is for this is the center this will be the center for our current character and this will be the center in between two character now if we expand around this center left will point here at i and right will point right here now we see that these two character are not the same so we will not expand around this center the two character the character at left pointer and the character at right pointer are not the same so we will not expand around this center in order to maintain this property what we will do we will move left to the next left will point here we will move right to the left right will point here now we see that left and right pointer overlap left need to be less than right but this condition is false so 0 minus 1 plus 1 equals to 0 now the length of our current substring is 0 but we have the length here 1 now let's move forward this is our current character let's assume this is our center so left and right will point here let's expand around this center left will point here right will point here if we expand it but we see the character at left and right are not the same so what i will do we will move left to the next so left will point here and we'll move right to the left so so right will point here so we're maintaining these properties in this range from left to right we have palindromic substring the length of substring is one we have already the length of our palindromic substring in this variable one so we will not update it if we find out the length of our current palindromic substring is greater than this substring we will update start and end now let's assume this is our center if this is our center left will point here right will point here now we see the character at left and right are the same so let's expand it left will point right here and right will point right here so right will point to b and left will point to b now we see that left points to b and right points to b so we can expand it let's expand it left will point out of our sting boundary right will point also out of our sting boundary in order to maintain these properties in this range from left to right we'll have palindromic substring we'll shift left to the next left will point here and right to the left right will point here we'll shift right to the left so right will point here 
now we see that the length of our current substring is 3 minus 0 plus 1 4 that is greater than this length so let's update start with 0 with the left pointer and end with 3 with the right pointer so now end equals to 3 and now we see the length is end minus start plus 1 equals to 4 the length equals to 4 now let's move forward now this is our center if this is our center then our longest palindromic substring will be c the length of 1 the length is 1 if we expand around it left will point here right will point here and we see left and right pointer points to different character so we'll shift left to the next and right to the left and we have a substring of length 1 we already have a substring of length 4 so we'll not change our start and end index let's assume now this is our middle so left will point here right will point here we see they are not the same we'll have substring of length 0 right will shift here left will shift here in order to maintain these properties so now let's move to the next this is our next character now let's apply here left and right pointer left will point here if we move right will point here we see that right is out of our sting boundary so let's move left to the next and right to the left so they are pointing to the same character and here we see the length of our current palindromic substring is one but here we have already four so we will not update start and end we don't have to keep track this length because we can find out the length from these two variable end minus start plus one length equals to end minus start plus one now this is our center so left will point here right will point here we see right is points to out of our sting boundary so we'll stop here we'll do nothing so we find out our longest palindromic substring of length 4 that is from 0 to 3 so we'll return this substring this is how we can solve this problem this solution will take of n square time complexity we're not using any additional data structure so it will take constant space complexity hope you have understood how to solve this problem efficiently now let's implement this algorithm now let's implement our algorithm first let's create two global variable start equals to zero and end equals to zero the minimum length of the given string is one so we assume that the first character is the longest palindromic substring initially now here we're going to run a loop for int i equals to zero i less than s dot length i plus plus now here we're going to call a function expand around center in this function we'll call with three parameter string then the starting index and the ending index okay here we are calling these functions if we have this type of inputs initially we assume that the first character is the center now we have to call this function for center when the center exists in between two character so expand around center h i and i plus one now let's implement this function private we have to return nothing so return type is void expand around center string h the first parameter string h then left and right now let's run a while loop while now here we have to check the boundary if left is greater than or equals to zero and right is less than the length of the string so is dot length and if the character at left and if the character at right are the same then we'll expand so s dot char at left equals to s dot char at right if they are identical we'll move left to the left and we'll move right to the next in this variable left we'll have 
one step backward from the starting index and we will have one step forward from the starting index in this right variable so we have to fix it so left equals to left plus one right equals to right minus one here we are maintaining the properties from left to right we have always just palindromic substring now here we have to check the length if the length of our current palindromic substring is greater than whatever the substring we have for this to index let's check it here if end minus start plus one is less than right minus left plus one then we have to we have to update the start and end index so start equals to left and end equals to right and here we have to return return is dot substring starting index and ending index plus one we have to add here one because for this substring method it return from index start to this parameter minus one that's why we have to add here one now let's run this code accepted now let's submit it accepted we have solved this problem this algorithm will take o of n square time complexity and it will take o of one space complexity because we're not using any additional data structure thanks for watching this video welcome to this video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question palindromic substring in this problem we are given a string we're given a string h if we are given this string b a b a d we have to find out number of palindromic substring we have in this string in this string we have total seven palindromic substring b a b a d b a b and a b a we have total seven palindromic substring so we have to return seven for this given a string if we are given this a string we have to find out the number of palindromic substring we have in this a string we see that in this string we have total three palindromic substring which is a b and c so for this given a string we have to return a three if we are given this a string as input we have to find out number of palindromic substring we have in this a string we see that in this string we have total we have total six palindromic substring a a a a a a a and a a a we have total six palindromic substring so we have to return six in this problem we are given a string h we have to find out the number of palindromic substring we have in the given string now let's see how to solve this problem for sake of understanding we are given this string now let's see how to solve this problem if you don't know what is a palindromic string if we are given a string a b a the string read as forward a b a it read as backward a b a we see that forward reading same as backward reading so this string is a palindromic string if we are given this a string a b c the string read as forward a b c it read as backward c b a this two string are not identical this two string are not the same this forward reading is not same as the backward reading so this is not a palindromic string now let's see how to solve this problem first thing what we are going to do we are going to iterate over this string from left to right first we have a 
now what we are going to do we are going to assume that this is the middle of our palindrome so this is the middle so we're going to declare left and right pointer to this middle we see left and right pointer points to the same character let's declare a variable count to keep track the number of palindromic substring initially count equals to zero we see left and right pointer points to a we see that this substring a this is a palindrome it's read as forward a it read as backward a so this is a palindrome now what we are going to do we are going to increase the count so we get count equals to one now let's slide our window let's increase this is the boundary from left to right this is the boundary now let's move left to the left and right to the next now we see that left is pointing out of bound so by considering a is the middle of our palindrome we find out one valid palindromic substring which is a now what we are going to do we are going to move to the next character to the next character b right here if we move i to the next character for input like this if we have a a c here we see that if we move i right here we are losing this palindromic substring so if we move i right here we'll declare left and right then we'll move left here right here we see that left and right points to the different character so we'll move i to the next in that case we'll lose this palindromic substring so we cannot move i to the next character first thing we are going to assume this is the middle where i pointer is pointing then we are going to assume this is the middle this this is the middle of our palindrome for even length if we have something like this a b b a here we see that this is the middle of this palindromic string this is the middle so how to how to assume this is the middle if we declare two pointer left and right left will point to i and right will point to i plus one so here this is i plus one if this is i then this is i plus one so here left is pointing here right is pointing here we see that left and right points to different character so we are not going to increase the count now we can move i to the next now i is pointing here so for for every single character so for i equals to zero i less than length of our string then i plus plus for every single iteration we are assuming to middle i is pointing to a character if we assume that character is a middle then we will call a function find find by considering middle i i so left is pointing here right is pointing here this is left boundary this is right boundary so this character is our middle also we have to call a function find i and i plus one so for this function call i is pointing here and i is pointing here i plus one is pointing here this is left this is right so we have to call our function find function to find out number of palindromes based on the middle so if we have this middle b left is pointing here right is pointing here we see that left and right point to the same character so b is a palindrome in this uh, in this window or in this range from left to right we have only one character b so this is a palindrome so let's increase the count from one to two now let's move left to the left and let's move right to the right right is pointing here we see that the character a and c are not the same so we will stop now let's consider this is the middle if we consider this is the middle then this is left then this is right we will see the logic when we will implement our algorithm so for every single iteration we have to middle of our palindromic substring for every single iteration we have two middle 
Now we see that B and C are not the same. So we're going to do nothing. Now let's move forward. I is pointing here. Now left is pointing here, right is pointing here. This is our first middle. When I is pointing to a character, if we consider the character is a middle, then we are considering the substring, the palindromic substring of odd length. If we assume the middle in between I and I plus 1, in that case, the length of our palindromic substring is even. Now we see left and right is pointing to this character. We see we have C. C is a valid palindrome. So let's increase the value from 2 to a 3. Now let's move left to the left. We see B on the right. We have nothing. R is out of bound. R is invalid. Now let's consider our next middle, which is in between I and I plus 1. Here we see that I plus 1 is invalid. So this is left and right is invalid. So we're going to do nothing. Now let's move forward. We see that now I is out of bound. So we are done. We find out count equals to 3. So we are going to return 3. We have total 3 palindromic substring in this uh, string. Let's take one more example for better understanding. Let's assume we are given this a string. Now let's declare a variable count. Count equal to count equals to initially zero. Let's iterate over our a string. First, I I is pointing here. This is our first character. So this is the middle. We are considering the Eighth character is the middle. So if you consider this is the middle, let's declare a pointer left and right. We see that left and right points to the same character. So let's increase the value of count from one uh, from zero to one. Now let's move left to the left and right to the next. We see left is invalid. So by choosing by choosing this character, eighth character as middle, we find out a substring we find out one palindromic substring so by considering this b this ith character as middle we find out a palindromic substring b now let's choose the next center or the middle so here i plus one now this is the middle so left will point here right will point here we see b and a are not the same character so we have to do nothing. Let's move to the next character, which is A. Now let's consider this A is our middle. So let's declare left and right here. We see that left and right point to the same character. So we find out a palindromic substring of length 1. This is a valid palindromic substring. So let's increase the value of count. So we get count equals to 2. Now let's, let's increase let's increase the boundary so let's move left to the left and right to the right now we see that b and b are the same character so we find out another valid palindromic substring which is b a b by considering the ith character as center or middle of our palindromic substring we will always find out the palindromic substring of odd length. We find out a valid palindromic substring which is BAB. Let's increase the value of count. So count equals to a 3. Now let's expand it. Left points to out of bound and right points to A. We see left is invalid. So we are done by selecting ith eighth character as center or middle of our palindrome we find it two valid palindromic substring now let's choose the middle this as the middle if we choose this as the middle this is left this is right we see that a and b we see that a and b are not the same so what we are going to do we are going to move forward by choosing this middle, we find out no valid palindromic substring. So let's move I to the next. Now I is pointing here. Left is pointing here, right is pointing here. We find out a palindromic substring in this range from left to right. Let's increase the value of count. So we get count equals to 4. 
now let's let's expand our boundary left is pointing here right is pointing here we see a and a are the same so we find out another valid palindromic substring which is a b a so let's increase the count so you get count equals to five now let's expand our boundary further left is pointing here right is pointing here we see that b and d are not the same so we're gonna stop now let's choose this as a center so now we're gonna choose the center in between i and i plus one so this is left this is right by choosing this center we see that b and a are not the same so by choosing this center we find it no valid palindromic substring now let's move uh, forward so i is now pointing here we see a left right in this boundary from left to right by selecting this i -th character as center or middle of a palindromic substring we find out a valid palindromic substring which is a so let's increase the count we get count equals to six let's expand our boundary left is pointing here right is pointing here we see b and d are not the same now let's choose the the center now let's choose this as center we're going to choose center in between i and i plus one this is left this is right we see that e and d are not the same so what we are going to do we are going to move to the next iteration so i is now pointing here this is the middle now if we consider this is the middle in this boundary we see that we have this substring d this is a valid palindromic substring so let's increase count from six to seven now let's move left to the left right to the next we see r is invalid now let's choose our next center in between i and i plus one we see that this is left this is right i plus one is invalid this r is invalid so we are done we are done and we find out count equals to seven we are going to return seven this seven is the answer this is our last example now let's create a variable count count equals to zero to keep track the number of palindromic substring we have in the given string now let's iterate over this uh, string initially i is pointing here let's declare here left and right pointer we see that this is a valid palindromic substring so let's increase count from zero to one now let's expand our boundary left will point out of bound and right will point here we see left is invalid so by choosing the ith character as the middle of our palindromic substring we find out one valid palindromic substring which is a now let's choose the next center in between i and i plus one now this is our center so this is left this is right we see that left and right point to the same character that means by selecting this center we find out a valid palindromic substring we find out a valid palindromic substring which is a a so let's increase this value from one to two now let's expand our boundary left to point out a bound r will point here we see that left is invalid so we are done by selecting this as middle so for this ith character we selected this character as middle and we selected this position as middle now let's move to the next now i is pointing here left is pointing here right is pointing here we see this is a valid palindromic substring so let's increase the count we get count equals to three now let's move left to the left to the left and right to the next we see that a and a are the same that means we find out another valid palindromic substring which is a a a so let's increase count from three to four now let's expand our boundary left is pointing out of bound right is pointing out of bound so by selecting a as a center we find out two valid palindromic substring a and a a a now let's choose the center in between i and i plus one so this is left this is right this is our center by selecting the center we see that we see that a and a are the same so we find out a valid palindromic substring which is a let's increase the value of our count so we get five now let's expand left is pointing here 
R is out of bounds, so R is invalid. So by selecting this as middle, we find out a valid palindromic substring which is AA. So by selecting ith, ith character as center and this position as center, we find out our palindromic substring. Now let's move I to the next I is point here. Left and right is pointing here. We see that this is a valid palindromic substring. So let's increase the value of our count. So we get count equals to 6. Now what we are going to do, we're going to move left to, left to the left and right to the next. We see that R is invalid. This right is invalid. Now let's choose our next center in between I and I plus 1. We see that this is left, this is right. Right is out of bound. This is invalid. So we are done. We find out our palindromic substring. We find out six palindromic substring in our in our given string. So we are going to return six. This is our algorithm. I hope you've understood this algorithm. This algorithm will take time complexity O of first we have to we have to traverse the string from left to right if the length of the string is in then n times we have to call our function we have to call function with i by considering i is the center and by considering i plus one so it will take time complexity n plus n it will take overall time complexity o of n square plus n square which is o of 2n square we know that from complexity analysis we discard the constant part so it will take time complexity o of n square and it will take a space complexity o of 1 it will take constant space complexity so this algorithm takes o of n square time complexity and o of 1 space complexity now let's implement this algorithm now let's see the implementation of our algorithm first we are going to create a variable count equals to 0 in this count variable, we will count the number of palindromic substring we have in the string H. Now, let's iterate our string. So, int i equals to 0. i less than s dot length i plus plus. Right inside here, we are going to call function find by considering i the ith character as the middle by considering ith character as the middle and we have to call a function find find h in this case here the middle is in between i and i plus one it, by by considering ith character as middle it will find out all possible palindromic substring by considering middle in between i and i plus one it will return all possible it will return number of all possible palindromic substring so we have to add that in our variable count at the end here we have to return count now let's implement this function find right below here public return type is integer find it takes three parameter string h then int i int let's call it left right int left int right right inside here let's declare a variable count equals to zero in this variable we are going to count number of palindromic substring number of palindromic substring we find out by considering the middle considering the ith character as the middle or by considering the middle in between i and i plus one now here let's run a while loop while left is valid while left is greater than or equals to zero and right is less than s dot length while left and right is valid and if we saw the character at left and the character at right are the same so s dot char at left is equals to s dot char at right if the character are the same that means we find out a valid palindromic substring let's add one to this count so count plus equals to one Let's move left to the left, left to the left, and right to the next. When we are done with this while loop, we will have number of palindromic substring in this count variable. We are going to return the count, and we are adding this count to this count variable. 
this count variable and this count variable are not the same these two count variable we have in two different uh, scope this count variable we have inside this function this count variable we have inside this find function this is our core algorithm this algorithm takes time complexity it will takes overall time complexity of n square and it will takes a space complexity of one now let's run this code we see accepted now let's submit it we have solved this problem successfully if you have any question you can post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video welcome back to this video in this video we are going to solve this coding interview question encode and decode strings in this problem we are given a list of uh, strings what is a, a string everything we have in between double quote is called a string in this problem we are given a list of uh, strings now we have to encode the list of uh, strings into one single uh, string after combining all the strings into one single string we have to reconstruct that means we have to decode our string into the list of strings so we have to combine all the strings into one strings and we have to reconstruct our uh, strings the list of strings from the combined uh, strings if we combine all the strings into one string by placing a hash in between is a string then what we get we get first lint then hash then code then we get hash love hash then you so if we encode if we encode the list of strings into one strings we get this one single combined uh, strings from these uh, strings we can find out all the strings we have in our list of strings so we have to encode all the strings into one single string such that we can reconstruct our list of strings from the combined uh, strings here we see that we have decoded all the strings into one single string now we have to reconstruct our list of uh, strings from the combined from the single combined uh, strings we have a hash in between is a string so this is a this is a string this is a string this is a string this is a string we can extract the string from our encoded a uh, string but the problem arises when the string contains a hash if we have here a hash l o hash e then here we will have l o hash e now if we split our string based on the hash symbol then what we get we get lint code l o e y o u here we see that we should have a string l o hash e but we get the string here l o and e we get two separate string so it's create a problem in this problem the string may contains any characters so if we use any other character rather than hash it may produce the same problem in order to solve this problem we can use a simple trick now let's see how to solve this problem using the simple trick instead combining all the strings by placing hash in between first what we are going to do first we are going to find out the length of our current string this is our current string the length is 4 4 plus the length plus hash symbol we're gonna insert hash right after the length length plus hash plus our current uh, string let's see if we combined all the strings using this simple logic we get this uh, string first four then hash right after the hash we will have the uh, string lint l i n t so if we find it four we're gonna 
take the four character right after from the next of hash symbol then here we have code the length is four then hash c o d e then we have elo hash e so the length is four hash l o hash e here we see we have four then we have hash from the next of hash we're gonna take the four characters we're gonna take the four characters because the length of our string is four for this portion now for u the length is three so three then hash let's combine it then y o u so we get this we get this uh, string now from this uh, string we can reconstruct our list of strings easily we have here four so we have a string of length four here we have four that means we have a string of length four here we have four it means that we have a string of length four we see that here we have a string of length four we don't care what character we have in our string we're gonna take just the four character because the length of our current string is four then we have here three right at the three we have hash so from the next of hash we're gonna take the three characters so we get a y u u so here from this from this string we can reconstruct our reconstruct our list of string so first we are encoding encoding we're encoding our list of string into one string then we are decoding our string into list of string after encoding this list of string we find out these combined strings now we have to decode this string into this original list of strings this encode operation is not difficult this encode operation is easy let me show you the encode operation if we have a method name encode it takes a list of strings let's say the name of the list is strs right inside here we are going to create a variable encoded equals to empty string now we're going to iterate over this list of a string so for is in strs now right inside here encoded encoded plus equals to encoded plus equals to the length of our current string so length of our current string plus hash symbol plus our current string and at the end we are going to return from this function our our encoded string so return encoded this method takes time complexity of n and it takes a space complexity of n as well where n is the total number of characters we have in the given list of strings now let's talk about the decode operation now we are going to declare two pointer i and j i and j pointer points to the first character of our decoded string this is the first character let's write out the index number 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 these are the index number now what we are going to do we are going to move j pointer to the next character until j is points to hash symbol we see that j is pointing to this four this is not hash so let's move j to the next so j is now pointing here and we see j is pointing to hash symbol so we will stop here we might have here a number instead for we might have here a big number four five six seven something like this and in that case we'll have a lot of characters on the right for this reason we have to move j to the next until we find out hash symbol or this character hash here we see that we find out hash now we have to we have to parse the number we have to extract the number how we can extract the number we can extract the number easily now let's write out our decode method right below here 
now let's implement our decode method decode decode it takes the decoded string str right inside here we are going to create empty list here we will store the extracted string from our combined string initially list is empty now we are going to declare a pointer i i equals to zero initially i points to the first character in our string now we are going to run a while loop while i is less than length the length of our string while i is valid while i is valid this loop will execute right inside here we are going to declare another pointer j j will start from i now we are going to move j to the next until j is points to hash symbol so while str while str j is not equal to hash is not equal to hash we are going to move j to the next if j points to hash symbol this loop will terminate now here we see that j is pointing to this symbol hash we have to extract our number this number is the length of our string so let's create here a variable len this is the length of our string so we have to extract our number our number started index i and it stop at index j minus one we have a method we have a method parse int str dot parse int this is not a real code this is just pseudocode just for sake of understanding the starting index is i and the ending index is j minus one if we provide here j it will start at index i and it will extract the number from index i to index j minus one this is inclusive and this is exclusive so here we find out the length of our current uh, string what is the length of our current string that is 4 we extracted in this variable len now we have to find out our string string start at index j plus 1 right here we saw that so list dot add list dot add it started index j plus one so let's extract our string we can extract our string using substring method so str dot sub string instead of substring it start at index j plus one it started index j plus one and it stop at this this at this index five which is j plus one plus len this is equivalent to 6 so this is the ending point so here we're going to apply this formula j plus 1 plus len it will extract this string it will extract this string it started index j plus 1 and it stop at this value minus 1 this value equals to six so it will get this a string so we extracted this a string and we add it in our list now what we are going to do we're going to move i we're going to move i to the next number right here so i equals to i equals to j plus one plus lin this is our core algorithm in the next iteration of this while loop j will point here we're going to move j to the next and we're going to keep applying the same logic this is our core algorithm this will take time complexity this decode will take time complexity of n and it will take a space complexity of n as well when we are done at the end we are going to return return the list so we recovered we reconstructed our list of strings from our decoded string str this is our core logic i hope you've understood this video explanation now let's implement this algorithm using java programming language this is a premium lead code problem you can practice 
on lint code for free i'll share the link in the resource section now let's implement our algorithm first let's implement encode operation so string encoded equals to empty string first what we are going to do we are going to convert if we have this input we're going to convert it into a string something like this first length then hash then length then length of code is 4 hash code then 4 hash love then 3 hash u we're going to convert this list if you're given this list of string we're going to convert it into something like this now let's iterate over our string in our list so string s in strs first let's find out the length so is dot length plus let's concatenate with hash plus our current string s now let's add it to encoded a string so encoded plus equals to encoded plus equals to this string or you can write out it's something like this encoded equals to encoded equals to encoded plus our current string at the end we're going to return here the encoded encoded a string this operation takes time complexity of in and it takes space complexity of in as well now let's implement our decode operation we have to reconstruct our list of strings for from these strings for this input first let's create here a list empty list so list a string list equals to new array list now right below here let's declare a pointer i equals to zero i points to the first character initially now while if while i is valid i is less than while well, i less than str dot length right inside here let's declare another pointer j j equals to i it will start from i now let's move j to the next until j is points to hash symbol or to the hash character so str dot char at j if it's not equals to hash then we're gonna move j to the next when j points to hash symbol this loop will terminate we have to find out in that case the length of our current string so length equals to integer dot parse int first let's provide our string str it start at index i we already saw that in the screen and it stop at index j minus one this is inclusive and this is exclusive and here let's provide the 10 this is the radix so it will return 10 base number right below here we're gonna find out our current uh, string from our decoded uh, string we received the decoded uh, string in this method as str now let's find out our current character now let's find out our current uh, string so str dot sub string sub string first beginning index so beginning index which is j plus one and it stop at j plus len we have to add one because this is exclusive it's written the it's written the string from index j plus one to this value minus one because this is exclusive and this is inclusive this is the nature of this substring method now we're gonna add this uh, string in our list so list dot add our current uh, string and let's move j to the next number which is j plus len plus one so j plus len plus one at the end we're gonna return our list so return list this is our algorithm this this method decode takes time complexity of n for the worst case it takes op to n which is equivalent to of n and it takes a space complexity of n where, where n is the length of our given string this is a premium lit code question you can practice this question on lint code for free i'll share the link in the resource section now let's run this test 
we see accepted let's submit it accepted we have solved this problem successfully i hope you have understood this video explanation if you have any question you can post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video welcome back to this video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question maximum depth of a binary tree for examples if we are given this binary tree what is the depth of this tree this is the root node of this tree this is the maximum depth of this tree also this can be the maximum depth of this tree what is the length of this maximum depth the maximum depth of this tree is the number of nodes we have in this path we see we have three nodes in this path one two and three if we consider this path then in this path we see we have total three nodes so the maximum depth of this tree is a three so for this given tree we have to return three what is the maximum depth of this binary tree this is the root node of this tree and we see that this is the this is the maximum depth of this tree in this path we see we have total four nodes one two three four so the maximum depth of this tree is four so for this given tree we have to return four now let's see how to solve this problem now let's see how to solve this problem for example we have this binary tree this is the root node this is the root node of our binary tree now what we are going to do we're going to call a function with this root node and we see this root is not a null node so what we are going to do we are going to break this problem into smaller problem first we're going to solve this sub problem then we're going to solve this sub problem if we solve this sub problem we will get the maximum depth of this sub tree or of this sub problem is 3 1 2 3 so here we will have value 3 and on the right we will have value 1 so if we have 3 on this sub problem and one on this sub problem now can we compute the maximum depth of this tree since we solve this sub problem and this sub problem so what is the maximum depth of this tree so what we will do we will take the max of this left subtree and uh, for this right subtree so if we take the maximum value from left and right so we get three three if we add one since we have to include this node so what we will get we'll get something like this one plus max of left and right so here what we will return we will return one plus max max of three and one is three so four we will return four this 4 is the answer and we see that the maximum depth of this binary tree is 4 4 is our answer now let's see how to solve this sub problem and this sub problem in order to solve this sub problem we have to break this sub problem further we are going to first solve the sub problem on the left subtree on the left subtree as far as possible now let's see how this algorithm works so first we have this node 2 let's let's break it so we get this sub problem after solving this sub problem we will back to this sub problem so here in this sub problem we have this node 4 4 is not a null node so what we're gonna do we're gonna break it so we get this sub problem here we see we have 6 6 is not null so let's break it further so if we break we get null on the left subtree of 6 we get null so null means nothing what is the depth of this subtree 0 so we're going to return from left 0 what is the depth of this subtree we have only null now means nothing so here we're going to return 0 the depth of this subtree is 0 now what is the depth of this subtree for this node for this node that is 1 plus max of left and right so max of left and right so what we get here on the left we get 0 we get on the right 0 so max of 0 and 0 is 0 plus 1 for this node itself because we have to include this node in the 
in the depth of our tree, right? For we were solving this. So what we'll get here, we get zero plus one. So here we will return one. Now for this node four, we solve the left sub tree. On the left sub tree, we find out the maximum depth one. On the left sub tree, we find out the maximum depth one. Now let's solve the right sub tree. So let's solve this right sub tree. In order to solve this right sub tree, we have to break this problem further. So we see seven is not null. So let's break it. This is our left sub tree. Let's break it further. So what do you get? Null and null. So on the left we have null. So the depth of this sub tree is zero. Let's return here zero. The depth of this sub tree is zero. Let's return here zero. We have to include this node in our in our depth of our of our sub tree. So if our, if we want to include, what do you have to apply? You have to apply this uh, this formula one plus max of left and right. So let's apply this formula here. So what we'll get then for this node eight one, and we clearly saw that the depth of this sub tree is one. Now let's go to the right. We solve the left sub tree for seven. Let's go to the right. On the right we have null. So we're gonna return here zero. The depth of this right sub tree is zero because we have null. So max of one and zero is one plus. We have to include this node. So one plus max of one and zero one. So one plus one is two. Here we're gonna return two. Now we solve the left sub tree for four. This is the left sub tree. We get the value one, and we solve the right sub tree, and we find out the maximum depth on the right sub tree. So we're gonna take the maximum value. Well, what is max? Max is two. So two plus one. We have to include this. If we include this current node, so what? what we get we get one plus max of left and right so one plus three equals to three so let's return here three now up until this point we solve this sub problem by breaking it down until we cannot break it anymore so we solve this problem we solve this sub problem now let's go to the right sub problem on the right sub problem we have five five is not null let's break it down so on the left you have null we're gonna return zero when we get null we cannot break it any further right so we have to return here zero this is our base case of our algorithm and on the right we have null as well since we processed left nothing to do with left so let's go to right on the right we have null so let's return here zero max of zero and zero is zero so one plus zero is one let's return here one now we solve the left subtree and right subtree. We solve this left. This is our left subtree. This is our right subtree. And we find out the maximum depth on the we find out the maximum depth on the left subtree. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna take the max three, max of three and one is three, and we have to include this node in our in our depth of our tree, right? So what do you get? If we apply this formula, you get one plus three, that is four. So we will return four. This four is the answer. This is how we can solve this problem. I hope you've understood how to solve this problem. What is the time complexity of this algorithm? We have to visit every single node of this tree right so that takes the time complexity o of n where n is the total number of nodes we have in the given tree and the space complexity is also o of n because we will solve this problem by calling a recursive function by calling a recursive function the recursion uses stack internally for the worst case the space complexity is o of n if we have a tree that is left skewed something like this so for the worst case the space complexity is o of n i hope you have understood this algorithm now let's see how this algorithm works now what we're gonna do we're gonna call a dfs function right here dfs with the root of our given tree so let's provide here root let's call our dfs function with the root now here our base case our base case in our base case what we're gonna do we're gonna check if root equals to by calling if we find out root equals to null root equals to null what we're going to do we are going to return zero when we reach this sub problem then we reach this sub problem here we return to zero because because the root becomes null here so we return zero this is the base case now left and right so left equals to 
left equals to what are we going to do? We're going to call our DFS function or breaking our problem into a smaller problem, right? So let's call here with the left property root dot left and here right. On the right, what we are going to do, we're going to call with the right a DFS. We're going to call here with the right subtree. So root dot right. Okay. And here what we are going to do, we're going to return one plus max of left, max of left and right. This is our algorithm. I hope you have understood this algorithm. If you have any question, you can post your question on the Q&A forum. Now let's see the implementation of this algorithm. Now let's implement our algorithm. Here what we're gonna do, we're gonna call a DFS function, DFS with the root. And we're going to return the value, whatever this DFS return, this DFS function return. Now here let's implement our DFS function. So here public, the DFS function will return integer, so int DFS, tree node root. Now inside here our base case, if root if root equals to null, then what we are going to return? We are going to return zero. So return zero. This is our base case. Now left, int left equals to DFS root dot left. We're calling with left subtree and here int right equals to DFS root dot right. We're calling with the right subtree. And here we're gonna return one plus math dot max left and right this is our code algorithm this algorithm takes time complexity of in and space complexity of in as well now let's run this code we see accepted now let's submit it we solved this problem successfully I hope you've understood this video explanation. Thanks for watching this video. I will see you in the next video. Welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to solve this coding interview question, same tree. In this problem, we are given two binary tree. For example, this is a binary tree. This is a binary tree. We have the axis of this node. This is the root node. And this is the root node. This is the root of this tree. And this is the root of this tree. Now we have to check whether the two tree are identical or not. At the root, we see that we have one one. And here we have two, here we have two, here three, three, four, four, five, five. So we see these two tree are identical. So we have to return true because we see these two tree identical. For example, if we are given these two tree, this is tree 1, this is tree 2. We are given binary tree. We have the axis of this root node and of this root node. We have to check whether these two tree are the same tree or not. Uh, we have to check whether these two tree are identical or not. We see 1, here we have 1. On the left of 1, we have 2. On the left of 1, we have 2. On the left of 2, we have 4. On the left of 2, we have 4. On the right of 2 we have 5, on the right of 2 we have 5. On the right of 1 we have 3, on the right of 1 we have 3. On the left of 3 we have 6, on the left of 3 we have 6. On the right of 3 we have 7, on the right of uh, 3 we have 7. So we see these two tree are identical. So we have to return true because these two tree are same. For example, if we are given this two tree, this is root, this is the root, okay? We see the root node are the same. 2 here we see 2 here we have 3 we have 3 then left left up 2 is 4 right is 5 so 4 5 here we have 4 5 then left of 3 is 6 left of 3 is 7 so we see this mass here it is not massing so we can say these two three are not identical so we have to return false now let's see how to solve this problem for sake of understanding, let's assume we are given this two tree, this two binary tree. This is the root of this tree one, this is the root of this tree two. 
So we we have access of this root node and of this root node. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna call a function, we're gonna call a DFS function. Now we're gonna check this node and this node. We see the value are the same. If the value are the same, we're gonna call with the left of one, also with the left of one. So we get this and we get this. Now we see these two nodes are the same. So let's move forward. Let's call with the left of two. Also the left or with the left of this node two. So on the left of two we have four, on the left of two we have here four. We see these two nodes are the same. The value are the same. So let's call with the left. We have here left. Left is null, right is null. So for all the lip nodes we have null and null okay now let's call with the left of four left of this node with the left of this node we see the left of this node is null the left of this node is null okay so we find out up until this point the two three identical now let's call with the right on the right we see we have null here we have null as well okay so we find out we find out the two three identical up until this point so we have processed this node 4, this node 4. We have processed the left of this node 2. The left subtree of this node 2. Now let's go to the right. On the right we have 5 and here on the right we have 5. And on the left of 5 we have null, on the right we have null. On the left of this 5 we have null, on the right of this we have null. Up until this point we see that the two tree are identical. So up until this point we compared with the left subtree. With the left subtree of our root node we see the left subtree are identical now let's move on to the right subtree on the right we have three here we have three identical on the left we have six on the left we have six of three so here we see on the left of three we have seven so we find out mismatch we find out two nodes that are not identical so what we are going to do we're going to immediately return false let's return false this is how this algorithm works this is how we can solve this problem this algorithm takes time complexity o of n where n is the number of nodes we have in the t1 or in the t2 and the space complexity is also o of n for the recursive function call now let's see how this algorithm works. Now let's see our algorithm. Let's create a DFS function DFS. I'm going to provide here root 1 and root 2, R1 and R2. This is the root of our first tree, this is the root of our second tree. Now inside here we're going to check if R1, if R1 equals to null and R2 equals to null then what we are going to do if this condition is true we're going to return true that means our tree is identical return true why is that first we call with one and one we see one and one identical then two two identical four four identical on the left of four we know that we have null on the left of four we have null so null and null for null and null we have to return true this is our first condition now our second condition if we saw r1 if we saw r1 r1 is equals to null but r2 is not equals to null in that case what we have to do we have to return false because if this condition is true our tree is not identical so here we're going to return false our uh, our third condition if R1 is not equals to null but R2 equals to null. If this condition is true, our tree is not identical. So we're going to return false. Then our third condition, here we can combine these two conditions into one condition. So let's combine it into one condition. If we combine what we get, if we combine we get if R1 equals to null or R2 equals to null, R2 equals to null, then we are going to return false. Why this condition handle this two, this two scenario? 
let me show you here we have r1 equals to null and r2 equals to null if the both if both of them are null it will return true if any of them is null that means the opposite the opposite is not null right so we can eliminate eliminate these two uh, two conditions or we can combine these two condition into one condition so we don't have to write this condition we can write this condition it will handle these two these two cases now we're going to check if r1 dot val is not equals to r2 dot val then what we are going to do we're going to return return false if the value are not the same or tree is not identical now left and right so left equals to let's call it the left subtree so dfs r1 dot left and r2 dot left now right subtree with let's call it right subtree so right equals to dfs r1 dot right and r2 dot right and at the end here we have to return we have to return true if both of them are true so left and right if both of this left and right is true only then it will return true this is our core algorithm this algorithm takes time complexity o of n and space complexity o of n as well i hope you've understood this video explanation now let's implement this algorithm using java programming language we have access to this node p and q p is the root of our first tree q is the root of our second tree now let's call it dfs function dfs with p and q p and q are the root of our two tree now here we're going to return whatever this dfs return now let's implement the dfs function right below here public return type is boolean dfs tree node root one tree node root root 2 we have this function dfs and here we have the access of root 1 and root 2 now we're gonna check first our base case if root equals to null and root 2 root 2 equals to null then we're gonna return true if this condition is true that means up until this point while this algorithm executing our tree is identical now our second condition if we saw root 1 equals to null or root 2 equals to null here we combined two condition into one condition if this condition is true that means our tree is not identical so we have to return false if this condition is if root equals to null that means root is not equals to null if root equals to null that means root 1 is not equals to null since we have this condition at the first place now our third condition if root 1 dot val is not equals to root 2 dot val then we're going to return false if the value are not the same so our tree is not identical now our left subtree so boolean boolean left equals to dfs root 1 dot left and root 2 dot left now our right subtree so boolean right equals to dfs root 1 dot right and root 2 dot right and here we're going to return left and right this is our core algorithm if the both if both left and right return true only then it will return true this is our algorithm it takes time complexity o of n and space complexity o of n as well i hope you've understood this video explanation now let's run this code we see accepted now let's submit this code we have solved this problem successfully if you have any question post your question on the q a forum Thanks for watching this video. In this video, we're going to solve this coding interview question invert binary tree. In this problem, we are given a binary tree. This is a binary tree. This is the root node. We have to invert this binary tree. If we invert this binary tree, what we get? Here, we get 3 
and here we get a 2. So if we invert or flip this binary tree, then we get this binary tree. We have to return this binary tree. If we are given this binary tree, if we invert this binary tree, we get this binary tree. First, we have to invert this subtree. So here we have to swap 2 and 7. So we get here 7, here 2. Now we have to uh, we have to swap 5 and 20. If we swap, we get here 20 and we get here a 5. We see this node 5 has two child. So left child 7 and right child 2. So here uh, for this node 20, this node 20 has no child. So we get this uh, binary tree. 10 20, 5, 7, 2. We have to written this binary tree. This is our last example. In this example, we see that we have this binary tree. If we invert or flip this binary tree, what we get? We get this binary tree. So here, what we are going to do first, let's, let's flip this. So if we flip, what do we get? Here, 75, here, 25. Now we have to flip. Now we have to flip this node and here. Here we see we have no node. That means we can assume here we have null. So if we swap on the right on the right child of 200, we have no node. So here we have null again. And here we what we get? We get 350 on the left child. Now what we have to do? We have to swap this 50 and 200 so 200 will move to the left child and 50 will move to the right child so what we get we get 100 200 300 uh, 5 0 then 50 75 25 so for this given binary tree if we flip or invert this binary tree we get this binary tree now let's see how to solve this problem for sake of understanding, let's assume we are given this binary tree. Now let's see how to invert this binary tree. We have access of this node. This is the root node. Now what we are going to do, we are going to break our problem into smaller problem. So first, let's move to the left subtree. Now let's solve this subtree. After solving this subtree, will solve this subtree so if we solve this left subtree what we will get we will get 5 then 7 then 2 if we solve right subtree what we will get we will get 20 because we have only one node on the right after solving the left subtree and right subtree we can solve this problem now let's see how to solve the left subtree we are breaking our problem into smaller problem. In order to solve this subtree, let's break it down further. So this is our subtree. Now let's solve this subtree. After solving this subtree, we'll solve this subtree. Then by solving these two subtree, we're going to solve this subtree. Now let's see how to solve this subtree. Here we see for this node 2, it has left child null right child null so if we solve null and null what we get we get null and null for this subtree we see that left child is null right child is null if we invert this subtree what do we get we get here null here null so if we swap this to null so it remains the same so we solve this subtree. Now let's move to the right subtree. On the right subtree, what do we have? We see we have 7, null, null. Similarly, if we invert this subtree, this null moves here, this null moves here. We know that null means nothing. Null means empty. So we solve this subproblem and this subproblem. Now what we are going to do? We're going to solve this subproblem. So if we solve this subproblem, what we get? We get 7, 2, 5. So on the left of 5, we have 7. On the right, we have 2. So we have to flip this 2 node. If we flip, we get here 7 and here 2. And null is connected. The left and right child of 7 is null. And left and right of this node 2 is null as well. 
So we solve this sub problem, right? We solve this sub problem. Now let's go to the right sub problem. This is our right sub problem. So here, what we are going to do, we're going to flip this to a node. If we flip, it remains the same because null means nothing. We can say empty. So what we get, we get 20. And the left and right child of 20 is null. So we solve the left subtree, we get this subtree by solving the left subtree and by solving the right subtree we get this subtree. Now let's solve this problem. So we solve the left, this left subtree and the right subtree. So by breaking down this problem we solve this, this sub problem and this sub problem. Now let's solve our problem with the result of left left subtree and the right subtree. So here what we are going to do, we are going to swap, we're gonna swap this two node or we're gonna invert this two node. If we invert what we get, what we get. So 20 moves to the left of a 10. So here we get 20. We get here 20 and this is the root. So on the left we get 20 and on the right we get 5. So this is our this is our result. So if we invert this binary tree, we get this binary tree. So we have to return this binary tree. This is how we can solve this problem. This is our second example. Let's see how to invert this binary tree. First, what we are going to do, we're going to break our problem into smaller problem. Let's solve this sub problem. So let's solve this sub problem here. In order to solve this sub problem, let's break it down further so we get this sub problem. Now, if we invert this sub tree, what do we get? Here we will have null. Here also we will have null if we invert it. Now we see we have solved this sub problem. Let's go to the right sub problem. We see on the right we have null. So nothing to do here. So we solve the left and the right sub problem. Now let's solve this sub problem. How we can solve this sub problem? Now what we have to do, we have to invert this, uh, we have to invert this subtree. So here we're gonna we're gonna invert it. So four moves here, null moves here. So what we get, we get here uh, something like this of uh, four and on the left we get null and here we get a two. So by by inverting this sub problem we get this two null four. Here we have null on the left of four and on the right of four also null. Now let's solve this right sub problem. Let's solve this right sub problem. So if we solve this right sub problem first let's break it down Let's break it down. So let's solve this. If we solve this, what we get? We get five. We get here. Uh, we get here five. So five. Then we have here six. It will just swap this null and this null. Then here, if we solve this, we have to swap this null and this null. So it remains the same. So we solve this sub problem and this sub problem. Now what we are going to do, we're going to solve this sub problem. In order to solve this sub problem, what we are going to do, we're gonna flip this to node or just let's invert it. If we invert what we get on the left of three, we get a six and on the right of six, we get five. And we see the root of this sub problem is three. So on the left of 3 we get 6, on the right of 3 we get a 5. And here we have null on the left of 6, on the right we have null, on the left we have null and on the right we have null. So we solve the left sub problem and the right sub problem. Now let's solve our our this sub problem. Let's solve this sub problem. So here in order to solve this sub problem, what we have to do? We have to we have to swap or we have to invert this two node. So if we invert on the left of one, on the left of one, we get three, and on the right of one, we get two. So if we flip this binary tree, we get this binary tree. We have to return this binary tree. This is 
our algorithm. This algorithm takes time complexity O of n because we have to visit every single node once and for the worst case it will take space complexity O of n for the recursive function call. I hope you have understood this video explanation. Let's call a DFS function DFH. This function takes the root of our given binary tree. So root. Now here our base case. Our base case if we saw if root if root equals to null what we are going to do? We are going to return null. So return null. So when we are breaking our problem into smaller problem. So when we're breaking our problem into smaller problem, first we get this sub problem. Then we get this sub problem. Then here for this sub problem, we call with the left of four, we get null. So we have to return null because in that case, the root becomes null. And we have to call with the right. On the right, we get null as well. So here, left. Left equals to dfs root dot left. First, we are moving on the left subtree. Then, when we see we cannot move on the left subtree anymore, when we cannot break our problem anymore on the left subtree, let's go to the right subtree. So, right, right equals to dfs root dot right. So, here we will have the result of our left subtree. And here we'll have the result of our right subtree. Now what we have to do, we have to set if this is our root. If this is our root and if we find out here left and right. Now what we have to do, we have to swap it. We have to uh, swap it. So the left, the left of this node should point here and the right of this node should point here. So we have to swap it or we have to invert it. So here root dot left root dot left equals to right and root dot root dot right equals to left and we're gonna return the root so written the root this is our algorithm this is our dfs algorithm time complexity is linear and the space complexity is also linear now let's see the implementation of this algorithm. We can create a separate function DFS or we can call this function invert tree in DFS manner. Let's create here a function DFS and let's provide the root of our tree. This function will invert our given binary tree and it will return the root. So we're going to return the root. Now let's implement this function DFS public return type is tree node now dfs tree node root this is the root of our given this is the root of our given tree now we're gonna check if we saw root equals to null what we're gonna do we're gonna return null now left tree node left equals to dfs root dot left now right tree node right equals to dfs root dot right now here what we're gonna do we're gonna set root dot root dot left equals to right and root dot right equals to left at the end we're gonna return the root this is our core algorithm this algorithm takes time complexity o of n and space complexity O of n as well. This is our algorithm. I hope you've understood this video explanation. This is a straightforward algorithm. Now let's run this code. We see it passed these three test cases. Now let's submit this code. We solve this problem, it takes zero millisecond runtime. I hope you've understood this video explanation. If you have any question, you can post your question on the q and forum. Thanks for watching this video. In this video, we're going to solve this coding interview question, binary tree maximum path sum. In this problem, we are given a binary tree. 
For example, if we are given this binary tree, what is the maximum path sum of this binary tree? This is the maximum path sum of this binary tree. The sum is 7 plus 6 plus 8 equals to 21. This is the this is the maximum path sum of this binary tree. So for this binary tree, we have to return 21. If we are given this binary tree, what is the maximum path sum of this binary tree? This is the maximum path. This is the path. This path contains the sum, the maximum sum. So the maximum sum is 3 plus 7. 3 plus 7 plus 4 equals to 14. So for this given binary tree, we have to return 14. What is the maximum path sum for this given binary tree? For this binary tree, the maximum path is this. This is the maximum path sum. This path contains the maximum path sum. So 19 plus 17 plus 5. So 19 plus 17 plus 5 equals to 41. So for this given binary tree, we have to return 41. 14, one of 41 is the maximum path sum for this given binary tree. Can you told me what is the maximum path sum for this given binary tree? This is the maximum path. This is the path contains maximum path sum. So 6 plus 2 plus minus 1 plus 17 plus 19 equals to 43. So for this given binary tree, we have to written 43. In order to find out maximum path sum, the path may go through the root node. But this is not mandatory. Here we see that this path does not go through the root node. So the maximum path may go through the root node, but this is not mandatory. Now let's see how to solve this problem. Now let's see how to solve this problem. For example, we have this binary tree. First thing, we are going to create a variable max. Max equals to negative infinity. In this max variable, we will store the maximum path sum. This is the root node. Now we are going to break our problem into smaller problem. This is our left subtree. This is our right subtree. If we break our problem into smaller problem, first we get this, this subtree. We'll move in the left subtree as far as possible. Now let's break this subtree further. So we get this left subtree. We see this is null. So we're going to return zero. This is the base case. Null means nothing empty. So you can return here zero. Now let's go to the right. On the right we see null. So here we are going to return 0. This is our base case. Now for this sub problem we see that we find out the maximum value on the left subtree and the maximum value on the right subtree. Now how to find out the maximum path sum in this in this subtree. In order to find out the maximum path sum we're going to apply this formula max equals to max of max and root dot val plus left max plus right max. Here for this sub problem, this is our current root. The left max is 0, right max is 0. So 7 plus 0 plus 0 equals to 7. Max of 7 and minus infinity is 7. So we find out the maximum path sum in this sub problem. Now what we are going to return to this node uh, 6 from the left subtree. We're going to return root dot val plus max of left max and right max. So from the left max we get 0, from the right max we get 0. So max of 0 and 0 is 0 plus this value 7. So 7 plus 0 is 7. Here we're going to return a 7. Why we are returning here 7? We are returning the maximum path sum from this subtree from any node, from any node, from a specific node we can say, from a specific node specific node to the root of our current sub problem 7 so we can say this is the maximum path we're returning or this is the maximum path sum we're returning since the left max and right max are the same 
so here we're returning seven now here let's go to the right on the right we have this sub problem here we see we have null so we're going to return zero here we have null we're going to return zero so eight plus zero plus zero equals to eight max of seven and eight is eight so let's update this value with eight now what we're going to return to this node six we're going to return the maximum path sum from specific node to this uh, the maximum path sum from specific node from a node to this node 8 so the maximum path sum can be this or this so here we're gonna return 8 now for this node 6 if a path go through this node 6 on the left we find out left max on the right we find out right max so 7 plus 6 plus 8 equals to 21 so max of 21 and 8 is 21 now here in this node what we're gonna return we are going to return the max of left and right 8 plus 6 that is 14 so here we're gonna return 14 so to this node we are returning 14 why we're returning here a 14 that's because if we have node on the top of this node uh, 6 we want to find out a path that may go through the top node that's why we're returning here 14 but we see that we are done and we find out this max value 21 and we'll return this 21 this is how this algorithm works this algorithm takes time complexity time complexity o of n and space complexity o of n as well now let's take one more example for better understanding for example we are given this binary a tree let's see how to find out the maximum path sum initially let's declare a variable max equals to negative infinity this is our root node let's break this problem into smaller problem this is our sub problem now in this sub problem we see this is the root let's break it further so we get this on the left we have null so let's return zero on the right we have null let's return here zero so zero plus zero plus minus one we get minus one max of minus one and negative infinity is minus one so max equals to minus one now what we're going to return from this to this node uh, three so we have to find out a maximum path that uh, stop at minus one start at any node and stop at minus one and we have to find out the maximum the maximum path sum okay from this from this subtree that stop at minus one from any node to minus one so max of zero and zero is zero plus minus one minus one so here we're going to return minus one but if we return negative value what does this mean if we return negative value for this node we say that if we return negative value if we add this value the maximum path sum will be decreased whatever value we have here doesn't matter whatever value we have here the value will be decreased if we add the negative value so we're not going to return negative value so we're going to return max of zero and the negative value if we have any value from the left from the left call by calling our dfs function if we find out any value that is negative we'll return zero so here we're going to return zero not minus one now let's move to the right subtree here we see null so here we're going to return zero here we have null we're going to return zero so zero plus zero plus minus three what we get we get minus three so max of minus three and minus one is minus one so we solve this sub problem what we're going to return here what we're going to return here we're going to return a maximum value that stop at minus three from any node from a node to minus three where we have maximum path sum in this in this subtree so here we see that max of zero and zero zero plus minus three is minus three so here can we return minus three can you return minus three no we will not return negative value we will return positive value so we will return the max up the negative value and zero so we'll get here zero so for this sub problem we see from the left of three from the left of three we get the value zero from the right of three we get value zero so zero plus zero plus three equals to three so max of minus one and three is three now what we're going to return from this left sub tree to this node seven so here we're going to return max of left and right is zero plus three so we're going to we're going to return here three let's go to the right on the right we have this sub problem here we have null so we're going to return zero here we have null we're going to return zero so max of four plus zero plus zero and three equals to four so let's update this value with four
Now what we're going to return from this, we're going to return here 4. So for this node 7, for this node 7, if a path go through this node, the maximum possible path sum is 3 plus 7 plus 4 equals to 14. So we will get max of 4 and 14 equals to 14. Now what we're going to return to this node 7? We're going to return the max of 3 and 4, that is 4. So 4 plus 7, 4 plus 7 equals to 11. So here we're going to return 11. And we see we have processed every single node in our tree. So we are done and we have answer in our maximum variable. Here we are storing the maximum path sum. We're going to return 14. This is the answer. This is our third example. Let's see how this algorithm works one more time. Let's declare a variable max equals to negative infinity. This is our root node. Let's break our problem into smaller problem. This is our sub problem. Let's break it further. We get this. So here we have null, we're going to return 0. Here we have null, we're going to return 0. 1 plus 0 plus 0 equals to 1. So max of minus infinity and 1 is 1. So for this sub problem, we find out the answer 1. Now what we're going to return here to this node 2. In this node, we are going to return max of left and right, that is 0 and 0. So 0 plus 1 is 1. Here we're going to return 1. Now let's go to the right subtree here. We see null, so we're gonna return we're gonna return zero here, we're gonna return zero. So six plus zero plus zero equals to six. So max of one and six is six. Now from this sub problem, what we're gonna return? What we are going to return? We are going to return six plus max of zero and zero. So zero. So we're gonna return here a six. So for this for this sub problem. For this sub problem on the left we have one the maximum path sum on the left sub t1 on the right we have a six if a path go through this node two then what is the maximum possible path sum one plus two plus six one plus two plus six equals to nine so max of six and nine is nine we're going to store here nine now from this now from this sub problem what we're going to return to minus one this is very very important. Pay your full attention here. So for this node 2, we see the maximum maximum sum we get from this left is 1. And the maximum from this we get 6. Now we're going to return the max. Max is 6. A max of 1 and 6 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. So here we're going to return 8. So here we are returning the value. Here we're returning the value 8. So in this sub we are finding out the maximum maximum sum 8 from any node to the node 2 to the node 2 this is the root node we can say for this uh, sub problem. So we see the maximum sum is 8 and we see this path this path in this path we have the maximum sum 8. So in order to find out the maximum path sum that go through minus 1 that's start from here that start from this node 6 and to this node minus one, something like this. That's why we're written here eight. Now let's go to the right subtree. Here we have 17, 19, five. Now here we have 19, we break it. Then here we'll get zero, here we'll get zero. 19 plus zero and zero. So 19 plus zero plus zero equals to 19. So max of nine and 19 is 19. And here what we're gonna return, we're gonna return 19 plus max of zero and zero is zero. So we're gonna return here 19. Let's break it. So we get here 0, here we get 0, 5 plus 0 plus 0 equals to 5. So max of 5 and 19 is 19. Here we're going to return 5 plus max of 0 and 0. So 5. So for this sub problem, what we're going to return to this node minus 1? To this node minus 1. Okay. First, let's compute the maximum sum here in this, in this subtree. So 19 plus 17 plus 5. 19 plus 17 plus 5 equals to 41. So max of 19 and 41 equals to 41. Now what we're going to return to this node minus 1 from this subtree. So from this subtree we're going to find out a maximum path, maximum path from a node, from any node to node 17. This 17 is the root of this of this sub problem. In order to find out the maximum path, we're going to take the max from left max and right max. So we get max of 19 and 5. So what we get here? We get 19, 19 plus 17 equals to 36. We're going to return here 36. Now, 
let's compute here now let's compute the maximum path sum for this tree the left max is 8 the right max is 36 if a path go through this node minus 1 the maximum possible path sum is 8 minus 1 plus 36 which is 43 so max of 41 and 43 equals to 43 now here to this node what we're going to return we are going to return max of left and right the max is 36 minus 1 which is 35 we're going to return here 35 and here you see that we're returning 35 we may have some node on the top of this minus 1 this may not be the root node if this is not the root node if we have more node on the right we're solving if we have some node here then we're solving this sub this is a sub problem in that case so in that case we're returning here 35 it means that a node start at any node we don't know that can be from left sub t or from the right sub t from any node to this root this current root which is minus 1 the maximum sum is 35 and we clearly saw that this is the path so we may have something like this also we may have some path if we have on the right sub t some nodes okay i hope you've understood this video explanation now here we returned 35 and we see we have processed every single node so we are done and in our max variable in our max variable we have 43 we're going to return this 43 this is our solution to this problem this algorithm takes time complexity o of n and ta it takes space complexity o of n as well this is our algorithm now let's see the pseudocode first i'm going to declare a variable max max equals to negative infinity let's call a dfs function dfs function with the root of our given tree now here we're going to check if the root equals to null if root equals to null then what we are going to do we are going to return zero this is the base case by calling our recursive function when we reach the null node you have to return zero so this is the base case now what we have to do we have to call our dfs function recursively so left let's call it left max left max equals to we're going to call our function recursively so dfs dfs let's call this function right here dfs root dot left root dot left and write max write max equals to dfs root dot write this function call will return the maximum value from the left from the left subtree when i solve this from here it will return the value of one it will return the value of one but if if it written negative value we have to return zero so here we're going to take the max max of zero and whatever this function return here as well so max of zero and this value if it's written a value that is greater than zero and in that case we'll get that value but if it's written negative value will return zero now we have to calculate the maximum so maximum equals to maximum equals to max of root value or current root so root dot val root dot val root dot val plus left max so left max plus right right max or the max so maximum of this value and max and we're going to return we are going to return the value for when you solve this sub problem what we're going to return here we're going to return the max the root value plus so root dot val plus max from lm for left max and rm for right max okay so we're going to return max of 1 and 66 plus this current value 2 so we're going to return here's 8 so here we're finding out the maximum path sum that start at any node from any node to the root node of our current subtree so here we get 8 and we're returning here this algorithm takes time complexity o of n and space complexity o of n now let's implement this algorithm 
first let's create a variable max equals to integer dot mean value this is the negative infinity the minimum value we can store in 32 bits in this variable we will store the maximum path sum now let's call it dfs function dfs uh, dfs let's call it with root this function will will calculate the maximum path sum and will store in this variable let's written the maximum path sum now let's implement our dfs function public return type is integer dfs it takes the root node so tree node root now right inside here base case if root equals to root equals to null then what we're gonna do we're gonna return we're gonna return zero this is the base case now left max so int left max equals to dfs root dot left if this function return negative value so in that case we have to return max and so we have to return zero so max of zero and this value so math dot max int write max write max equals to dfs dfs root dot write if this function return negative value we have to return zero so math dot max zero and let's call this function don't be confused don't be confused by this two line of code now here we're going to compute the max so max equals to math dot max whatever we have in the max variable and root dot val plus left max left max plus right max this is the formula to compute our maximum path sum and here we're going to return root dot val this is the root of our current subtree plus max of so math math dot max left max and right max this is our algorithm this algorithm takes time complexity o of n and it takes space complexity o of n now let's run this code it pass two test cases now let's submit it we have solved this problem successfully i hope you have understood this video explanation if you have any question you can post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video welcome back to this video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question a level order traversal of a binary tree we are given a binary tree let's assume we are given this binary tree we have to find out the level order traversal first we'll traverse this level then this level then this level so first we'll have one in our first level in the second level we'll have two three in the third level we will have four five six seven so for this given tree we have to written this list of list this is for first level this is for second level and this is for third level now let's see how to find out the level order traversal of a given binary tree in order to find out level order traversal of a binary tree we're going to use a q data structure in the queue first we're going to insert the root one is the root let's insert in our queue this is our initial step we'll write out our traversal right here now in our queue we have one one items it means that in our current level we have only one node so size equals to one now let's remove the one node now let's remove the front from Q. This is the front. This is our current node. So let's remove it and let's add it in our list. So we add it here. Since you removed one, so our size equals to zero. Now let's export the uh, child of one. We have two and a uh, three. So let's add two left child, then three right child. And now we see size equals to zero. When you have size equals to zero, we'll add the list in our answer so let's add this list this this is for our first level for this level now we see the size of our queue is 2 size equal to 2 now what we're going to do we're going to remove the item from our queue until 
size equals to zero. If we saw size equals to zero, we will not remove that. If we saw size equals to zero, we will not remove from our queue. If we saw size equals to zero, we will move to the next step. First, let's remove two. We remove two, let's add here in our list. Let's find out the child up to four and five. So let's add here four and five. Now size equals to one since we removed one. Now let's remove the front that is three. Let's add in our list. Now size equals to zero. Let's explore the adjacent. Let's explore the child of three, six and seven. Let's add here six and seven. We see size equals to zero. If we find our size equals to zero, we will add our list in our answer. So two, three. This is for first level, this is for second level, for this level. Now we see size equals to four. It means that in our current level, we have total four nodes. Here we see we have total four nodes. First, let's remove four. Let's add in our list. So size equals to now three. It means that in our current level, we have three more nodes. We see this node has no child. So let's remove this front five. Let's add here. This node has no child. So size equals to two. Now let's remove six. Add here. Now size equals to one. Now let's remove this. Let's add here. We have no child for seven. Seven has no child. Now we find out size equals to zero. Since you find out size equals to zero, we will add our list in our answer. So we get four, five, six, seven. Now we see our queue is empty. When you saw our queue is empty, we will return this list of list. This is how we can solve this problem. This algorithm will take time complexity O of n where n is the number of nodes and it will take space complexity O of n for the queue data structure. n is the number of nodes we have in the given binary tree. Now let's implement this algorithm. This is the node of our binary tree. It has three components, value, left, and right. Value is the value for current node, left is the left child, right is the right child. Now let's implement this algorithm. Now let's implement our algorithm. First, I'm going to create our list of list. In this list, we will store the answer. So let's call it traversal equals to new array list. Now I'm going to check if we saw root equals to null, we will return the empty list of list. So written traversal. Now here I'm going to create a queue data structure. So queue in the queue we will store the node, a tree node. Queue equals to new linked list. Now I'm going to add in our queue the root. I'm going to add the root to the queue. Now let's run a loop while our queue is not empty. Well, queue is not empty. Now I'm going to find out the number of nodes we have in our current level. So int size equals to queue dot size. Size is the number of nodes we have in our current level. Now I'm going to create a list for our current level. So list integer current level equals to new array list. Now I'm going to run again while loop while size is not equals to zero. We have to process our current level. First, I'm going to remove the front from the queue. So tree node temp equals to queue dot pull. Now I'm going to add this node in our current level. So I'm going to add the node value in our current level. So current level dot add temp dot val. Now I'm going to check the left child. If temp dot left is not equals to null, if the left child exists, we'll add that child to the queue. So queue dot add temp dot left if right child exists. So temp dot right is not equals to null. If 
the right child exists, we'll add the right child in our queue. So queue.add temp dot right. At the end here, I'm gonna just subtract one from the site. When we have processed our current level, what we will do? We will add the current level to our traversal. So let's add that traversal dot add our current level. At the end, we will return the traversal. This traversal list of list. This algorithm will take time complexity O of n and it will take a space complexity is also O of n where n is the number of nodes. Now let's run this code. Accept it. Let's submit it. Accepted. We have solved this problem successfully. I hope you have understood this video explanation. If you have any question guys, post your question on the Q&A forum. Thanks for watching this video. I will see you in the next video. In this video, we are going to solve this coding interview question, serialize and deserialize binary tree. In this problem, we are given a binary tree. First, we have to serialize this binary tree into string representation. Then we have to construct our binary tree from the string representation. So first we're gonna serialize into a string representation then then we have to construct our binary tree from the string. We can serialize we can serialize our given binary tree in many different ways. We can use pre-order traversal to serialize. We can use in order. We can use post order, post order, or we can use level order traversal. In this video, we're going to serialize our binary tree using pre-order traversal. We know that in pre-order traversal, first we traverse the root node, then we traverse the left, then we traverse the right. First, we have this node 7. This is the root. So let's traverse first 7. Then on the left, on the left of 7, we have 5. So on the left, we have 5, 5. We are separating each node using comma. Now let's go to the left of 5. We get 4. Let's go to the left of 4. What do we get? We get a hash. On the right of 4, what do we get? We get a hash. Now let's go to this node 6. 6 then on the left of 6 we have null. So let's add here hash. We are representing null using this hash symbol. You can use any other symbol. Also you can use here x or y or z to represent the null the null node except the number because the number exists in our tree. So you can use any other character I am using here. I am using so you can use here any other character. On the right of 6 what do we have null? So a hash. Now 8. On the left of 8 what do we have? Null. So a hash. On the right of 8 we have 9. So 9. On the left of 9 we have hash. Uh, on the left of 9 we have null. So hash on the right of 9 we have null. So hash. So we get this uh, string. This is the this is the string representation of this binary tree. So we serialized this tree into string representation. Now what we have to do? We have to construct this binary tree from this string representation. So if we serialize this tree using pre-order traversal, we get this string representation. Now if we construct tree from this from this string representation, we get this a tree. So we serialized our tree into this is string representation from this string representation we deserialized deserialized this string into our binary tree this is how so if we deserialized this string into tree we get this a tree i hope you've understood this problem 
now let's take one more example for example if we are given this this binary tree if we serialize this binary tree using pre-order tower cell we get this string so we serialized this tree into this string representation now we have to deserialize this string into our tree so if we deserialize we will get this binary tree so first we have to so first we have to serialize our given binary tree into a string then we have to construct our tree from the string now let's see how to solve this problem for example we have this binary tree if we serialize this binary tree what we will get we will get a string representation let's serialize this for example we have this binary tree now let's serialize this tree into string representation using pre-order traversal so first seven five then four on the left are four null so hash right is null a hash then six on the left of six we have null so hash we're representing null using a hash on the right we have null so hash then eight then on the left null so hash on the right nine on the left null on the right null so hash we serialized our binary tree into string representation we serialized our binary tree into this string representation using pre-order traversal now we have to construct our binary tree from this now we have to construct our binary tree from this string representation first thing what we are going to do we are going to convert this string into queue data structure we converted this string into this queue data structure now we can remove from the front efficiently first we have this value 7 let's remove it let's create a node we know that in binary tree node every single node has two child left child and right child we have nothing on the left so null nothing on the right null so we removed this 7 we serialized this tree using pre-order traversal in pre-order traversal first we traverse root then we traverse left then we traverse right so the first node the first node is the root node we created this node with this value 7 this is the first value in our traversal result so this this is the root node first root then left so first root then left so this five this five goes this fives so this five so so this five is the part of left left subtree now we have to construct the left subtree of our tree now let's see how to construct the left subtree now let's create here a node five now we have to attach this node 5 on the left of 7 right so let's create here this node 5 so let's remove this node 5 and let's let's remove this value 5 let's create a node and let's attach to the left of 7 so we attached to the left of 7 this node 5 so now we are dealing with this node so on the next of five we have four that means this four this four is the part of left subtree of five so for this node we have two child left and right child initially the child are null so let's create here a node that should goes on the left subtree so here let's create a node four let's remove it so we created this node four now let's deal with this node so here this is our root for this subtree this is our root okay so for on the next of four we have a hash that means the left child of this node four the left child of this node four is a hash if we consider this is the root this is the root then the next node is the node 
on the left subtree on the next we have a hash that means the left subtree is null of this node 4 so on the left let's add us here null now let's move to the next the next node first root that means first here we have 4 hash hash we can say this is root this is left this is right for this subtree right so here we have 4 4 then hash that means the left is null then we have this hash that means the right is null as well so on the right we have null node so we have at us the left and the right child of this node 4 here we are addressing the left child we are adding the left child 5 then here we are adding the left child 4 to this node 5 now we are we are addressing we are adding the left child just for sake of understanding this child must goes on the left of 7 this child must must goes in the left of 5 so here we completed this subtree right by completing this subtree we are going to return this node 4 to the left of 5 from the left of 5 so we return this node 4 only then we will add as the left child of this 5 of this node 5 this node 4 so let's add here so we removed this the next node is a 6 the next node is 6 we completed the left of 5 the left of 5 we completed this subtree right we completed then the next of 5 so this 5 here we have something like this 5 4 uh, 5 4 a hash a hash this is the root this is the left of 5 right then this is the right this is the right so here we have 6 6 should goes on the right so here let's create a node let's create a node here a uh, 6 after completing the left and right child of this node 6 will attach to the right child of 5 so let's move to the next the next is hash that means null on the left of 6 we have null then we have again hash that means the right of 6 is null as well so null we completed the left and right child of this node 6 so let's add us to the right child of 5 let's add us here this node 6 as the right child so for 5 this is left and this is right now for 7 this is 7 the left of 7 we remove this the left of 7 is this this is the left of 7 and this is the right of 7 so we completed the left subtree of 7 we solved we resolved the left node and the right node of this node 5 so now let's attach to the left of 7 this node 5 now let's go to the right let's go to the right on the right here we have this node 8 now let's remove 8 let's create a node here 8 we're not attaching right now we will attach this node to the right of 7 after solving the left and right right child of this node 8 okay then we have here hash that means the left of 8 is null so here we have null then we have 9 that means the right of 8 is 9 so let's create here a node will attach this node 9 to the right of 8 after solving the left and right right child of 9 so for this we can consider for this part 9 a hash a hash we can assume this is root this is left this is right so this is root then left is a hash that means null then right right is a hash that means null so we solve the left and right right so we solve the left and right child of this node 9 now let's add us to the right of 8 so here if we consider 8 is the root then this is the left this is the right we are maintaining these properties root left right 8 is the root this is the left and this is the right 
now we see that we have solved the left and right child of 8 so what we're going to do now we are going to add the right child of this node 7 let's add 8 as the right child we see that we have processed all the nodes now we see our queue is empty our queue is empty now what we're gonna do we're gonna return this root node this is how we can solve this problem in order to serialize our tree into string representation it takes time complexity time complexity o of n overall time complexity o of n and overall space complexity o of n for this is for serialization also for deserialization it takes overall o of n time complexity and o of n space complexity now let's see the implementation of this algorithm first let's serialize our tree into string representation using pre-order traversal if root equals to null if our current node equals to null we're gonna return a hash now left a string left equals to serialize root dot left now a string right equals to serialize root dot right this is our straight pre-order algorithms pre-order traversal algorithm here we're gonna return root dot val plus let's add comma as a separator plus the left left plus let's use comma as separator plus right this is our serialization algorithms this is a straightforward pre-order traversal algorithms when we are done with this serialize function we will get the string representation of our tree and we will receive here the serialized string the serialized string right here as data we don't have to worry about how we are accessing the string right here we don't have to worry about it we have to implement our core logic now let's construct our queue data structure so queue we're gonna store a string queue equals to new link list new link list now here we are going to split the data our serialized string we have concatenated with commas so let's separate and let's create here queue data structure first data dot split we're gonna split using comma and we're gonna add the data as list so arrays dot as list arrays dot as list this data dot split this line of code will gives us the queue data structure we are converting our data into queue data structure now here we're gonna call a dfs function dfs with the queue data structure this dfs function will return the root this dfs function will construct the binary tree from this queue data structure and it will return the root node now let's implement this dfs function right below here public tree node return type is tree node dfs it takes this queue data structure as a parameter now right inside here let's remove the front so a string string str equals to q dot pull now we're gonna check if the removed string is a hash if str dot equals equals a hash we have to use equals to compare to string so here if this is if our current string is a hash we're gonna return null let's do it in one line let's remove here now here what we are going to do we're going to create a tree node a tree node let's call it node equals to new tree node if our current string is not a hash then let's extract the integer value and let's create here a node so here integer dot value value of let's provide here str so we constructed here our node now what we're going to do we're gonna construct the left subtree so node dot left equals to dfs let's provide here q 
when we have constructed the left subtree, we have to construct the right subtree. So node dot right equals to DFS a Q. At the end, we're going to return. At the end, we're going to return here the node. This is our core algorithm. Here we are deserializing using pre-order tower cell. Then here we are we are constructing Q data structure. We're constructing Q from the given serialized string. Then we're calling DFS function. This DFS function is constructing our tree node and returning the root node. This is our core algorithms. The overall time complexity of this DFS is linear. Here we're calling this DFS function. Inside of this function, deserialize. The overall time complexity is linear, O of n, O of n, and space complexity is O of n. And for serialize, for the serialization, it takes time complexity O of n and O of n space as well. This is our algorithm. This is how we can solve this problem. Now let's run this code. We see it passed two test cases. Now let's submit it. We have solved this problem successfully. I hope you have understood this video explanation. If you have any question, you can post your question on the q and forum. Thanks for watching this video. In this video, we're going to solve this coding interview question subtree of another tree. In this problem, we are given two binary tree. This is a binary tree and this is a binary tree. We have to check whether this binary tree is subtree of this tree or not. If this binary tree is a subtree of this binary tree, then we have to return true. If this tree is not a subtree of this binary tree, we have to return false. We see that four here we have four. One here we have one. Here we have two. Here we have two. Can you say this tree is a subtree of this binary tree? No. That's because the left and right child of one is null. And here, null. For two, the right child is null. Left child is null. For two, right child is null. But left child is not null. So this is not a this is not a subtree of this tree. So what we have to return? We have to return false. If we are given these two binary tree, this is a binary tree and this is a binary tree. We have to check whether this binary tree is a subtree of this tree or not. We see that 4, 4, 1, 1, and here we have null, null, here we have null, null. For 2, here we have 2, the left of 2 is null, right is null, left of 2 is null, right is null. So we can say this tree is a subtree of this tree. So what we have to return? We have to return true because this tree is a subtree of this tree. Now let's see how to solve this problem. This is the root of this tree. Yes, this is the root of this tree. T. Now we have to check whether this tree exists in this tree as a subtree or not. Now we're going to traverse this tree in DFS manner. First we have three. Three and four are not identical. Let's move to the left. Four and four are identical. Now what we're going to do, we're going to call a function is sem with the root with the root of this tree and with this node so if we if we declare a pointer here r1 and here r2 so if we call this is same function so we're gonna call with this node and this node this function will return true if this this tree is identical with this subtree where we consider this is the root in this subtree this is similar to the same tree problem before solving this problem please solve this problem if you know how to solve this problem you already know how to solve this problem this is the prerequisite of this algorithm first solve this problem same tree we have the video symmetry in this section. Please watch that video. Now let's see how 
to solve this problem. So this is the root of this tree. If we call recursively, S is pointing here. If we call recursively, S will point here. We see 4 and 4 are the same, so we're going to call a function is same. We see 4 and 4 identical, right? Here we're going to declare a pointer root 1 and here root 2, R2. We see the both node identical. Let's move R1 to the left. R1 is pointing here, R2 is pointing here. We see 1 and 1 are identical. Let's move both to the left. So we see that we see that R1 points to null and R2 points to null, identical. Let's move to the right, to the right subtree of this node 1. So R1, R2, we see both are identical. Now let's move R1 here, R2 here, we see both are identical. Let's move to the left, here R1 points to 0 and if you move R2 to the left, R2 points to null. We see this match. So if we consider this is the root if you start searching this node in this in this subtree this tree does not exist so we're going to return false to this is same function now let's let's call recursively our dfs function so let's move to the left on the left we have one so s is now pointing here we see one and four are not the same so let's move to the left, we have null. So if we find out null, we're going to return false. This is our base case. Here on the right, we have null, we're going to return false. Both are false, so we're going to return here false. Now let's move to the right, S is pointing here, 2 and 4 are not identical. Let's move to the left, 0 and 4 are not identical. Let's move to the left, on the left we have null. So let's return false, on the right we have null, let's return false. So false and false. So both are false, we're going to return here false. On the right we have null, so we're going to return here false. So false and false. We find it false on the left, false on the right. So we're going to return here false. Both are false, so here we're going to return false. On the left, from the left subtree of this node 3, we're returning false. It means that on the left subtree, this tree does not exist. Now let's go to the right. S is pointing here, 5 is not equal to 4. Let's move to the left, left is null, return false. Let's move to the right, return false. False, from the both side we get false, so we're going to return here false. So false or false, we're going to return false. So at the end we find out this tree does not exist in this tree. So we're going to return false. This is, this is the answer. This algorithm takes time complexity this algorithm takes time complexity O of m times n for the worst case. m is the total number of nodes we have in this tree and n is the total number of nodes we have in this tree. And the space complexity is O of m, total number of nodes we have in this tree for the worst case. This is the complexity of this algorithm. Let's take one more example for better understanding. Let's assume we have this two tree. S is the root of this tree t is the root of this tree. We see 3 and 4 are not identical. Let's move to the left. 4 and 4 identical. So let's declare a pointer here r1 and here r2. And let's call a function is same. Let's call this function. This is similar to the same tree problem. So r1 and r2. This function will re return 2 if this tree exists. If this tree exists in this subtree by considering this 4 is the root. We see 4 and 4 are the same. Let's move both to the left. So R1 point here, R2 point here. So identical. Let's move here. R1, R2. Both are identical. Null, null. R1 is pointing here. R2 is pointing here. Identical. Then R1 pointing here. R2 pointing here. Identical. Then R1 pointing here. R2 pointing here. Identical. Let's move R1 here, R2 here. We see both are identical. We find out this tree in this subtree by considering this is the root. So from this from this tree to the left of 3, we're going to return true. We're going to return true. But how we can return true here? Let's see the logic. So R1 is pointing here, R2 is pointing here. Both are identical. Let's move to the left. R1 pointing here, R2 pointing here. Let's move to the left, R1 pointing to null, R2 pointing to null. If we saw both pointer points to null, we're going to return true from the left. So we're going to return true. 
here we're going to return true now let's move around to the right around pointing here or to here we see both are identical and null so we're going to return here true and here true so we see from both side we get true so here we're going to return true so from the left of four we get true it means that the left subtree are identical for four the left subtree are identical now let's go to the right r1 pointing here r2 pointing here they're identical let's move to the left so r1 pointing here r2 pointing here null null so we're going to return true return here true because both are null now let's go to the right right is null r1 r2 null so from the right also we're going to return true we see true true so we're going to return here true if both true only then we'll return here true so true and true is true we're going to return here true we find out this tree as subtree in this subtree now let's go to the right let's move is here we see 5 and 4 are not identical let's move is here we see null so we're going to return false on the right we see null so we're going to return false false and false both are the false so we're going to return here false we find out the sub on the left we find it true so if we find out true we'll return that true so we'll return here true this is our answer we see this tree is identical this tree we see this tree exists as subtree in this tree so we're going to return true this is our algorithm i hope you've understood this video explanation it takes time complexity of m times n and space complexity of n now let's implement this algorithm now we're going to call this is subtree function recursively with this tree with this root so if root equals to null if root equals to null what we're going to return we're going to return false now we're going to check if if we find out root dot val equals to sub root dot val if the value of our current node is equals to the value of our root node in the subtree in this tree we're going to call our function is same function with this current root and with the root of our second tree so root sub root we have to implement this function if the if this subtree is identical to this tree only then it will return true if this function return true will return true now our recursive catch boolean left equals to is sub tree here we're calling with the left subtree so root dot left and with the root of our second tree boolean right equals to is sub tree root dot right with the root of our second tree and here we're going to return left or right if if any one of this left and right is evaluated true we're going to return true now let's implement this function is same this is similar to the same tree problem so let's implement this function this function is the straight implementation of same tree problem now let's implement this function is same so public written type is boolean is same so here root one and root two tree node root one and tree node root two now let's check here if we saw root one equals to null and root two is equals to null then what we're gonna do we are going to return true this is our first condition now our second condition if we saw root one equals to null or root two is equals to null then what we're gonna do we're gonna return false this is our second condition now third condition if we saw the value of this node and the value of this node are this are not the same so if root one dot val is not equals to root two dot val we're gonna return false now our recursive catch boolean left equals to boolean left equals to is same root one dot left root two dot left our our second recursive catch right equals to is same 
root one dot right and root two dot right and here we're going to return left and right we're going to return to if both left and right evaluated true here we're calling with the left subtree here we're calling with the right subtree and this is the base case of our recursive function let's remove this and this this algorithm takes time complexity o of m times n m is the total number of nodes we have in this tree n is the total number of nodes we have in this tree and the space complexity is o of m i hope you have understood this video explanation this is the straight implementation of same tree problem now let's run this code we see it passed two test cases now let's submit it we have solved this problem successfully i hope you have understood this video explanation if you have any question post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question construct binary tree from pre-order and in order traversal in this problem we are given two array pre-order and in order from pre-order and in order array we have to construct a binary tree for example we are given these two pre-order and in order traversal array from this pre-order and in order traversal array we have to construct this binary tree we know that the first node in our pre-order traversal is the root node so 3 is the root the next in our pre-order traversal is 9 so we can add 9 on the left of 3 the pre-order traversal of this tree is 3 9 we may have 9 on the right subtree the pre-order traversal of this tree is also 3 9 now we have to confirm that whether we have to add us 9 on the left or on the right how we can confirm that we can confirm that using in order traversal array in pre-order traversal we know that first we traverse the root then left subtree then right subtree in our in order traversal array first we traverse left then root then right so first we traverse this node 3 this is the root node now we have to confirm that the next node or we should attach the next node on the left or on the right we can check that by looking at this in order traversal so here root is 3 and here root is 3 as well and root exists at this position we know that in in order traversal first to traverse the left subtree then root then right subtree so on the left subtree of 3 we should have the node 9 on the left we should have node 9 and on the right of 3 we should have node 15 20 and 7 15 20 and 7 so on the left of 3 we can attach this node 9 because 9 goes on the left subtree by looking at this in order traversal we we see that we have to traverse first the left subtree then this root 3 then this right so 9 should goes on the left subtree now we are guaranteed that 9 should goes on the left subtree so we can insert 9 to the left of 3 so we inserted 9 here now what we should have on the left of 9 and on the right of 9 up until this point we are guaranteed that 9 should goes on the left subtree of 3 so on the left and right of 3 we have nothing because the left value of 9 and the right value of 9 should be on the left subtree of 3 so we can say that on the left of 9 we have nothing on the right of 9 we have nothing so here we have null here we have null now the next node 20 we say that 20 goes to the right subtree so we can add us 20 right here 20 now what we should have on the left of 20 and on the right of 20 here if we look at this in order traversal 
we already solved the left of 3. Now let's go to the right of 3. Now we're dealing with this part. We're dealing with this part. Here we see that on the left of 20 we should have 15. So on the left we should have 15 and on the right of 20 we should have 7. So 15 goes on the left of 20. On the left of 20 that is 15. 7 goes on the right of 20, so here we can add us 7. Now, what we should have on the left and right of 15? We know that 15, 20, 7 goes to the right of 3. Now, we have 20. On the left of 20, we should have this note 15. And here we see on the left of 15, we have nothing. On the right of 15, we have nothing. So, here, null, null. Same for 7. On the left of 7, null. On the right of 7, null. This is how we can construct our binary tree from in order and pre order traversal. This is the root node. I hope you have understood the intuition of this problem. Now, let's see how to construct this binary tree from in order and pre order traversal. For example, we have this two array pre order and in order. Now we have to construct our binary tree from this pre-order and in-order traversal. We know that the first element in our pre-order traversal is the root element. So the root element is 3. Now we have to construct the left subtree of 3 and the right subtree of 3. And this is the root node. This is our current element. We can keep track this element using a variable pre-order index. So this is our current element. This is the first element and this is the root. Now we have to find out the element on the left of root and on the right of this root node. We can find out that from this in-order traversal. In in-order traversal, on the left of root element, we have all the element that we have on the left subtree. On the right of root, we have all the element that goes on the right subtree. Let's find out the root element that is a 3. We can find out this root element by running a loop. Instead, we are going to create a hash map. We are going to create a hash map to keep track the index of every single element. So, the index of 9. Index of 9 is 0. Index of 3 is 1. This is key. This is value. As key, we are adding the element. As value, we are adding the index. The index of 15 is 2, index of 20 is 3, index of 7 is 4. We constructed this hash map data structure. By using this hash map, we can find out the root element in our in order traversal constantly. We see the index of 3 is 1. So we find out the root in our in order traversal. On the left of 3, we should have 9. On the right of 3, we should have these three nodes. Here we have to declare a boundary left and right. If we saw this condition, left is greater than right, then we are going to return null. We're going to return null. Here, we, if we say this is our current, then what we should have on the left of this node 3 from on the left we should have on the left we should have from left to current minus 1 and on the right on the right we should have element from current plus 1 to right we can find out this index c using this formula math dot get our current root value our current root value so current root value using current root value we can find out this index we will see this when we will implement our algorithm so on the left what we should have we should have only 9 on the right we should have 15 27 now what we are going to do we are going to call a function recursively first we're going to construct the left subtree first we're going to construct the left subtree on the left of 3 we know that we have only one node. On the left of 3, we have only one node. On the right, we have 15, 20, and 7. Now, let's go to the next in our pre-order traversal. This is the next node in our in-order traversal. Now, here, we're going to insert 9 on the left because 9 goes on the left. 
So let's insert here nine. Let's create a node and let's insert here nine. Now what we are going to do, we're gonna move our we're gonna move our right to current minus one because on the left we have this left to current minus one. So right is now pointing here. Now we have to construct the left and right subtree of this node nine. On the left of nine, let's apply this formula from left to current minus one. So we're gonna move right to the left. We see that this condition is true. So we're gonna attach null. This is our base case. So let's attach your null. On the right of on the right of nine, current plus one to root. So let's move left here. We see that left is greater than right. So let's attach here null. So we have constructed the left subtree. Now let's move to the right subtree. The next node in our pre-order tablet cell is 20. So let's address here 20. On the left, this is our current. We see that this is our current and we have a boundary left and right. This is our boundary. We find out this node. So on the left of 20, we should have only 15. On the right, we should have seven. Now we see that on the left of 20, on the left of 20, we have 15. On, on the right, we have seven. We can find out this element index from this hash map in constant time three so this is current on the left we have 15 on the right we have seven this is our boundary this is our boundary left right so on the left we have 15 on the right we have seven now here let's create a node 15 and here we see that on the left we have nothing left of, on the left of 15 now this is our boundary this is our boundary that we have on the left of 20 only not only one not 15 so on the left of 15 we have nothing so null here null as well here as well so we have here seven left is null right is null here we are applying the same logic that we applied to this node 9 so we constructed our binary tree from our pre-order and in order tablet cell when we constructed this node this node was the current node in our pre-order array then you have to move here then we created 15 then you have to move here to create this node 7 we see that we have constructed our binary tree successfully we get this binary tree and this is the root we're going to return this root this is how we can solve this problem this algorithm takes overall o of n time complexity and it takes a space complexity o of n so this algorithm works in linear time and in linear space complexity. Now let's implement our algorithm. First, let's create a global variable pre-order index. Using this variable, we are going to keep track. The current node in our pre-order tower cell. And we are going to create global hash map as key we are going to store the element. We're going to store the element of in order tower cell array and as value we're going to store the index the type of key is integer and the type of value is integer let's call it in order index map now right inside here let's initialize the value of pre-order index pre-order index equals to zero and in order in order index math equals to new hash math now let's construct our hash math in order index hash math let's run a loop for int i equals to zero i less than in order dot length i plus plus right inside here in order index in order in order index math dot put current element so in order i and as value we're gonna store the index i when we're done with this loop we will have in this in order index hash map all the element and index as key value pair of in order array now we are going to call a function let's call a function array to tree this is a DFS function. We will construct our tree recursively. Here we're gonna provide the 
pre order array pre order array this array and the boundary of our in order so initial boundary is the starting index and the last index so in in order dot length minus one this is our boundary in our in order from this boundary we will partition on the what we have on the left subtree and what we have on the right subtree this function will construct our binary tree and it will return and it will return the root so we're going to return the root now let's implement this function public return type is node tree node array to tree it takes three parameter int pre-order pre-order then this is the left boundary then right boundary left right if we saw this condition right is if we saw left is greater than right we're going to return null this is our base case now what we're gonna do we are going to find out the root value or current root value current root value is the current element we have in our pre-order in our pre-order array the first element initial is the root so pre-order now let's get this value from this index after uh, after taking the value from this index we're just increasing the value of this variable so it will points to the next element in the pre-order traversal so int root value this is our root value with this root value let's create a node so tree node root equals to this is our current root this is this root is not always the root of our binary tree this is our current root this is the current root or root of our subtree now right below here what we are going to do we are going to construct the left subtree first so let's call let's call our function array to tree recursively so root dot left we're going to construct first the left subtree so root dot left array to tree array to tree here first let's provide our pre-order then we have our boundary for left we have from index left to for left subtree from index left to from index left to current minus one what is our current current is the index of this this root value in our in order array so here first let's provide our left then in order this this hash map so we can get the value from this hash map dot get in order index map dot get root value so root value this is our this is our current you can say based on this value we are partitioning so this value minus one this is for left now right subtree root dot right equals to array to tree pre-order now for right subtree right from c plus one to right c is this index the index of root value in our in order array so this index plus one to right now we're going to return root by constructing the left subtree and the right subtree of this current root we're returning this root this is our algorithm here we're creating this global variable to keep track the element of pre-order traversal and we're creating this hash map to store key value pairs for this array in order to find out the root value in this array in constant time and here we are constructing our in order index math hash map and here we are calling this function this function construct our binary tree from p order and in order traversal and this function returns the root of our tree and we're returning the root this is our core algorithm this algorithm takes time complexity o of n and it takes space complexity o of n i hope you've understood this video explanation now let's run this code we see it passed two test cases successfully now let's submit it 
we have solved this problem successfully if you have any question you can post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video i will see you in the next video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question validate binary search tree in this problem we are given a binary tree we have to check the tree is a binary search tree or not if the given tree is a binary search tree we have to return true if the given tree is not a binary search tree we have to return false for example if we are given this binary tree we have to check this binary tree is a binary search tree or not for binary search tree every single node follows two properties the left subtree the values on the left subtree are less than and the values on the right subtree are greater than so for this node 15 all the value on the left subtree we see less than 15 all the value on the left of 10 are less than 10 all the values on the right of 10 greater than 10 for 20 all the value on the left of 20 is less than 20 all the value on the right we see greater than 20 so this tree is a binary search tree because every single node follows the properties of binary search tree so we have to return true for this binary tree if we are given this binary tree let's check this binary tree is a binary search tree or not for 15 we see on the left subtree all the values less than 15 on the right of 15 we see that we have a value 14 this is less than 15 so this is not a binary search tree we have to return false for example we have this binary tree now let's see how to solve this problem we are going to solve this problem using in order traversal algorithm in in order traversal first we traverse left subtree then root then right subtree let's find out the in order traversal of this binary tree we know that in order traversal of a binary search tree gives us the values in sorted order so let's find out the in order traversal of this binary tree first we get 8 first 8 then 10 then 12 so 8 10 12 then we get 15 15 then we get 16 then 20 then 25 we find out in order traversal of this binary tree this is the in order traversal we see that this in order traversal gives us the nodes values in sorted order how we can check that if we check this value this is our this is our previous and this is our current if we saw our current value is greater than previous that means this part is sorted let's move forward previous pointing here current pointing here we see 10 is less than 12 let's move forward previous current 12 is less than 15 let's move forward previous is here current is pointing here we see 15 is less than 16 so valid previous is pointing here current is pointing here so this is valid then again previous is pointing here current is pointing here we see previous is less than current so we can say that this is a binary search tree by traversing this tree using in order traversal algorithm we can detect whether the given binary tree is a binary search tree or not if we had here uh, 30 if we had here 30 if we find out in order traversal what we get we get 8 10 12 15 then 16 30 then 25 now here we see that this pair in this pair we see that the nodes values are in decreasing order so by checking these two values we can say that this tree is not a binary search tree how we can check that we can check that using previous and current pointer previous is pointing here current is pointing here 
so we see previous is less than current previous is pointing here current is pointing here previous is less than current let's move forward previous is less than current previous is pointing here current is pointing here previous is less than current here we see previous current previous is less than current let's move forward we see previous is greater than current we find out here this pair in decreasing order so we can say that the given tree is not a binary search tree now what we are going to do we are going to traverse our binary search tree using in order traversal algorithm first what we will check this is our previous this is our previous this is our current we see that this is previous this is current we see previous is less than current so what we can do we can move we can move previous here and current here and here we see that we're going to move previous here current here now here we see that previous is less than current so it is valid now what we're going to do we're going to move previous here previous here and previous here and current here so we're going to move previous to this node and current to this node we see that previous is less than 15 so it is valid previous is less than 15 12 is less than 15 now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna move previous to current current to the current to the current to the node 16 so previous is pointing here previous is pointing here and previous is pointing here current is pointing here this is our current we see previous is less than current so what we're gonna do we're gonna move previous to current previous to current so we're gonna move previous to current and current to 20 so current is now pointing here we see that previous is less than 20 so it is valid now what we're gonna do we're gonna move previous here current here so previous is pointing here current is pointing here so previous points to current and current points to 25 so previous is pointing here current is pointing to 25 now we see that 20 is less than 25 so it is valid now we see that we find out no violation of the binary search tree properties so we can say that this tree is a binary search tree so we're gonna return a true if we are given this binary search tree first let's find out the in order tower cell so 8 10 12 15 16 14 25 so this is our previous this is our current so previous current we see previous is less than current so valid now let's move previous to current previous points here current points here so previous is 10 current is 12 now we see that previous is less than 12 previous is less than 12 so we're going to move previous to current so previous points here previous now points to current and current points to 15 so current points to 15 now we see that previous is less than current so valid now let's move forward previous points to current previous is now pointing here and current is now pointing at this node uh, to this node 16 so current current is pointing here we see that previous is less than current so let's move forward previous to previous to current and current to 14 so current points here previous point here so current points here we see that here previous is greater than previous is greater than current so we find out a violation of binary search tree properties here we find out the violation of binary search tree properties so what we're going to return we are going to return false this is how we can solve this problem using in order traversal algorithm now let's see how to implement this algorithm for example we have this binary tree we have to check whether this binary tree is a binary search tree or not we are going to use in order traversal algorithm in in order traversal first to traverse left subtree then root then right subtree now let's see how to solve this problem using in order traversal algorithm first let's find out the in order traversal of this binary tree this traversing result is not required this is just for sake of understanding 
Now let's create here a stack data structure. This is our stack data structure. Now we are going to use two pointer, prev and current. Prev and current. Prev is points to null initially and current points to the root initially. Initially prev points to null. So current points to root. That means current points to initially current points to this node 8. And prev points to prev points to null. This is the initial stage. We see that current is pointing to 8. It means that our first node, our first node in our inner traversal is 8. So we have to find out the first node. We're going to associate a current pointer. And we can assume this is our prep. Prep is pointing to null. Now what we are going to do, we're going to move current pointer to the leftmost node. And we have to add this node on our stack. This node is not null. So let's add on our stack. Let's move to the left. Why we have to add this node onto the stack? First, we have to solve the left subtree. Then we have to come back to the root. So in order to access this root and we have to process the right subtree, in order to access this root and right subtree, we have to keep track this node, 15. After processing this left, left subtree, we're going to process root, then right. That's why we have to give the access of this node 15. Now we see 10 is not null, so let's add here. Let's move current here. In order to keep track the access of this node, in order to keep track this node, this root by processing left, we have to keep track the access of this root node. In order to keep track the access of this node 10, we're storing on the stack. We see 8 is not null, let's store in our stack. Let's move current to the left. Current is pointing here. Now we see current is points to null. Now what we are going to do? We have processed the left. Now we have to access the root. How we can access the root? We can remove the top. So if we remove the top, we can get the access of 8. So we get access of 8. 8 is our root. So this is our root. Current is pointing here. Now you see that current is points to 8 and previous points to null. This 8 is our first node in the in order tower cell. We see that this prev node null and current is 8. So we don't have to compare because we cannot compare null with 8. So you can consider this is following the properties of binary search tree. Because on the left we have null. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna move prev to current and current to 10. How we're gonna move current to 10? First let's move prep to current so prev is now pointing here p for prep now we have to move current here before that we processed here root now we have to process right on the right subject we see we have null so nothing to nothing to do here prev is pointing here actually now we see current is null so nothing to do here. It means that we have processed this subtree. This subtree is following the properties of binary search tree. Because here we have only one node, 8. This is a leap node. Now we see that we have processed the left of 10. Now we have to move our current to this node 10. How we can access this node? We can remove the top. If we remove the top, we get this node 10. So we can address here now current pointer. Now we see current is pointing here and prev is less than current. So it is following the properties of binary search tree. Now we're going to move prev pointer here. So let's move prev pointer here. Now we have to move current pointer to the 12. Here we see that we, we attach this current pointer to the removed node 10. When we attach this current pointer to the removed node, when we attach this current pointer to the removed node, we will check the value at prev and current, the value prev and current. If we saw it follows the properties of binary search team, we are going to move prep to current, we're going to move prep to current, and we're going to move current to the right. To the right. So current is now pointing here. Now here what we are going to do, we are going to move current to the leftmost node, to the leftmost node. Here we see this is the leftmost node. This is not null. Let's store here 12. Now we are solving this subtree. Let's process now the left, the left subtree. On the left we have null. So nothing to do here. Now we need the access of this node 12. In order to get access, we're going to remove that tough. So we get access of this node 12. Current is now pointing here. 
So current is now pointing here. We see 10 is less than 12. So it is fine. Now we're going to move prep to current. Prep to current. Now we're going to move current to the right. So current is pointing here. So prep is pointing here. Now current is points to null. Now we see that we have processed this subtree. This is a valid binary source tree. This subtree is a valid binary source tree. It's following the properties of binary source tree. Now we have to move our current to this node 15. How we can access this node? We can access from our stack. On the top we have now 15. So let's move current here. So current is now pointing to this node 15. We see the value at prev is less than current. So it's following the properties of binary source tree. Now we're gonna move prev to current. Prev is pointing here and we're gonna move current to the right. So current is now pointing here. So prev is pointing here and current is pointing here. We see that our stack is empty. We'll stop our algorithm if we find out current equals to null or stack empty or empty stack. If we find out this condition, empty stack, current equals to null or our stack is empty, only then we will stop our algorithm. Now here we see current response to 14. Now what we have to do, we have to move our current to the leftmost node. We're not going to attach here current because this is not the next node in our in order tower cell of 15. Because in in order tower cell, the next node of 15 is 16. Now here what we're going to do, we're going to move current to the leftmost node. Before that, we need the access of this node 14 by processing left sub tree. So let's store 14 on our stack. Now let's move current to the left. Current is pointing here. 16 is not null. Let's store in our stack 16. Let's move to the left. On the left, we have null. So we are done with the left sub tree. We need the access of this root. So let's remove that top. We get the access of this node 16. Now, what we are going to do, we're going to compare, we're going to compare these two nodes, 15 and 16. Now, current is pointing here. 15 is less than 16. So, it is following the properties of binary source tree. Now, let's move prev right here. Prev is now pointing here. Now, what we are going to do, we're going to move current to the right. We process root. Now, let's process, let's go to the right. So, here we moved prev to current. Now we're going to move our current to the right. So current is now pointing here. Now we see we have processed, we have processed root, we processed right. On the right we have null. So we processed. Now what we have to do, we have to move current here because we're done with the left sub tree. It's following the properties of binary source tree because this is a leaf node. Now let's move current to the, to the node 14 by removing from the stack. So we get access of this node 14. So current is now pointing here. Here we see that 16 is greater than 14. We find it a violation. We find out here the violation of the properties of binary search tree. So what we are going to do, we are going to return false immediately. This is how this algorithm works. For better understanding, let's take one more example. Let's assume we are given this binary tree. This is a valid binary research tree. We see that. First, let's find out the in order tower cell. This is the in order tower cell. Let's create here a stack data structure. This is our stack data structure. Initially, current pointer points here and pre pointer points to null. So, prep is pointing to null node and current is points to this node. Current, we initially current is points to root, but this is not the first node. The first node is 8. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to find out the leftmost node. In order to keep track the axis of this node, because we have these properties of in order tower cell, first left, then root. In order to keep track this root, by processing left, we have to store it on stack. So, 15. Let's move current here. We see 10. 10 is not null. Let's move Let's move current to the left. 8 is not null. Let's store on our stack. Let's move to the left. We see current is now pointing to null. So we're done with the left. Now we need the access of root. So we can remove the top to get the access. So current is now pointing here. So current is pointing here. This is the first node. So here we find out 8 and here we have null. So we cannot compare with null. This value 8. This is the left node. Let's move prev here and let's move current to the right. So we have processed root. We move to the right, we see right is null. So we're done with 
rule so we have processed this now let's move current to this node 10 by removing this stuff so current is pointing here we see that previous points here and current is pointing here it is following the properties of binary resource no problem now let's move prep to current prev here and let's move current to the right we see 12 is not null let's add on our stack let's move to the left on the left we have null so we have processed left now let's get the access of this node 12 by removing from top so this is our current now what we're gonna do we are going to we are going to compare this to node 10 and 12 here p is pointing here current is pointing here we see it is following the properties of binary resource t so let's move prep to current and let's move our current to right we processed left we processed root now we have to process right so let's go to the right so current is pointing here this is null we have processed this subtree this subtree following the properties of binary resource t now we need the access of this node 15 if we remove from the top we get the access of this node 15 so let's move current to this node 15 now previous is pointing here current is pointing here we see it is following the properties of binary resource tree because we have the value in sorted order now let's move prev to this and current to the right now what we are going to do we are going to move current to the leftmost node here prev is a uh, prev is now pointing here now here 20 is not null let's store here let's move to the left we see 16 let's store let's move to the left we see null we process the left now let's process root current is pointing here if we removed we get access of this node 16 now we see that current is pointing here 15 is less than 16 so it is following the properties of binary resource now let's move prev here and let's move current to the right so current is pointing here so we process left root and right now what we're gonna do we're gonna find out the root of this value so if we remove from the top we get 20 now here we see that prev is pointing here current is pointing here it is following the properties of binary resource tree now let's move to let's move prev here current here to the right we see 25 is not null let's store here so first we have to process left for this subtree here we see left is null so we have processed left now we have let's move c here current here we see null so we processed left now we have to now we need the access of this node 25 let's remove so we get access here current so now current is pointing to uh, 25 and p is pointing to previous pointing to 20 we see it is following the properties of binary resource tree now what we're gonna do we're gonna move current to the we're gonna move prep to current and current to the right we see that our stack is empty our stack is empty and current is points to null so we're gonna stop our algorithm and we validated this binary resource t we find out no violation of the properties of binary resource t so this is a valid binary resource tree this algorithm takes time complexity o of n and it takes space complexity o of n for the worst case i hope you've understood this video explanation if you have any question you can post your question on the q a forum now let's implement this algorithm now let's implement our algorithm first let's create two pointer current and prep so tree node current equals to root initially current points to the root node and prep equals to initially null now let's create here a stack data structure stack we're gonna store in our stack tree node so tree node stack equals to new stack this is our stack data structure let's put this line at the beginning right here now we are going to run a while loop while our current is not equals to null or our stack is not empty our stack is not empty if we saw our current is points to null and stack is empty only we will stop this loop now right inside here while current is not equals to null we're gonna move current to the leftmost node so current equals to current dot left we're gonna move current to the leftmost node and we're gonna store our current node on the stack so stack dot push current 
now when we hit this line current is points to null now let's move current to the root of our current subtree so current equals to stack dot pop now here what we are going to do we are gonna check if prev is not equals to null if prev is not equals to null what we are gonna do we are going to check the value of current if we saw the value of current current dot val is if we saw the value of current is less than or equals to the value of prep that means our current node and prep node is violating the rules the properties of a binary research tree so we're going to return immediately false if this condition evaluated true if this condition is not evaluated true here what we are going to do we are going to move our prep to current so prep equals to current we're going to move prep to current and we're going to move current to the right so current dot right at the end when we are done with our loop what we are going to do we're going to return true if this condition never evaluated true that means every single node of our binary tree following the properties of binary search tree so we can return true this is our algorithm this algorithm takes time complexity o of n and it takes space complexity o of n as well for the stack data structure i hope you have understood this video explanation now let's run this code accepted now let's submit it we have solved this problem successfully. If you have any question, you can post your question on the Q&A forum. In this video, we're going to solve this coding interview question with smallest element in a binary search tree. In this problem, we are given a binary search tree and an integer k. We have to find out kth smallest element in the binary search tree. We know that every single node of binary search tree follows two properties. This is the root node. The values on the left subtree are less than 15. The values on the right subtree are greater than 15. For this node as well, the values on the left subtree are less than 10. The values on the right subtree are greater than 10. Same for this. Every single node of a binary search tree follows these two properties. Now let's find out kth smallest element in the BST. If we are given k equals to 1. What is the first smallest element in the binary search tree? The smallest element, k goes to 1 means the smallest element, the smallest element is 8. We have to return for k equals to 1, we have to return 8. If we are given k equals to 2, we have to find out the second smallest element in this binary search tree. 10 is the second smallest element, so we have to return 10. If we are given k equals to 3 we have to find out the third smallest element in this binary search tree. 12 is the third smallest element so we have to return 12 for k equals to 3 if we are given k equals to 5 we have to find out the fifth smallest element in this binary search tree can you told me what is the fifth smallest element in this binary search tree this is the fifth smallest element in this binary search tree we have to written 16 if we are given this binary search tree we have to find out the fourth smallest element in this binary search tree what is the fourth smallest element in this binary search tree 7 is the fourth smallest element in this binary search tree so we have to return 7 this is the first smallest this is the second smallest this is the third smallest and this is the fourth smallest element i hope you have understood this problem now let's see how to solve this problem for example we have this binary search tree how we can solve this problem first let's talk about the naive solution in the naive solution what we are going to do we are going to traverse our binary search tree and we will store the traversing values the traversing node values in a list so if we traverse what we get we get 
फिफ्टीन टेन एट टुएल्व टोटी सिक्सटीन टोटी फाइव दिस इज प्रि अर्डार ट्रावर्सल यू कैन ट्रावर्स दिस बैनरि रिसार्च ट्री एज यू वांट आफ्टर ट्रावर्सिंग द बैनरि रिसार्च ट्री व्हाट उर गोन डू और गोन शर्ट द लिस्ट इफ वी शर्ट दिस लिस्ट व्हाट उट 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 So we sorted the nodes values. After sorting, we get this list. Now we have to return the kth smallest element. K equals to three. So eight is the first smallest, ten is the second smallest, and twelve is the third smallest element. So we are going to return a twelve. This is our answer. So here we have k equals to three. We know that the the index value of this list zero based index was zero one two three four five six. So if we return the value from k minus one index, our k equals to the given value k equals to three. So if we return the value from k minus one index, we'll get our kth smallest element. But this is a naive solution. This solution takes time complexity O of n log n. In order to sort our list, it takes logarithmic linear logarithmic time complexity. This is not efficient. We can solve this problem in linear time complexity. Let's see how to solve this problem in linear time complexity. This is a binary search tree. In in order traversal, first we traverse left. Then we traverse root. Then we traverse right. So, on the left of fifteen, on the left of fifteen, in our traversing result, on the left of fifteen, we will have these node values, and on the right of fifteen, we will have these node values. So, if we find out the in order traversal of a binary search tree, we will get the nodes values in sorted order. So first, this is our root. So let's move to the left. This is left. Let's move to the left. This is our left. So here we see eight. Left is null. Right is null. So we'll traverse eight. So let's print eight. Then next, so we process the left of this node ten. Now let's process this. So we get ten. Then right on the right we get twelve. Do you see if we traverse? If we traverse this subtree using in order traversal, we get this result. On the left of ten, we have value eight. On the right of ten, we have value twelve. So we get this subtree. So we traversed this subtree, and we get the values in ascending order. Now we process the left of fifteen. Now let's print fifteen. So here we see that the nodes values on the left of fifteen are less than fifteen. Now let's traverse the right subtree. We move to the right subtree. This is right. This is left. So what do we get? Sixteen. Then we get twenty. Then we get twenty-five. Here we see for this for this subtree, we get this result: sixteen, twenty, and twenty-five. If we closely observed, we see that this twenty, this twenty is the value of this node, and on the left of twenty we have. 16 on the right of 20 we have 25 now if we look at this value 15 we see on the left of 15 we have all the values are less than 15 and on the right of 15 we have all the values greater than 15 so if we traverse a binary search tree in in order traversal using in order traversal then we get the nodes values in sorted order so By traversing the given binary search tree, we're going to store the result in a list, and we are guaranteed that the list is in sorted order. Now, what we can do? We can return the value from k minus one index, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, if we return this value, k minus one, three minus one equals to two. So, we'll return this twelve. What we'll get? We'll get the value twelve. This is the kth smallest element in this binary search tree. If we have k equals to four, we have to find out the fourth smallest element. What is the fourth smallest element? Fifteen. Fifteen from index three. 
what is the fifth smallest element we can find out the fifth smallest element from index from index 4 so if we are given k equals to 5 we have to return the value 16 if interviewer ask you to find out kth largest element then you can find out that element from the right from this list from the right in order to traverse the given binary resource to using in order traversal it takes time complexity of n and it takes a space complexity of n this is the complexity of our algorithm we can improve this algorithm we don't have to store the nodes values in a list without storing the nodes values in a list we can solve this problem now let's see how to solve this problem without storing the nodes values in a list now i am going to traverse this binary source tree using in order traversal algorithm now i'm going to use iterative approach in order to solve this problem iteratively we have to use stack data structure let's create here a stack data structure this is our stack data structure now let's see how to solve this problem using in order traversal algorithm we're gonna use iterative approach of in order traversal algorithm in our in order traversal algorithm first what we will get we will get 8 when we get this node 8 we're gonna subtract 1 from k so what we will get we'll get 2 then we get this node 10 this node 10 so we're gonna subtract 1 so we get 1 then our 12 12 is our next node in our in order traversal algorithm now what we are going to do we are going to subtract one so what we get if we subtract one we get a zero when we find out k equals to zero we will return our current node our current node value this is our kth smallest element in this binary search tree now let's see how to apply this logic using in order traversal algorithm in in order traversal algorithm we know that first we traverse left then root then right this is the root node root pointer is pointing to this node 15 so this is our current node we see this node is not null so we're going to add on our stack so let's add in our stack now what we're going to do we're going to move our root pointer to the left now root is pointing here root is pointing here this node is not null so we're going to add this node in our stack data structure now you might think why we have to add this node in our stack data structure we have to keep track the root node first we have to traverse the left subtree after traversing the left subtree we have to traverse 15 and we have to move to the right subtree after traversing the left subtree we have to traverse 15 then right subtree so in order to traverse this 15 and we have to keep access we have to move on the right subtree how we can move on the right subtree if we keep track this node 15 we can find out this node values as a root and we can move to the right subtree so we have to keep track this node 15 and we'll keep tracking this node 15 using this stack data structure now this is our root this is not null so let's add in our stack so 10 let's move root to the left root is now pointing here we see 8 it is not null so let's add in our stack data structure now let's move to the left on the left we see that on the left we see that we have null node when you find out null node what we are going to do we are going to remove the top element from our stack that is 8 we see this node 8 now we're gonna now we're going to move our root pointer to the removed node so root is now pointing here you saw that on the left subtree we have null for this subtree on the left of 8 we have null now what you have to do we have to traverse this node root this root node so if we traverse this node 8 now we have to add this node in our list we don't have to add in our list we find out our first node we find out our first node when we removed an element from our stack that means we have to add that element in our traversing result list first we have 8 we're not going to create a list we're adding here just for sake of understanding 
so here we find out the first smallest element so we're gonna subtract we're gonna subtract one from k so what we get we get now two now what we have to do we have to move to the right of our removed node we printed this node so we have to move to the right subtree let's move to the right subtree on the right subtree we see we have null since our root pointer is pointing to null node what we're gonna do we're gonna remove the top element from our stack so we get 10 we get 10 so let's add the result in our list and let's subtract one so what we get here we get here one so we find it first smallest and second smallest now what we're gonna do we're gonna move our root pointer to the removed node so let's move root here up until this point we see that for this node 10 we traverse the left sub tree now what we have to do we have to traverse this node we already traverse this node now let's go to the right sub tree this is the right sub tree of this node 10 so let's move root to the right of the removed node so let's move here root is now pointing here we see this is not null so let's add in our stack let's move to the left on the left we have null so left is null now root root is 12 right we see left is null root is now pointing to null node when root is pointing to null node we're going to remove the top from stack 12 and let's add this value in our list we see that we find out here third smallest so let's subtract we get zero we we have to address the root point to the removed node so root is now pointing here at this point we see that k equals to zero if we have k equals to zero it means that we find out our kth smallest element our current node is the kth smallest node so we have to return the value of our current node so we're going to return 12 this 12 is the answer do you see we don't have to traverse the entire binary resource tree we find out our answer by traversing this left sub tree only this algorithm is efficient than the previous algorithm for the worst case we have to traverse the entire binary resource tree so this algorithm is more efficient than the previous algorithm this algorithm takes time complexity o of n and it takes space complexity o of n as well for the worst case i hope you've understood this video explanation for better understanding let's take one more example now let's assume we have k equals to 5 this is the root you have to find out the fifth smallest element this is not null let's add in our stack let's move to the left now root is pointing here we see 10 is not null let's add on our stack let's move to the left 8 8 is not null let's add on our stack let's move to the left on the left we see we have null node so what we are going to do we are going to remove the top element from our stack because in in order to traversal first to traverse left then root then right so for eight we traverse the left on the left we have null so we have to do nothing now what we're going to do we are going to remove the we're going to remove the previous root for this here for this subtree this is the root for previous subtree this is the root so we have to remove from the stack eight let at us let's at us our root pointer to the removed node here now we're gonna we're gonna print we're gonna print eight we find it the first smallest element so let's subtract here one so we get four now let's go to the right on the right we see we have we have null so here for this node eight we have traversed this entire subtree we printed this root eight left is null right is null so we are done for this subtree now let's let's find out the root of our previous subtree this is our previous subtree here the root is 10 let's remove 10 if we remove 10 we get this root let's add us our root pointer here we find out our second smallest element so let's add in our list this is just for sake of understanding and here we're subtracting one so we get three up until this point we find out our second smallest element now let's go to the right we have to move to the right on the right we have 12 12 is not null let's add in our stack on the left we have null when we move on the left we find out 
we find out null so what we're gonna do we're gonna remove the root of our previous subtree that is 12 so let's add root to the subtree to the root of previous subtree here we get 12 we remove 12 and we add we attest root here so let's print here 12 we find out third smallest element let's subtract here one we get two now let's go to the right on the right we have null on the right we have null so what we're going to do now we're going to remove we're going to remove the root of our previous subtree we solve this subtree right so we have to find out the root of our previous subtree this is the root of our previous subtree let's remove 15 let's add here root this is the root so we we finished our left subtree we finished our left subtree now we find out root so let's print here we are done with the left subtree for this node 15 so now print let's print 15 so we find out our fourth smallest element let's subtract here what do we get we get here one now let's go to the right on the right we see we have 20 20 is not null let's add in our stack now let's go to the left on the left we have 16 this is not null so let's add let's add 16 in our stack let's move to the left on the left we see null so we're done with the with the left subtree now let's remove this we get this this is the root this is our current root now let's print 16 we find out the left subtree now let's print 16 now here we see that here we see that this is the fifth smallest element if we subtract here one we get zero when you find out k equals to zero that means we find out our kth smallest element this is our kth smallest element we're gonna just return 16 this is our answer this is how we can solve this problem you saw that we don't have to traverse entire subtree all ages you saw that we don't have to traverse our entire binary search tree for the worst case we have to traverse our entire binary search tree but we don't have to traverse entire binary search tree so this algorithm is efficient than our previous algorithm i hope you've understood this video explanation now let's implement this algorithm now let's implement our algorithm first let's create our stack data structure in our stack we're gonna store tree node st st calls to new stack this is our stack data structure now what we are going to do we are going to run a while loop while k is not equals to zero while k is not equals to zero or we can use here true because k smallest element always just exist in our in our binary search tree so while at true right inside here we are gonna run a loop while root is not equals to null while the root is not null what we are going to do we're gonna add the root in our stack so st dot push root and let's move to the left subtree so root dot left when we find out root equals to null what we're gonna do we are going to attach the root to the removed node so st dot pop now here when you removed one node that means we find out our first when you remove the first node from our stack it means that we find out our first smallest element so each time we have to subtract one from the k if we find out k equals to zero that means we find out our kth smallest element so in that case we have to return return root dot val we are guaranteed that kth smallest element exists in our binary search tree so this line this condition will be evaluated true for all possible test cases and it will return the kth smallest element now here what we are gonna do we're gonna we're gonna move our root to the right so root equals to root dot right this is our core algorithm this Im this implementation is not easy if we understood the explanation on the screen then this is not difficult to understand and the time complexity is linear and the space complexity is also linear i hope you have understood this video explanation now let's run this code it passed two test cases successfully now let's submit it we have solved this problem successfully 
I hope you have understood this video explanation. If you have any question, you can post your question on the Q&A forum. Thanks for watching this video. In this video, we are going to solve this coding interview question lowest common ancestor in a binary search tree. In this problem, we are given a binary search tree. We know that a binary search tree follows two properties. The node of binary search tree follows two properties. All the value on the left subtree we consider this node. All the values on the left subtree are less than. All the values on the right subtree are greater than this current node. Every single node follows these properties. In this problem, we are given a binary search tree and two nodes P and Q. P and Q node always exist in the binary search tree. We have to find out the lowest common ancestor. Now let's find out the ancestor of node P. Here P equals to 7. So let's find out the ancestor of this node. What is the ancestor of this node 7? The ancestor of this node is the parent. Parent of 7 is 8. The grandparent of 7 is the parent of 8 which is 6. So the ancestor of 7 is 8 and 6. Now let's find out the ancestor of this node 5. The ancestor of this node 5 is 4 to 6. So ancestor of 5 is 4, 2 and 6. This is parent of 5, this is grandparent and this is greatest grandparent. So we find out the ancestor of 2 node, 7 and 5. We have to find out the ancestor. We have to find out the lowest common ancestor. Lowest common ancestor is the node where the ancestor of the 2 node intersect. We see that the ancestor of this two node intersect here. So we have to return this node 6. This 6 is the lowest common ancestor for this two node 7 and 5. So we have to return a 6. If we are given p equals to p equals to the node 3 and q equals to the node 0. What is the lowest common ancestor of this two node 0 and 3? The ancestor of 3, the ancestor of 3 is 4, 2 and 6. 4, 2 and 6, the ancestor of 0 is, the ancestor of 0 is 2, 6. We see that the ancestor of these two nodes intersect here, intersect here. So this is the lowest common ancestor. We have to return the node 2. So for this two node, the lowest common ancestor is this node. If we are given P equals to 7 and Q equals to 9, what is the lowest common ancestor of this two node? The ancestor of 7 is 8, the ancestor of Q is 8. The ancestor of 7 is 8 and 6, ancestor of 9 is 8 and 6. We have to find out the lowest common ancestor. Lowest common ancestor is the ancestor where the ancestors intersect. We see the ancestor of this two node intersect here. So this is the lowest common ancestor. So this is the lowest common ancestor. Now let's see how to solve this problem. For example, we have this tree. Let's assume we are given two node. We are given two node p equals to p equals to zero and q equals to three. We have to find out the lowest common ancestor of this two node. First thing what we're going to do, we're going to declare two variable minimum and maximum. So minimum and maximum. In the minimum variable, we're going to store the minimum value of this two node. The minimum value is zero. So in minimum variable, we're going to store zero. And in maximum variable, what we're going to do, we're going to store the maximum value of the two node. That is a three. So here we're storing the minimum node value and here the maximum node value of the given node P and Q. Now what we are going to do, we are going to check with the root node. We're going to check with the root node. We're going to check the value. The value here is 6 and here we have minimum equals to 0 and maximum equals to 3. Now we are going to check does this 
6 does this node 6 is greater than minimum and maximum we see that the node value this node value is greater than minimum and greater than maximum so it means that on the right subtree we don't have the ancestor we can eliminate the the right subtree so we can skip the right subtree so let's move to the left subtree since the minimum value is zero maximum value is three the both value are less than the root value that means the ancestor exists in the left subtree for sure we are guaranteed because in binary search still we know that on the right all the nodes value are greater than six so we are guaranteed that the ancestor exists in the left subtree so let's move to the left subtree now this is our current let's call it root this is our current root in this subtree now here what we are gonna do we're gonna check does this value is greater than minimum and maximum we see that this value is greater than minimum but less than maximum so our condition is not true so we cannot eliminate the right subtree now what we're gonna do we're gonna check does the value the both value are greater than this node 2 this value 2 is less than 3 but greater than 0 what does this mean it means that for two nodes for two nodes p and q for two nodes p and q one node exists on the left subtree and one node exists on the right subtree how we can guarantee that we can guarantee this by checking this condition if we saw the root value this is our current root if we see the root value is not greater than minimum and maximum and if the root value is not less than minimum and maximum so we can guarantee that one value exists on the left subtree one value exists on the right subtree so what is the ancestor in that case in that case in that case the ancestor of two nodes p and q intercept here we're gonna return this node 2 this is the ancestor of this two node 0 and 3 for example if we are given p equals to 5 and q equals to 3 we have to find out the lowest common ancestor of this two node now let's declare two variable minimum minimum equals to we're going to store the minimum value 3 and max equals to the maximum value 5 now let's compare with this root node does this value 6 is greater than minimum and maximum yes 6 is greater than minimum and maximum it means that ancestor does not exist on the right subtree because on the right subtree all the nodes are greater than 6 so we can eliminate let's move to the left subtree this is our left subtree now we have this node 2 we have this node 2 now we're gonna check does this value 2 is greater than minimum and maximum we see that no this value is not greater than 3 and is not greater than 5 so it means that ancestor does not exist on the left subtree because we are guaranteed that we are guaranteed that the value on the left subtree are less than this value 2 so ancestor must exist on the right subtree now we have this node 4 we have this node 4 now what we are going to do we're gonna check does this value is greater than 3 and 5 no this value is not greater than is not greater than 5 but this value is greater than 3 what does this means it means that one node exists on the left subtree and one node exists on the right subtree this is kind of a self-explanatory logic so if we saw one node exists on the left subtree and one node exists on the right subtree that means this node is the lowest common ancestor for the two given node 5 and 3 we have to return this node 4 if we have p equals to 5 and q equals to 7 
now let's declare two variable minimum minimum equals to 5 and maximum equals to 7 this is our root node now what we're gonna do we're gonna check does this value is greater than 5 and 7 no this value is greater than 5 but not greater than 7 now we can check our second condition does this value is less than 5 and 7 no we are trying to first we are trying to eliminate the right subtree in order to eliminate the right subtree what we're gonna do we're gonna check this condition if our our current root value root dot val if we saw root dot val is if we, if we saw root dot val is greater than minimum and if we saw root dot val is greater than max if this condition is true it means that we we have to move to the left subtree that's because if this condition is true our node p and q exist on the left subtree so we can eliminate it so we can say here root equals to root dot left so we'll move to the left subtree if we saw this condition let's check here else if if we saw this condition root dot val is less than minimum as well as as well as root dot val is less than maximum if this condition is true it means that our node p and q exist on the right subtree in that case we have to eliminate the left subtree so we can say here root equals to root dot right if this both condition if this condition and this condition evaluated false it means that the one node exists on the left subtree one node exists on the right subtree so in that case this six this current node is our ancestor so else what we can do else we can just return we can return root this is our algorithm so for this example we see that we cannot eliminate a right subtree because because our value 6 is not greater than minimum and maximum we cannot eliminate the left subtree as well because this value is not less than minimum and maximum so we can say that one node exists on the left subtree one node exists on the right subtree so this is the lowest common ancestor of the two given node this is how we can solve this problem now let's see the pseudocode let's call a function lca lca list common ancestor it takes three parameter root then it takes p then it takes q this three parameter now what we are going to do we are going to find out the minimum and maximum value of p and q so minimum equals to minimum of p dot val and q dot val and let's find out the maximum maximum equals to max of p dot val and q dot val so here we are finding out minimum and maximum of two node p and q now let's use a while loop while while root is not equals to null root is not equals to null here what we are gonna do we're gonna check we are gonna check if our value if our root value is greater than minimum and maximum so root dot val is greater than minimum and root dot val is greater than maximum if this true condition is a uh, true then what we are going to do we are going to eliminate the right the right subtree if this condition is true the node p and q exist on the left subtree so we can eliminate the right subtree so here root dot uh, here root equals to root dot left here if we saw this condition is true root dot val is greater than maximum then root dot val is 
greater than maximum we don't have to check this condition if root dot val is greater than max that means root dot val also greater than minimum right so we don't have to check this condition if we just check this one condition that is okay else if 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 this condition is not true we're gonna check if the root value is less than if the root value is less than minimum and maximum so if root dot val is less than minimum and root dot root dot val is less than maximum if the root value is less than minimum and less than maximum that means our node p and q exist on the right subtree we can eliminate the left subtree right so here let's move to the right subtree in that case so root equals to root root dot right if this true condition evaluated false that means one node exists on the left subtree and one node exists on the right subtree that means our current root is the the current root is our ancestor lowest common ancestor so return return root this is our core logic here if our rooted value is less than minimum that means the rooted value is less than maximum if this condition is true this condition must be true that's because this is maximum and this is minimum so we can eliminate this so if we check this condition and this condition if rooted value is less than minimum that means rooted value is also less than maximum if rooted value is greater than maximum that means rooted value is also greater than minimum this is your core logic at the end here we'll return null this is our algorithm this algorithm takes time complexity o of h where h is the height of the of the tree this is the time complexity and space complexity of this algorithm is o of one constant because we are using just two variable and we are solving this problem using loop we're not calling function recursively now let's implement this algorithm now let's declare two variable minimum and maximum int mean equals to math dot mean p dot val and q dot val and int max equals to math dot max p dot val and q dot val so here we're storing the minimum value in this variable and maximum value in this variable now what we're gonna do we're gonna run a loop while root is not equals to null right inside here if root dot val is greater than minimum and root dot val is greater than maximum then what we're gonna do we're gonna eliminate the right subtree that means the p and q node exist on the left subtree this condition is true so here what we're gonna do we're gonna move to the left so root equals to root dot left if this condition is true we're gonna check else if if root dot val is less than minimum and root dot val is less than maximum that means p and q node exist on the right subtree you can eliminate the left subtree so root equals to root dot right else if else if this condition falls and this condition falls that means one node exists on the left subtree and one node exists on the right subtree so in that case we're going to return the root this is our core logic and here we see that if if we saw rooted value is greater than max that means rooted value is also greater than mean since since this is minimum and this is maximum so we can eliminate one condition here as well if we saw rooted value is less than minimum that means rooted value is also less than maximum so you can eliminate this condition this is our core algorithm at the end we're gonna just return null this algorithm takes time complexity o of 8 and it takes space complexity o of 1 now let's run this code we see it passed three test cases now let's submit it we have solved this problem successfully i hope you've understood this video explanation i think this is a simple problem if you have any question you can post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video welcome back to this video in this video we're going to implement a try data structure we're going to design a try data structure 
the tri data structure should support these uh, three operations insert this insert uh, takes a word and it will insert into the try search it will search the given word this start with operation or this method will check whether the given prefix is exist or not let's assume we want to insert apple in our try data structure this is our try data structure let's create here a p p l then e this is our try data structure we inserted this word we inserted this uh, word into our try data structure now if we call this method uh, search search -E search with apple let's check does this word exist in our try data structure or not this is the root this is the root we see a p p l e this word exists so we will return a true if this word does not exist we have to return a false since this word exists in our try data structure we have to return a true if we search if we search the word app does this word exist in this try data structure here we have a then p then p we see app exist but this search operation will check the complete word a double p we see app does not exist as a complete word we will have here a uh, here we we have a certain property with it we can detect that we can detect that uh, apple is uh, ending here and here we see we have app but app is not ending here that means this is not a complete word so for this method for this method search it will return a uh, false if we call the method start with start with if we uh, if we uh, provide here this app then we see a p p this word uh, this word exist this word exist as a prefix this is a prefix of apple so we have to return true for start with it will check only the prefix if the prefix exist if the prefix exist then it will return true since this is exist it will return true now if we insert f if we insert f in our try data structure f then uh, we will do nothing actually we will have here a property or a variable to uh, to mark that a word is ending here so we can say that f word exists for search operation now if we call this method search f now we see we have a word so it will written a uh, true we have to design this try data structure now let's see how to design this try data structure that support these three operation insert search and start with for sake of understanding we uh, let's take this example we want to insert app in our try data structure so first we will have a then we will have p then we will have a p so we have this and this is the root here we see that this is a character this is a character this is a character now if we have something like this a p d or something like this then what we have to do we have to insert a p d a p then d right here so uh, we can check this word and this word as well a p p exist and here we should have a variable to keep track that a word is ending here also here we have to keep track that a variable is ending here if we insert apple a double p l e then what we have to do uh, here we have to add l 
and here we have to add e and here we should have a variable uh, with that we can detect that a word is ending here here and here this every single character every single character are a node every single character are a node let's assume we want to insert a c o d e then what we will do what we will do if we want to insert this a word so here we will have c c then we will have o then we will have d then e and this word is ending here so in this in this case what is the root this will be the root this is the root we might have something like this d e f so in that case here d then e then f if we want to insert c o r if we want to insert then we have to insert here c o r right here so this is our root in the root we have this three this three character if we want to insert a just this uh, this character a we are assuming this is a word then what we have to do we have to do nothing actually but we have to mark here that a word is ending here also word is ending here here so we have to mark here that this word is ending here so how we can implement this try data structure now we are talking about the insert operation we're going to construct our try data structure and we're going to perform insert operation then we will talk about search uh, search and uh, start with operation now let's construct a try how to construct a try data structure this is a node now how we're going to implement node of our try data structure so for node let's call it node so in our node we are going to use hash map data structure we can use here a hash map data structure also we can use an array we can use an array of length 26 in this problem we are given the word that contains only a lowercase english alphabet a letter from a to uh, a to z so we can use an array but in this video we're going to solve this problem using hash map if you want to solve this problem using an array please watch the old video in this section now let's see how to implement our node so first we're going to create a hash map here let's create here a hash map a hash map this is our hash map and in our hash map what we will have we will have a character we will have a character and uh, as key we will have character and as well we will have the node the node itself and let's call it child uh, let's call it a child and we will have a variable is end is end initially the default value the default value is false default value is false so we will have two uh, we will have two components of our of our node in a node we will have this two components now let's see how to implement this try using this using this hash map here we see that we have a c d now let's see how to represent this uh, first we will have a hash map so in our hash map this will be the root this is our root and we will have a variable is end this is our hash map and we will have a variable uh, is end right here so right here we will have a variable is end the value uh, is true or false so first we have a first we have a and here what we have we have a uh, we have a node where we can store a hash map and a variable here we have c here we will have a node here we will have d and here we will have a node something like this 
we will have something like this okay so here we will have a node uh, we will have a node in the node we know that we have a hash map uh, we have a hash map and a variable here how to detect a word is ending at this position a so in order to detect that we have to move to the node right here and we're going to insert here true and for c uh, we will have here a hash map and a variable and here as well we will have a hash map and a variable so here we have c uh, here we have a so a a word is ending here so here we'll have true and in the next we have p so here we'll have p with p we have two connection with p we have p and d so we'll have here a hash map uh, we will see this don't be overwhelmed don't be overwhelmed so here we're going to insert a uh, p and then here true and then again we have here d and a word is ending here so here we'll not have actually true uh, here we'll have a uh, variable uh, does uh, any word ending here no no word is ending here no word is uh, ending at this p at this p so we're not inserting here true if a word is ending here only then we'll add here true and again here for p we will have d and for d we will have nothing we will have a hash map and we will have a variable a uh, true don't be overwhelmed just try to understand the structure this is the root of our try data structure this is the root now let's see how it works now let's create our hash map data structure we want to insert in our hash map three word we want to insert in our hash map three word for sake of understanding first l e e then we're going to insert lit l double e t then we're going to insert code we're going to insert this three word in our hash map so let's create our uh, let's create our root this is our root in our root uh, let's create here root uh, let's create root right here this is our root this is our hash map and we have a variable here we have a variable true or false this variable this is uh, this variable initially a uh, false this is a boolean so here we can we can say this is our root this is root of our try data structure now we have the character l first let's insert this character li let's insert this character li in our hash map first character l l does not exist in our hash map l does not exist so let's insert here l this is l and let's insert here a node let's insert here a node so let's create here this node uh, so this node contains this node contains uh, a hash map and a variable a uh, true or false uh, right here so we inserted l and now we have e since we are inserting so our current pointer is pointing to root you can see this is our current pointer pointing to this root node since you inserted l we're going to move this current to the newly created node right here this is our node now our current character is e e does not exist so let's insert here e let's insert here e and let's insert a node right here so let's create here our node hash map this is a hash map and uh, we will have a boolean value we'll have a boolean value this is not the last uh, last character so we will not insert here true if this is the last character we will have here value true uh, we will see it 
now we're going to move current pointer to our newly created node since we are inserting since we are inserting now let's move to the next character e e so let's insert here e let's insert here e and let's create here a new node right here we created here new node uh, we have a hash map and we have uh, a, a uh, boolean value is end since we created this node we're going to insert current right here current pointer is pointing to this node now we see that we have no more character no more character so what we are going to do we're going to insert true at our current pointer uh, at the variable is end right here and this part is empty this part is empty now if we search this word li we can check l exist e exist e exist and we see e is ending here e is ending here how we can check that we can check that by moving to the uh, to the uh, this is key to the value of it and uh, to the value this is the value of uh, this e so here we have true so we can say li exist so we, we inserted li now let's insert lit so current pointer initially points to our root so l l exist so let's move to the uh, let's move to the value a value of this key which is this this node so this is our current e now current is e e exist so let's move to the value this is current this is current now the next uh, the next is we have here a t our next character is t so we'll move to the value uh, to the value of this uh, this is key and this is value so in our hash map we know that we have key value here here key is character and value is node so let's move to this this is our current we have t so let's insert here t this is t and let's insert here a node let's insert here a node and a value here okay now let's move current right here we see we have no more character left we are done so we'll insert at the end right here too so if we search this word lit l d e t so we can say it lit if we if we ask if we ask does lit exist we can say exist because this is the last character so l e e t l e e t and then uh, this word ending here we can detect by moving to this uh, to this current so uh, we we can apply our search operation now if we search here le does le exist le word exist when a search it not prefix search this is a complete search so does le does le exist le exist but uh, in the next we see that here we have a value false default value is false if we have no value we can assume we have a false value so here false uh, false here as well we have false if we don't have a value we can assume that the value is false so we have here false that means uh, there is no word is ending at this uh, position so uh, we can say that this word le is not ending at this position because here we have false so we'll write in false now let's insert one more word which is code c o d e so here we see that c current character c does not exist let's insert here c and here let's create a node so current is initially pointing here and we insert it here because c does not does not exist so insert it here c now let's create here a node this is hash map and a value uh, here the default value is false now let's move to the next next is o next is o so let's insert here this o as a key and as value let's create here let's create here a node again so here let's create uh, this node and here the value is false so here uh, we have uh, uh, let's move our current to this node this current will point here current will point to this node now let's insert our current character this is our current character d d does not exist d let's create here a node again here let's create here a node and here we have 
uh, false we have here false and this is our hash map uh, let's move current to this newly created node right here d uh, next character is e so e does not exist here so let's insert here e let's create here again a node right here so this is our hash map and we have here a value true or false by default we have false let's move current right here and there is no more character left so we're going to insert at this position true so if we search this word c o d e c exist so let's move to the value of c this node o exist then let's move to the value of o d d exist let's move to the value of d e e exist e exist there is no more character left so let's check does uh, this word ending here c o d does ending here we let's move to the value here we have value and we have value true that means this word e this word ending here so this is how we can check this condition this is how we can check uh, so we have inserted this three word in our in our try data structure this is our try data structure now if you want to search uh, c o d does it exist first c current is pointing here this is our current current pointer is pointing to this root c exists so let's move to the value this is the value o o exists let's move to the value of o this is the value then d d exists let's move to the value of d there is no more word left and here we see we have the value false so we will return false because we don't have this word in our uh, in our uh, try data structure if we were if we insert thousand of word the word will be inserted using this following rules that we just discussed if you have here uh, code then what you have to do we have to move to the value of e so it will point here and we see this is the end uh, so we move to the value of this uh, to this key so we get this true here so we'll return true for code for prefixers for prefixers if we saw co uh, first see our current point will point here we see c exist let's move it here we see o exist since uh, we find out this word this prefix in our tradita structure will return true the insert operation the insert operation will takes time complexity linear and is the length of the where in is the length of the given word if we insert uh, if we insert k word then for inserting k word it will takes time complexity o of k times n but for inserting single word it will takes time complexity o of n for uh, for search operation search operation will takes the time complexity o of n where it is the length of the given string and the space complexity for search operation is o of 1 for insert operation the time complexity is o of n and uh, and for space complexity space complexity is also for insert operation is o of n so the time and space complexity for insert operation is o of n or linear for search operation it will take linear time and constant space and for start with for start with this operation will take time complexity o of n and space complexity o of 1 because we need just one pointer this is our core algorithm if we understand this intuition the implementation is not difficult now let's implement our algorithm we have to implement this function insert this is a constructor we have to implement this operation insert search and start with insert operation will insert the word into our try data structure first let's create our node so a class node we can say try node or we can say just node I'm going to use here just node so this node will have this node will have a two component first is a hash map so hash map will have a character so as key will have character and as value we will have node let's call it a child equals to new hash math and we will have a variable is end to keep track whether the word is ending at our current position or not by default the value is false 
if we insert empty string the only then we will have uh, true at the first position uh, don't be confused about it if we want to insert empty string then this if this is our root if this is our root and here we will have a variable if you want if you want to insert empty string only then we will have true at this first position otherwise we will have here uh, false now let's create a root of our try data structure so node root equals to new node this is the root of our try data structure instead creating here root we're going to create we're going to just declare this root right here and we're going to initialize inside this constructor so root equals to new node so we created a root of our uh, we created the root of our try data structure now let's implement our insert operation let's create a current pointer current equals to current pointer will points to the root of our try data structure so root let's iterate over our string so for int i equals to zero i less than word dot length i plus plus right inside here let's find out our current character ch equals to word dot char at i our current character now here what we're gonna do we're gonna check does our current character exist and uh, does our current character exist at our current node at our current try node let's check here in order to check that we have to uh, first save uh, first uh, current dot we have a child child is the hash map so child dot uh, contains 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 key if our current character contains in our uh, current node that means in our current child so here ch if our current character does not exist in our current uh, in our uh, current uh, node then what we're going to do we're going to add current dot child dot put we're going to add our current character and as value we're going to insert new node so new node and here what we're going to do we're going to move our current node to the inserted to the newly inserted node so current equals to a uh, current equals to current dot child dot get at uh, this node uh, to the newly created node so get ch so we will insert in our uh, we'll insert in our try data structure when we are done with this loop when we are done with this loop we will insert to the new node to the last new node our current pointer is pointing we're going to insert current is end equals to a true this operation takes time complexity of in and space complexity of in because we have to insert in word don't be confused this is our insert operation if we if we want to insert a pp so first our first our this is the root this is our root and we'll have here value by default we have false for is end so it does not exist let's insert here current is pointing here this current is pointing to this root this current is pointing to this root so we insert it here a let's create here a node and let's create here and here by default false current is now pointing right here we see that our current character is p p does not exist let's insert here and here let's move current so current is not pointing here uh, here so by default false current is pointing here we see we have current character p so let's insert here and here uh, this is our hash map and by default this value is false current is not pointing here so we're gonna change it to true because we are done with our loop so we'll insert we'll change it to uh, true so if we search then we can check a p p when we're done we'll check this value so 
if we search app we'll return this value whatever value we have here whether uh, the current word uh, is ending at this position or not if it is if the current word ending at this position we'll return this value we'll return the value from current dot uh, this value current dot is end now let's implement our search function this is our insert uh, operation now let's implement our search operation first we have to declare our current pointer current equals to uh, root for int i equals to 0 i less than word dot length word dot length i plus plus first let's find out our current character we're just iterating over our current uh, current uh, word or current uh, string so char char c equals to word dot char at i and uh, now here we're gonna check if our current character does not exist will immediately return false so current dot child dot con uh, contains key if our current character does not contains in our uh, current node then what we'll do will immediately return false otherwise what we're going to do if this condition is false that means our current character is masked with our current node so current character exists in our current node so let's move current to the and to the new node to the value of our current uh, character so uh, current equals to current dot child dot get ch current dot uh, current equals to current child dot get ch and here uh, and at the end we'll return whatever value we have for our uh, whatever value we have uh, in our uh, current node whatever value we have uh, we have the is end for is end in our current node so return a uh, current dot is end this algorithm or uh, this method actually this operation will take time complexity of n and space complexity of one because we're using just one pointer here and one variable here now let's implement start with this is similar to this we can just copy this we can just copy right here and paste right here and here we can just change it a word to prefix and this word to prefix and we instead returning this will uh, will return here true if this false statement never executed that means the prefix exists so we'll return at the end just true we don't have to check whatever value we have at this variable is end uh, this is our uh, this is our operation start with this will takes of in time and of one uh, space complexity I hope you've understood this video explanation for better understanding let me explain this SARS so let's insert a p p this is our root so a this is the root let's insert here so p and here we'll have value false again p so here this is false this is we'll have here false value let's create here a node and here we'll have true so if we search current is pointing here this current pointer a exist let's move p exist let's move right here we see p exist let's move right here we have to check whether this word app is ending here or not in order to check that we have to move to this so when we're done with this loop current will points to this so what we're returning we're returning this value if we search a p a exist p exist then current will point here when you're done with this loop will return this value because app does not exist but for p fix uh, if we search ap exist p exist so current will point here will not check whatever value we have here whether it is ending or not since the word exist will written simply a uh, true uh, since the prefix exist this is our algorithm i hope you've understood this video explanation now let's run this code
I'm sorry here we have this typo length I think it should uh, work now accepted let's submit it I'm so sorry for the typo guys uh, we have solved this problem successfully this is how we can implement try data structure using hash map also you can use here an array to solve this problem we can use here an array of size 26 since uh, in this problem we are given uh, only english lowercase uh, english letter but if we are given number uh, if we are given number uppercase letter special character then you can use this hash map so this hash map works for all types of input but uh, the array solution will works only for english lowercase letter if the interviewer asks you uh, to implement try data structure which supports uh, which supports uh, english uh, which can have in our uh, which can contains lowercase uppercase special character or number then we can use this simply hash map uh, i hope you've understood this video explanation if you guys have any question post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video welcome back to this video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question design add and search words data structure this data structure supports two method it support this method add word and search word this add word method add word in our data structure efficiently and this search word method search word efficiently whether a given word exists or not if we add this list of word in our data structure then if we search bad we have to check whether this word exists in our data structure or not we see here we have bad and we see here we have bad so bad exists we have to return true here we have dot ad in our search word we may have the character dot dot means it match with any character so dot may match with b then ad here we have ad so dot ad exists in our data structure so we're going to return true b dot dot b match with b then dot match with a dot match with d so we can say b dot dot exists in our data structure then dot an we know that dot may match with any character so if dot match with m then we have an so dot an exist then we have d a d i we see that d exist a exist d exist but i and here we have y so d a d i does not exist so we have to return we have to return false then we have m dot n m then dot then n so this word exists this word exists in our data structure so we have to return true now how we can add all the word in our data structure such that we can we can search the word efficiently in order to implement this algorithm add and search word we are going to use try data structure if we construct a try data structure from this list of words we get this try data structure this is the root of our try data structure actually the root is this this is the root of our try data structure we will see how to implement this data structure we see that in our try data structure bad word exist bad then dad dad then mad mad then we have man man then we have dady dady we are storing our words in our data structure efficiently we don't have any duplicate word here if we look at this mad and man we have one m and one a we don't have to store the duplicate character here we don't have to store this m again this m we don't have to store this a then this a we are using only a single character m to represent this m as well as this m here a here we have a so we're using just one a to represent this two a so we are storing the words in our try data structure efficiently we see bad bad here we have a little circle or you can say dot by this dot we are indicating a word is ended here 
DAD, DAD, a word is ended here, then DADY, a word is ended here. We are denoting the end point of a word by this dot. We will see how to detect the end of a word. When we will implement our try data structure, we will see how to indicate the end of a word. If we search this word BAD, we see BAD exists, so we have to return true. If we search this word dot ad dot match with any character if we match dot with b then we have ad so this word exists we're going to return true then if we search this word b dot dot b match with this b dot match with a dot match with d and we see word is ending here so we can return true if we search this word dot a n dot match with any character let's match with b then we have a match then d and n d and n does not match so let's choose here this character d let's match with dot this character d so d then a a match with a then we have here d but here we have character n so this match let's choose uh, let's choose different character let's match with this uh, dot m then we have a we have a then we have here d we see d and n is not the same let's Let's choose different character here. We have here in. So we see M A N exist. So we have to written true. Dot A dot A N exist in our try data structure. Let's check this word D exist. A exist, D exist, I does not exist. So we have to written false. Now if you want to search this word M dot N, M, then A A match with dot, then D, D does not match with N. Then we have the character in here. So m uh, m match with m dot match with a. Then we have n. A word is ending here, so we have to return true. This is how we can solve this problem. First, let's see how this operation works. How this add word operation works. First, we're going to explain this algorithm. Then we will implement this algorithm. When we're done with this add word operation, we'll move to this search word operation. Now let's see how to implement this try data structure. In order to implement this try data structure, let's create a node. This is the definition of nodes. Let's create our root node. This is our root node. Now let's insert the word BAD. B. First, let's declare a current pointer. Current pointer is pointing initially to this root node. This is B. And here we have default value false. False means no word is ended here. This is the default value. Now we have our current character b we're going to insert as key b and as value we're going to insert a try node let's create here a try node try node has two component this is child the name of this hash map is child name of this variable is is end we have inserted a node against b now we're going to move c to the newly inserted node right here let's move to the next a a does not exist in our current node let's insert here a let's insert a new node this is new node here the value is false because no word is ending here now let's move c right here our current character is d d does not exist so let's insert here d and let's create a new node here now let's move c right here we see that we reach the end of this word we have to detect we have to detect this word is ended here that's what we have to insert here true if we insert here true that means a word is ended here at d if we have the value in the inserted node if the value is true and here we have false because no word is ended here if b a word ended here only then we will have your false there is no b a word now let's move to the next next word d a d d a d let's initialize current to the root d does not exist in our root let's insert here d let's insert in node so let's create here our try node let's move current to this newly inserted node current character a a does not exist so let's insert here a Let's create a node here. Let's move C here. No word is ending here, so false. Our next character is D. D does not exist here. So let's insert here D and let's insert here new node. And here the value is A because D word, there is no D word in our, in our list. Here we have to insert false because this word D is not ending here. This is a prefix. This is not a complete word. Now let's insert here a node, this node. We see we used at the end. C is pointing here. We're going to insert here true. So this word is ending here. D A D is ending here. 
let's insert next word daddy d a d y current is pointing here we see in our current node d exist let's move to the value of d this node a exist in our current node so let's move to the value of a current is pointing here d d exist in our current node so let's move to the value of d so c is pointing here we see y y does not exist so let's insert here y and a node here let's insert here a node now let's move c to the newly inserted node c is pointing here we see we use the end so we're going to insert here true now let's move to the next word next word is m a d current is pointing here m a d m does not exist in our current node so let's insert here m let's create here a node this new node and c is pointing here here the default value is false our current character is a c is pointing here it does not exist in this in this node in our current node so let's insert here a we inserted this character a let's insert a new node right here we inserted this node now let's move c here this is our current character so here let's insert d let's insert here a node so this is our node here we have default value false now let's move c to the newly inserted node we see we use the end so here we're going to insert true we inserted this word mad now let's move to the next word man m a n let's declare a current pointer here we see m exists so let's move to the value of m current is pointing here we see a a exists let's move to the value of a current is pointing here current character is n n does not exist so let's insert here n the value we're going to create a node let's insert here a node now let's move c here we see that we reach the end of this word so here we're going to insert true we are using this isn't variable to detect the end of a word so here we have true here we have d this is the this is the end so we are using this value true to keep track the ended position of a word then we have y word is ended here then d this word is ended here then we have d d ended here n ended here this is our add add word this is our add word method this method takes time complexity o of n where n is the length of the given word and it takes a space complexity o of n because we have to store n characters in our true data structure this is the time complexity and space complexity for inserting single word i hope you've understood this explanation now let's implement this algorithm now let's implement our add word method first let's create try node class node our try node has two component hash map let's call it child and we we need a variable boolean variable is end this variable will tell us whether a word is ending at that specific position or not as key in our hash map we're going to store character character as value we're going to store node now constructor public node right inside here child equals to new hash map and is end by default is end equals to false this is our try node now let's create a root of our try node so node root inside this constructor root equals to new node this is the root of our try node now let's implement this method add word first let's create a pointer that will point to the root node so node current equals to root so current pointer is pointing to the root node now what we're gonna do we're gonna iterate over the character of this given word so int i equals to zero i less than or dot length then here i plus plus right inside here let's find out our current character so char ch equals to word dot char at i ch is our current character now we're gonna check does this current character exist in our current node so if current dot child we have to check the character in our hash map so current dot child dot contains key contains key ch if this current character does not exist in our hash map or in our current node what we're gonna do we're gonna insert our current character so current dot child dot put 
our current character and as value we're gonna insert new node and here what we're gonna do we're gonna move current to the newly inserted node or if we have a value against our current character to that node so current equals to current dot child dot get ch when we hit this line when we hit this line we are guaranteed that we have a value against our current character when we're done with this for loop current will points to the last node so here what we're gonna do in our last node we're gonna insert we're gonna insert is and equals to a true so using this we're detecting a word is ended at that position the time complexity of this method is o of n and space complexity is also o of n i hope you've understood this add word method now let's see the source operation how this source operation works now let's see how this source word operation works we have constructed this try data structure from this list of words first let's see this bad word now we're going to initialize a current pointer that points to the root node this is our current character now we're going to check does this current character exist in our current node we see that b exist so we're going to move c to the value of b so this is the value of v this node let's move to the next character a now we're going to check does this character a exist in our current node we see a exist so let's move to the value of a the value of a is a node so let's move here current is now pointing here and our next character is d now we're gonna check does this character d exist in our current node we see d exist and this d is the last character this is our current character does this character d exist in our current node we see exist so let's move to the value of d so this is our current node we see we are done now current pointer is pointing here now what we're gonna do we're gonna return whatever value we have here true so we're gonna return true that means bad exists in our try data structure this word bad is ending here we are indicating by this value by this value of this node now we have to check this word dot ad dot a d current pointer is pointing to the root node dot match with any character we have here in our current node character bdm so we have three choice for this character dot first choice is b our second choice second choice is d then third choice is m so for the first character of our word dot ad we have three choice first we are going to call a recursive function for this character then we will call for this character then we will call for this character first let choose this b if we choose this b what we're gonna do we're gonna move our current pointer to the value of this character b so current is now pointing here and this is our current character we see a exist in our current node so let's move to the value of a so current is now pointing here and this is our current character does d exist in our current node exist so let's move to the value of d so current is now pointing here we are done we have no more character left now what we are going to do we are going to return whatever value we have here we see we have true if we find out true we're going to return true we're not going to explore all possible choice for dot so by choosing b we find out our answer true so this dot ad exists in our try data structure so we're going to return true now let's move to the next word next word is b dot dot b dot dot current pointer points to root and our current character is b does b exist in our current node we see yes so let's move to the value of b that is this node let's move to the next this is our current we find out this dot so what we have to do we have to find out all possible character we have in our current node we have only one character so we have only one choice for this dot this dot match with a so let's move to the value of a that is this node 
let's move to the next this is dot now we have to find out all possible choice we see we have only one character in our current node so it matches with d let's move to the value of d that is this node now what we're going to do we're going to return whatever value we have here we see we have true so b dot dot exist in our try data structure so we're going to return here true now dot a n let's initialize our current pointer to the root for dot we see we have three choice we have three choice this dot may match with b it may match with d it may match with m so we have three choice if dot match with b let's move current to the value of b we're gonna call a recursive function by choosing all possible switch for this dot we see that the first choice is b so we moved current to the value of b this is our current a exists in our current node so let's move to the value of a this node our current character is n n does not exist in our current node so what we're gonna do we're gonna return false by choosing b at the first position we find out value false now let's choose the next the next that is d so if we choose a d let's move to c to the value of d that is this current character is a a exist in our node so let's move c to the value of a here we see that n n does not exist in our current node so we're going to return false now let's make our third choice m if we match this m with this dot then current is pointing to this node we have to move current to the value of m and current character is a a exists in our hash map so let's move to the value of a so c is pointing here our current character is n we see n exists in our hash map so let's move to the value of n that is this node now what are we going to do we're going to return the value we see we have true so from this side we get the value true so this dot a n exists in our hash map so we're going to return here true our next word is d a d i actually we have not inserted d a d y if we insert d a d y in our in our try data structure here we will have y and here we will have a node something like this and here we will have true now let's check whether this word d a d i exists in our try data structure or not d a d i current is pointing here d exists so let's move to the value of d current is a a exists let's move to the value of a current is pointing here d exists in our hash map in our current d exists in our current node so let's move to the value of d so c is pointing here our current is i we see i does not exist in our in our node so what we're gonna do we're gonna return false d a d i does not exist now our last word m dot n m dot n we see m current is pointing here we see m exist m exist in our current node so let's move to the value of m so current is pointing here now we have dot we know that dot may match with any character but we have here only one character so it match with a let's move to the value of a so it's pointing here n exists in our current node so let's move to the value of n so current is pointing here we are done and we see at the end we find out this node and here we have true so we're going to return true so m dot n exists in our try data structure what is the time complexity of search word operation the time complexity is o of n square if we have all dots in the given word we may need n square time complexity for the worst catch we already implemented add word method now let's implement search method right inside here we're going to call a function search word we're going to provide the given word then the index of our first character first character of this word and a current pointer initially current pointer is the root this function will return true if the word exists in the try so written whatever this function written now let's implement source word so public written type is boolean source word string word int index then current pointer so node current now what we're gonna do if we saw index equals to word dot length then what we're gonna return we're gonna return whatever value we have in our current node current dot is end whether our word ended 
at our current node or not. Now what we are going to do, we are going to check if our current character is dot. So if word dot char at, if word dot char at index, if our current character is dot, then what we are going to do, we are going to iterate over the hash map. So let's iterate over the key of our hash map that exists in our current node. So for character, character ch in current dot, current dot child dot key set. Now right inside here, what we are going to do, we are going to right inside here, what we are going to do, we are going to call this function search word recursively. We're going to assume that current character match with dot by matching current character with dot let's move to the next character and let's let's check the rest of the character so let's call here a function source word source word this function and let's provide here our word given word then index let's move to the next and we are going to provide here the the node or value for our current for our current character so current dot child dot get ch if this function return true if this function return true if this function source word if it's written true we are going to return true if this function never written true when we're done with this for loop here we're going to return false if our current character is not a dot then what we're gonna do else we are going to check the value for our the value for our current word we're gonna check the value for our current character so let's check here if we saw if we saw here current dot child dot get this is our current character if we saw the value is null then we are going to return false immediately it means that our current character does not exist if this evaluated true that means our current character does not exist in our current node if this condition is false that means current character exists so let's call this function recursively so source word source word let's provide our word then let's move to the next index so index plus one let's get here the the node for our current character so let's provide here this now let's return whatever this function written this is our core logic this is a recursive algorithm this is a recursive algorithm this algorithm takes for the worst case time complexity o of n square o of n square and it takes a space complexity o of one but for recursive function call it might takes space complexity o of n for the worst case for the recursive function call because recursion uses a stack internally this is our algorithm now let's run this code we see it passed the first test cases now submit it we see we have solved this problem successfully this is the algorithm to solve this problem you might be confused by this function source word if our current character is dot we are we are checking we are matching dot with every single every single character and we're calling our function recursively with the rest of the character we're calling it recursively because we might have a lot of dot in the given word and we may have thousand of words in our try data structure so we have to call our function recursively here if dot if our current character is not dot then here we're checking if our current character exists in our current node if our current character does not exist we're returning here false if current character exists then we are calling with the rest of the character by skipping the current character and here we're getting the values for our current characters i hope you've understood this video explanation if you have any question you can post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question word search true in this problem we are given a list of words and a matrix board we have to return 
the words from this list of words that exist in this board we see o a t h this word exist o a t h o a t h this word exist o a t h then p e a we see that this word does not exist then e a t we see e a t we see this word exist e a t then we have then we have rain we see that this word does not exist in our board so we have to return this list of two words these two word exist in our board so we have to return these two words i hope you've understood this problem we are given a list of words and a matrix board we have to return the words that exist in our board from this word list we find out these two words so we have to return these two words now let's see how to solve this problem first thing what we are going to do we are going to construct a tri data structure from this list of words so first we are going to construct a tri data structure then what we are going to do we are going to apply dfs search dfs search in this board matrix to check the word if you don't know how to construct a tri data structure from a list of word please watch this video prefix tree we have in this section first let's construct our tri data structure then we will apply our dfs traversal in our matrix to check the word in our tri data structure if we construct tri data structure from this list of words we get this tri data structure if you don't know how to construct a tri data structure from a list of word please watch the video we have in this section prefix tree we constructed this tri data structure from this list of words in this tri data structure we have total four words we see that we have total four words o a t h p e a e a t r a i n the definition of node of our tri data structure is this we have two component hash map and a word this is a hash map for every single node we have two component a hash map and a variable word of type string we see that our first word is o a t h first character is o o we have o here the next the next character of o is a a we have a right here the next character of a is t t here we have t here then we have h a is here we see that we reach the end of a word if we reach the end of a word how we can detect that in our prefix tree in our prefix tree we store in our prefix tree problem we stored true as value true here we stored as value true to the next of a's this is the next node of a's this is the value of this node a's and here we stored in our prefix tree a uh, prefix tree problem true but here we have this word if we don't have null we can say that a word is ended here a word is ended here and we can find out that word from here here we have null it means that we have here empty it means that there is no word is ended here there is no word is ended here because this is the value of this node here we have this empty it means that there is no word is ended here this is the value of this key t so there is no word is ended here here we have this empty this empty cell it means that there is no word is ended here because this is the value of this key a and so on here we have empty it means that there is no word is ended here here we have empty it means that there is no word is ended at this node here we have empty it means that there is no word is ended here because this is the value of this key p null means empty 
so here we have null for all the empty cell we can assume we have null null means empty we see that we have total four words in our tri data structure we have pea pea this word is ended here then we have eat e a t this word is ended here then r a i n r a i n this word is ended here we have here this word i hope you've understood how to construct this tri data structure if you don't know how to construct a tri data structure from a list of word please watch the video prefix tree we have in this section now let's apply dfs tower cell in our given board matrix to check the word in our tri data structure this is our tri data structure we constructed from this list of words now let's declare a current pointer to the root of our tri data structure so let's declare here a current pointer so current is pointing here now let's apply dfs traversal in our board matrix we're going to apply here dfs source the first character we see we have o for O, we see that we have total four choice. From O, we can move to top, we can move to left, we can move to right, we can move to down. So we have total four choice. We can move to top, we can move to left, top left, we can move to down, we can move to down, we can move to right. So we have total four choice for every single cell here we have total four choice here we have total four choice here we have total four choice and so on now let's explore all the options for this character o so if we start at o we have total four choice we have tough we have left we have down we have right so this is for tough this is for left this is for down and this is for right first we have this this character o now we are going to check before exploring all possible switch all possible choice for o we are going to check first does this character o exist in our current node we see that in our current node we have a hash map and we have a word we see in our hash map the character o exist the character o exist so what we are going to do we are going to move our current to the value of o that is this node so let's move current right here so current is now pointing here now let's make our first choice top we see on the top we have nothing on the top we have nothing now let's make the choice second choice left on the left we see that we have nothing so we have nothing here i choose this order first top then left then down then right you can choose your own order you can customize your order you may have left right top down or any order you want in this video i'm going to follow this order top left down right we see on the top we have nothing on the left we have nothing when we choose this o what we have to do we have to keep track that we have already visited we can create auxiliary matrix to keep track the visited cell we have to create auxiliary matrix with same dimension here at this position if we store true if we have true that means this cell is visited instead creating auxiliary matrix what i can do we can replace this value when you choose we can replace this value with a hash let's replace this value with a hash symbol now let's move to down to this e so if we move to this e we get here e now we have to check does this character e exist in our current node we see that e does not exist so we can't choose here e now let's go to right on the right we see that we have a does a exist in our current node we see a exist a exist in our current node so let's move current to the value of a so a is 
so current is now pointing to this node now let's make here four choice for this a let's make here four choice i'm going to write this a here for space so for a we have total four choice first we have top on the top we have nothing then left on the left we have o we already visited o because we have a hash so we cannot move to the left now let's move to down on the bottom on the bottom of a we see we have t now what we have to do we have to check does this t exist in our current node we see that t exists in our current node so let's move current to the value of t so current is now pointing here now again for t we are applying here dfs tower cell we are moving in one direction as far as possible so first we choose this direction right from right we are moving to we are moving to down we're moving to down or we're moving to bottom so from t again from here we have four choice we already visited a we have to mark it so let's mark it using this symbol hash now t is our current now from t we have to move to fast to tough we see on the top we have this a that is already visited this a is already visited now let's move to left on the left we have e on the left we have e so let's move to left we see e does not exist in our current in our current node so we can't choose here e now let's move to down down on the down we have a's when you choose here t when you're exploring the adjacent of t we have to mark it as visited t is visited now let's move to let's move to down on the down what we have we have h on the down we have h so let's move to h now we're gonna check does h exist in our current node we see yes is exist so let's move current to the value of ace so current is now pointing here now you see current is pointing to this node when you moved current to a node what we will do first we're gonna check the word when current was pointing here first we check does the o exist or not if o exist then what we have to do we have to move current here now here what we're gonna do after moving current we are going to check the word if we saw the word is not null what we're gonna do we're gonna add that word in our list because we have to return a list of word so let's create here a list here we see when current was pointing here this word is null when we saw a exist so we moved current here here what we have to do we have to check the word we see what is null so we have to do nothing now we see t here we this is our third choice here we see t exist so let's move current here when you moved current to a node we have to check the value of a word we see that this is null now we see a is exist so we're going to move current right here so current is pointing here now what we're going to do we're going to check does the word of this node is null we see no this word is not null this word is o a t h it means that we find out a valid word we find out a word in our tri data structure this is the word first we have o a t h this is the word we find out in our tri data structure so what we're going to do we're going to add this word in our list so o a t h when we when you get this word what we are going to do we are going to replace this word with null because while traversing while traversing our board using dfs traversal we may find out this word o a t h again if you find out this word again we we are not interested to add this word in our list because we are going to return only the unique word that's why we are replacing this value with null now what we are going to do we are going to replace this h with this h with a hash we may have a word in our list of word o a t h i in that case here we should have i then here we have a node something like this and here we have this word o a o a t h i something like this so we have to keep sourcing in our board in our board 
So if we have a word, if we consider we have this word something like this, then what we are going to do? Let's add here one more word so it's better for you to understand. So O A T H I. If we have this word, we will have here something like this. Now we replaced this H. Now what we have to do? We have to move to the top. On the top of A is we see that we have we have this character T that is already visited. Now let's move to now let's move to this direction here this is for left on the left we see we have i on the left we have i so what we're gonna do we're gonna move our current to the value of i that is this node now here we see this is not null so we're going to add this word in our list so o a t h i o a t h i now let's mark this i as visited now let's explore all the adjacent of i we have four adjacent tof tof is e does e exist in our current hash map? No. So, on the top, we see e. E does not exist in our hash map. Then on the left, in the left, we have nothing. Now, on the bottom of i, we see we have i. i does not exist in our current node. Then we have on the right k. k does not exist in our current node. So, we are going to move to this here. We are going to move to this h. Let's backtrack here. We see that we have explored all option for this i. All option, top left down right. So let's now mark it with our with our actual character that is i. Now let's back to h. When we back to h, we have our recursion called state. We have a state for our recursive function call. With that state current is now pointing to this node because we have processed we have processed for i now let's move here current is pointing here it means that we are processing the we are processing the adjacent of h this is the node of h this is the node of this key h now let's made our let's made our third choice which is down which is down we see on the down we have if if does not exist in our current node now let's make our let's make our fourth choice right on the right we see we have k k does not exist k does not exist in our current node now what we are going to do we are going to mark this ace with this value we're going to mark this cell with ace now we see that we explored we explore top left and down now let's move to right on the right of t we see we have a on the right we have a and now current pointer is pointing to this node we get access of this node from the recursive uh, function call state we get access of this node from the state of our recursive function call we don't have to worry about it now we have here a we see it does not exist in our current node we are now we are dealing with the adjacent of t that's why current is pointing here this is the node for this key t we see it does not exist so let's explore the adjacent of a we explore three adjacent now let's go to right for this a before that let's recover this value now for a we see we have to move to right on the right we have a and current is pointing here current is pointing here we see that for a for a we see in our current node we don't have the character a now let's move to this function call for o so current is pointing here we see we explored all the adjacent so we are done and we have to recover this value and we have to recover this value for o so we get this we called our function for this we have to we have to traverse our board one by one one by one we will traverse entire board so first we call our dfs function for o now we have to call our dfs function for a current is pointing here now let's call with a we see that a does not exist in our current node so we cannot call with this a if we call with this a it will return because a does not exist a does not exist now let's move to the next we have again a so if we call our dfs function it will just return then we have n n does not exist now for e if we call our function we have total four choice we have total four choice on the top we have o since e exists in our hash map we're going to move current 
we're going to move current to the value of e so current is pointing here now the adjacent of e on the top we have o on the left we have nothing on the down we have i on the right we have t we see that in our current node we don't have o in our current node we don't have i in our current node we don't have t so we have to do nothing here let's move current here current is pointing to the root let's move to the next so current is now pointing here we see t does not exist in our current node then a a does not exist in our current node then e e exist e exist in our current node so let's call our function with e we have here total four choice on the left on the left of e we have a since e exists let's move current here since you move current here we're going to check this value we see this value this value is null so we have to do nothing now let's check does this a does this a exist now let's call with e we see e exists in our current node so what we are going to do we are going to mark it as visited so let's mark it with hash let's move current here now let's explore the adjacent first top on the top we have n n does not exist in our current node now let's move to the left on the left we see we have a a exists in our current node so what i'm going to do i'm going to move current to the value of a so current is pointing here now let's explore the adjacent of a and let's mark it this a as visited first top on the top we have again a a does not exist in our current node when you move current here we see this value is null so we have to do nothing we have to explore the adjacent so the first adjacent is a so on the left we see we have t we see t exists in our current node so let's move current to the value of t so current is pointing here we see that now current is pointing to this node here we have word equals to it so let's add this word in here so it and let's mark it as null because we may encounter this word again in our board while traversing we we are interested to keep track only the unique string the unique word that's why we're marking it as null now the adjacent of t is let's mark it first we see the adjacent of t is a a does not exist in our current hash map then on the left we have e e does not exist in our current hash map then on the down we have a is a does not exist in our current hash map then on the right we have a a already visited so we export all the adjacent of t now current is pointing here current is pointing here let's mark it let's unmark now for a we choose top and left now let's move to down on the down we have k k does not exist in our current hash map then right on the right we see that on the right we have e e already visited e already visited so we are done with a so let's unmark it now let's move to e current is now pointing here now now let's export the adjacent down the down of e is r r does not exist in our current node then we have right on the right what do we have we have nothing so we are done now let's unmark it now we see that we call this we call our defense function with e we find out this word e a t this is our current i does not exist in our current node a is a is does not exist k does not exist r exist r exist so let's call our function with r and let's move current to the value of r that is this node now let's explore the adjacent of r the adjacent of r on the top we have e on the left we have k on the down we have v on the right we have nothing we see that e does not exist we have to mark it as visited we see e does not exist in our current node k does not exist v does not exist so let's recover it so by calling with r we see that there is no word in our word list so current is pointing here now let's move to i i does not exist in our current node a does not exist l does not exist b does not exist so we find out our answer our answer is this we have to write on this list so we find out three words o a t h and we find out 
this word EAT and we find out this word OATHI and we have to write in this list of words this is how we can solve this problem first what we have to do we have to construct our try data structure this is straightforward implementation of try then we have to apply here DFS DFS in our board and we have to check using current pointer in our try data structure this is not super difficult question if you practice you'll see this problem is interesting now let's explain the time complexity of this algorithm if we assume the number of row is r number of column is, is c we have to traverse every single cell so the time complexity is o of r c r times c times we have to call our dfs function for every single cell in our dfs function we have four choice so four to the power r c this is the time complexity space complexity of this algorithm is o of if we have n words n words and l l is the maximum length l is the length of the longest word so the overall time complexity is o of rc times what to the power rc the space complexity is o of n times l n is the total number of words and l is the length of longest word now let's implement our algorithm first let's create the node of our try data structure so class node first a hash map our node has two component a hash map as key we're gonna store character and as well we're gonna store node let's call it child and a string word public node this is constructor child equals to new hash map the default value of word is null now let's construct our try data structure first so node root equals to node root equals to let's call a function build try and let's provide here our words from these words this function will construct try data structure now let's implement this function build try right below here public return type is node build build try it takes as input the list of words so string words right inside here let's create the root of our try so node node root equals to new node so we created the root node of our try data structure now what we are going to do we are going to insert the word from this list of words in this try data structure so for string word in words now right inside here let's declare a current pointer a current pointer node current equals to root current pointer is now pointing to the root node now let's iterate over the character of our current word so int i equals to int i equals to zero i less than word dot word dot length i plus plus now let's find out our current character ch for current character here word dot char at i we find out our current character now we're gonna check does our current character exist in our current node so let's check here current dot child we are storing the character in our hash map of our current node so current dot child dot contains key ch if our current character does not exist in our current node what we're gonna do we're gonna insert our current character so current dot child dot put current character and let's insert new node empty node as value when we hit this line we are guaranteed that current character exists in our hash map so current equals to current dot get ch current dot child dot dot child dot get ch so we moved our current pointer to the value of our current key or our current character so we are moving our current pointer to the value of our current character when we have inserted our current word 
in our dry data structure at the end we are going to insert our word our current word in our string word so in our node we have two component hash map and word so at the end we're going to insert current dot word current dot word equals to word this is our current word this word when we're done with this for loop it means that we have constructed our try data structure let's return the root of our try data structure and here we are we are creating a root in this function root and we're assigning the root to this root so this is the root of our try data structure now what we are going to do we are going to create this list in this list we'll store our string so let's create here list string let's call it list equals to new array list now let's iterate over the let's iterate over our metric so for int i equals to zero i less than board dot length i plus plus for int j equals to zero j less than board zero board zero dot length j plus plus right inside here what we are going to do we are going to call our dfs function for every single cell so dfs in our function let's provide our board so board then let's provide our list in this list we will store our answer list then the root of our try data structure so root then the index of our current cell ij now let's implement this function dfs this function this dfs function will find out word from the board if we find out a word from the board in our try data structure this dfs function will add that word to this list when we're done with this loop we'll return our list now let's implement this function dfs so public return type is void dfs it takes four parameter first this board so board then our second parameter is our list so list a string a list then the root of our try data structure so node root let's call it current because we'll call our function recursively we'll call this dfs function recursively then int i int j i and j is the index of current character in this board now right inside here first thing we are going to validate i and j if we saw i is less than zero or j is less than zero we have to just return because if i is less than zero j is less than zero i and j invalid or if we saw i is greater than or equals to board dot length j is greater than here j j is greater than or equals to board dot length if we saw this condition it means that i and j invalid so we'll just return we'll just return in that case now our second condition if we saw if let's find out first our current character so char siege equals to board i j now we are going to check if our current character exists in our current node if we saw our current character does not exist in our current node will immediately return so if current dot child dot get ch equals to null if our current character does not exist in our current node we're going to just return if our current character exists what we are going to do we are going to move our current to the value of our current character so current equals to current dot child dot get ch when you moved our current pointer to the value of current character what we are going to do we are going to check the word if we saw current dot word is not equals to null it means that we find out a word so list dot add in our list we're adding our current word so list dot add current dot word and we're going to set our current 
word to null because for the future call of dfs function we may find out we may find out our current word again in order to skip duplicates we are setting this to null now here what we are going to do we are going to replace our current character with a hash to mark it as visited we're not using here boolean matrix to keep track the visited to keep track the visited cell we are modifying this board in place to mark the visited cell so board i j equals to i'm going to use here hash i'm using here hash you can use any other character something like asterisk or special character i'm going to use here hash now we have to explore the adjacent we have to explore the four adjacent first top left then down then right so first dfs first we have to move to the top so first board then list then current then we have to provide here i minus one i minus one for top then j now for left dfs board list current uh, for left top left now for left what we have to do we have to subtract one from our j so i j minus one this is for left now for down dfs board list current i plus one then j now our last choice right so board list current i j plus one this is for right when we export all the adjacent what we have to do we have to reset our value we have to recover our value so board i j equals to our current character our current character we have here ch this is our algorithm first we constructed our try data structure then we are calling our dfs function for every single cell if we find out a word exists in our in our board we're adding that word in our list and here we're returning the list in this if statement what we are doing we're checking if our current character does not exist we are returning also here we have to check if our current character is already visited so if ch equals to hash if our current character is if our current character is already visited also we have to return we have to combine we can combine this with this one line so let's add here or this so if our current character is visited we have to return returning means we are terminating our current function call this is our dfs function this is our base case in this base case this is for row if we saw the index i is equals to or greater than the number of row and this is j this is for column if we saw the the index of column is greater than or equals to the number of column here actually you have to provide zero because this is not all ages the given board is not all ages square i hope you have understood this video explanation now let's run this code accepted let's submit it accepted we have solved this problem successfully i hope you've understood this video explanation if you have any question you can post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video welcome to this video in this video we're going to solve this coding interview question mars k sorted list the mars list must be in sorted order for examples if we are given this array of list in this array we see that we have total three list we have to merge this three sorted list if we merge what we will get first one then a one then uh, we can uh, then we should have two so one one two then we should have three so one one two three then we should have four we can pick this four or this four let's pick this four so four then this four four five then six 
6 and 7. So if we are given this array of list, we should return this sorted list. So we merged all the sorted list into one list and we see this is also sorted. This, this merged list also should be in sorted order. For example, if we're given this array of list 0, 1, 2, if we merge this three sorted list, what we will get? First, we will have minus 10, then minus 2. So if we merged this three sorted list, minus 10, minus 2. So minus 10, minus 2, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 5, this 5, then 12, 56, and 200. So for this given, a given array of list, we should return this sorted list. Now, how we can solve this problem? Let's see how we can solve this problem. For example, we have this array of list. In this array, we have total three list. Now let's see how to solve this problem. First, let's talk about the NAB solution. In the NAB solution, what we're going to do? We're going to create a mean heap data structure. Let's assume this is our mean heap data structure. Mean heap. Now what we're going to do? We're going to store every single node in our mean heap data structure. First, we have one. Let's store this node one. Then two, let's store two in our heap. Then three, let's store in our heap. Then we have 12, let's store in our heap 12, 56, 200, 56, 200, then minus 10, minus two, then five. Now what we can do, we can create a dummy head and then we're gonna, we're gonna remove the minimum element from the heap so the minimum element is minus 10, minus 10, then we'll get minus 2, minus 2, and so on. When our heap is empty, we will have we will have this sorted list, this merged sorted list, and we'll return this node. If this is our head, then we can return head.next this node. This is not an efficient algorithm to solve this problem. This algorithm takes time complexity O of n times n times log n time complexity where n is the total number of nodes we have in the given array. And it will take a space complexity O of n where n is the total number of nodes we have in the given array. This is not an efficient solution. We can improve this time complexity from n times log n to O of n times log k, where k is the total number of lists we have in the given array. This is this solution is better than this solution, and the space complexity, the space complexity required for our efficient algorithm O of k, where k is the Side of our array. So this is our time complexity for the efficient algorithms. Now let's see how to solve this problem efficiently. Now let's see how to solve this problem efficiently. We have these three lists. This is the first element of this list. This is the first element of this list. This is the first element of this list. Now what we're going to do, we're going to pick the minimum. The minimum of 1, 4 and minus 10 is minus 10. First, uh, first let's create a dummy node, dummy head, let's, let's say minus 1. Now what we're going to do, this is our dummy head. Now we have this node minus 10, this is the minimum. The value of this node is minimum, so let's pick this node, let's add it right here. So we choose this node. Now let's move to this node in this in this list. Now we see minus 2, 4, 1. Let's pick the minimum. Minimum is minus 2. So let's add here minus 2. Since we choose this minus 2, let's move to the next. Okay, this is our 
uh, this is the current this is the current node of this list this is the current node of this list this is the current node of this list we see this is the minimum one five one four and five the minimum is one so let's let's choose one let's add one here now let's move forward we see two four five minimum is two let's choose here two now let's move forward three four five the minimum is three so let's choose here a three now since you choose here three let's move forward we see that we have nothing on this uh, on this list we see we are left with zero nodes so we can say we have null right here null means nothing so our current our current node in this list is null so we will skip this here also we will have null let's add here null now we see we have null four and five we will not consider this so four and five minimum is four let's add here four let's move forward minimum is a uh, minimum of five and six is five let's pick here five now let's move forward we see that it points to null so we're not considering this and this anymore now we see we have six let's add here six let's move forward we see we have nine okay we have nine so let's move forward we see null so we are done we find out this we find out this list so we're gonna return if this is our new head then we're gonna return head.next this node now we see that we merged all the list this is the intuition of the efficient algorithm now let's see how this algorithm works now let's talk about how our efficient solution works now I'm gonna create here a mean heap data structure this is our mean heap data structure mean heap in our mean heap data structure we will store maximum k nodes we're gonna store maximum k nodes now we're going to iterate over all the list and I'm gonna add the head of each list in our mean heap data structure so we get here first one then four then minus 10 and we're gonna create a head a dummy head let's create here a dummy head minus one now this is our dummy head and it points to null now what we're gonna do we're gonna remove we're gonna remove the minimum from our min heap which is minimum this is minus 10 minus 10 is the minimum so we're gonna add minimum to the next of head so here we're gonna add a pointer current in our dummy head and let's add to the next of this current so here we're gonna add we're gonna add minus 10 the removed node so minus 10 and let's move current to this node current pointer is pointing to this node so we we choose we selected this node so we're gonna check is there any node in this list we say yes minus two so let's store minus two in our min heap so we stored minus two in our min heap we see that we have exactly k nodes in our min heap now what we're gonna do we are going to remove the minimum element which is minus two let's remove it and let's add it to the next of current so let's add it here let's move current to the next so current is pointing here now we're gonna check is there any node is there any next node of our removed node we removed minus two we see that we have a next node so let's add five in our in our min heap data structure so let's add here now what we're gonna do we're gonna remove the minimum minimum is one so let's remove one let's add to the next up current so right here now we're gonna move current to this node now what we are going to do we are going to check the next of our removed node our removed node is one since we remove this node now we're gonna check is there any next node of this node yes so let's insert two in our mean heap so we insert it here two now let's remove the minimum which is minimum minimum is two let's remove two and let's add it here now let's move current to the next so current is pointing here now we're gonna check is there any any next node of our removed node we see yes we have three so let's add three in our in our mean heap now let's remove the minimum from our 
Minhif which is 3 so let's add to the next up current so 3 is added here let's move to the let's move current to the next so current is pointing right here so we removed 3 is there any next node of 3 no we see null so we'll insert nothing because there is there is no next node of our currently removed node now what we are going to do we're going to remove the minimum node from our min heap, which is 4. Let's remove it and let's add to the next of our current. So let's add here 4. We added here 4. So let's move current here. Is there any next node of the removed node 4? Yes. So let's insert 6 in our min heap right here. Now what we're going to do, we're going to remove the minimum. The minimum is 5. Let's remove, let's add to the next of our current. So let's add 5 right here. Now we're going to check is there any next node of 5? We see null. We have no node on the next of 5. So we'll do nothing. Now what we're going to do, we are going to remove the minimum. Minimum is 6. Let's remove it. Let's add it to the next of current right here. Let's move current to this node 6. Now we're going to check is there any node is there any next node of the node 6 we see that we have 9 so what we're going to do we're going to add 9 in our mini data structure now what we're going to do we're going to remove the minimum which is 9 let's add to the next of our current so current is pointing here now we're going to check is there any next node of this node 9 no null so we are done we see our mini is empty so we are done and we're going to return the next of this head node. This is the next of this head node. This is how this algorithm works. This algorithm takes time complexity O of n times log k where k is the number of lists we have in the array and n is the total number of nodes we have in the given list and the space complexity is O of the space complexity is O of k because we are storing k items or k nodes in our mini data structure this is our efficient algorithms i hope you have understood how to solve this problem now let's implement this algorithm now let's implement our algorithm first let's create our mini data structure in java we use priority queue to create mini and max data structure priority queue we're gonna store node list node let's call it let's call it min if equals to new priority queue we have to create our custom comparator because we are providing list node this is a user defined data structure we can say so let's create here our new comparator so new comparator a list node so here this is our new comparator here we have to override override public int public int compare compare list node node 1 list node node 2 and here written node 1 minus node 2 this is our min heave data structure now what we are going to do we are going to iterate over the head of this list and we're going to add that we're going to add that in our mini data structure so for list node for list node let's call it a head head in list this is the first node of is list while iterating okay so we're going to add this head in our in our mini data structure we're going to check here first if our list is empty we may have empty list so we're going to check here if a head is not equals to null if our head is not equals to null only then we'll add the head in our in our mini data structure so head now here what we're going to do we're going to create our we're going to create here our dummy head so head equals to new list node with minus one you can provide here any number you want any valid number okay 
now here I'm going to create our current pointer that points to the head node now let's uh, let's run a while loop while our min if is not empty mean if min if dot is empty while our min if is not empty what we are going to do we're going to remove the peak element so list node list node peak equals to the peak element okay peak equals to uh, min if dot pull we're going to remove the peak element okay let's call it we can say this is our temp we just removed now let's let's add this node to the next up current so current dot next equals to temp we are adding our temp node to the next up our current node and let's move current to the current dot next now here what we are going to do we're gonna check if we have any next node of our removed of our removed node so let's check here if temp dot next is not equals to null if we have next node of our removed node let's add that node in our mean if data structure so mean if dot add temp dot next okay this is our core algorithm when you're done with this while loop in the next of this dummy head we'll have a head of our k of our mars merged k list the head of our list okay so return head dot uh, head dot next this is the head of our merged list this is our algorithm the time complexity is o of n times log k where n is the number of nodes we have in the given array and k is the size of the given array okay and the space complexity is o of k this is our efficient algorithm and here we have to compare the value of our node okay node one dot val and node two dot val this is our efficient algorithm now let's run this code we see accepted now let's submit our code we solved this problem successfully. It takes runtime 5 milliseconds. This is our algorithm. Now let's see how this algorithm works. First, we are creating a mean if data structure. This is our mean if data structure. So we are creating mean if data structure using priority queue. Here we are we are creating this mean if data structure using list node. So we have to use our custom comparator here we are iterating here we are iterating over our list and we're adding the head node of each list in our minif data structure in our minif data structure then here we are creating we are creating a a dummy head and we are creating a, a current pointer that points to the dummy head and here we're removing the node from our uh, mean heap data structure and we are adding in our in our current pointer okay and at the end we're returning the head of our merged linguist this is our core algorithm i hope you have understood this video explanation if you have any question you can post your question on the q a forum thanks for watching this video Welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to solve this coding interview question top k frequent elements. In this problem, we are given an integer k and an array of integers. We have to find out top k frequent elements from the given array. In this array, we see the top k frequent element is 1 and 2. Because 1 appears 3 times, 2 appears twice, 3 appears only once. So the top k frequent element is 1 and 2. Also, you can return this in this order. To one the order doesn't matter so we have to return the top k frequent element in any order if we have here one extra three right here in that case the top k frequent element can be one two it also can be one three so we have to return one two or one three but in this problem we have always just unique answer in the given array we have always just unique answer so we don't have to worry about multiple answer we have to find out the 
to obtain frequent element from this given array. Now let's see how to solve this problem. First, let's talk about the NAEP solution. In the NAEP solution, we're gonna construct a frequency table. So frequency one appears three times, two appears twice, and three appears once. We can construct a hash map. This is a hash map. We clearly saw that. We have key value pairs. Key is the element and the value is the appearance of that element. So this is our this is our frequency table we can say. Now what we can do we can create a heap data structure using the heap data structure we can find out that top k frequent element. But this solution will take time complexity O of n n times log k. Here k is the size of the hash map. The size of this array we saw in and the size of this hash map we see less than this the uh, less than the size of our given array we can say k so it will take time complexity o of n times log k and the space complexity is for this problem o of n because for the worst case we will store in items on our hash map to construct our frequency table so this is the time complexity of this algorithm this is not the super efficient algorithm now let's see how to solve this problem efficiently we can solve this problem efficiently using bucket sort algorithm for example we have this array of integers and k equals to a 2 now let's create here our bucket sort array our array for our bucket sort algorithm the size of our bucket array is uh, is greater than the size of our given array. If the size of our given array is n, then the size of our bucket array is n plus 1. This is our bucket array. This is our bucket array. By default, we have value null. By default, we have value null in each cell of this bucket array. We have here... 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 we can say this is i this is i okay and here how we're gonna store the element from our nums array to this bucket array this index we're gonna consider as count we're gonna consider as count so here we have total six element total six element the length of this array is 6 so we can have maximum we can have maximum count of an element 6 okay we might have something like this 1 1 1 1 1 1 in that case the count the count of 1 is 6 and we're gonna store the 1 right here here we have 1 it means that 1 is repeated 6 times this is the count of 1 okay this is our element and this is our count we see that clearly one is appear six time in the given array that's why we have here one if we are given this array now for this given array what we are going to do we have here one one and one we see one appears three times so what we're gonna do we're gonna store one at index three this is the count this is the count okay so we're gonna store here one so it means that one is repeated three times in our given array how we can how we can store here one we can create simply a frequency map from our given array if we construct a frequency map what we will get if we construct a frequency map we will get one 3, 1 appears 3 times, 2, 2 appears 2 times, and 3, 3 appears only once. This is our frequency uh, frequency map, okay? This is our hash map. We have here frequency of each element. 1 appears 3 times, 2 appears twice, 3 appears once. Now, we can iterate over our hash map. First, this is our first item of our hash map. This is the first key value pair. Here we have 1 and it repeated three times so at index three we're gonna store the element one so here let's store the element one 
let's move to the next item this is our next item in our hash map we see two 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 appears twice so at index two at index two we're gonna store the element two so let's store here two now we have here three three appears once so at index one we're gonna store the element three so here we're gonna store the element three we saw that we have added the element one at index three we have added the element two at index two element three at index one here index here this is the index index means count we are treating this as index the the highest possible index we might have in our bucket is the size of our given array right this is the index 6 the length of our given array is 6 so if we create this bucket array of length n plus 1 we'll get the last index 6 we will have all the element we will have all the element that will fit in this index from 0 to 6 so maximum we might have 6 element maximum we, we might have 6 element and that will map to 6 here we will have one in that case it means that one appears six times so for this given examples we have this bucket array i hope you have understood how to construct this bucket array we find out this bucket array in our bucket array we saw this is an integer this is an integer this is an integer but we're going to store here this as a list three as a list this is 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 not an integer this is a list of integers okay and here we have null here we have null null means simply nothing empty so we have here three two one now what we're gonna do we're gonna iterate this array from right to left First we have 6, we have null value, so let's keep it. Here we have null, so let's keep it. Here we have null, so let's keep it. Now here we have 3. Let's get this list and let's add in our answer list. So let's assume this is our answer list. In the answer list, let's add whatever we have in here. Whatever we have in here, so let's add in our answer list 1. Then we have here 2. So let's get everything from here and let's add in our answer list. Before that, when we added everything from here what we are going to do we are going to check does the length of our answer array is equals to k is the length of this answer is equals to k k equals to 2 no so let's move to this here we have 2 let's add this in our answer list now we see the length of our answer array is 2 if we find out the length of our answer array is k then we will break immediately and we will return this answer. This is how we can solve this problem. This algorithm will take overall O of n time complexity and it will take a space complexity O of n. This is our algorithm. This is how we can solve this problem. Let's take one more example for better understanding. Let's assume we are given this array of integers and k equals to 3. If we have 1, 2, 3 in our given array, the value of k must be 3 because if we have k equals to 1 we will have duplicate answer if we have k equals to 2 also we will have duplicate answer so if we are given this array of integers the value of k must be 3 now let's create here our bucket array let's create here bucket array this is our bucket array 0 1 2 3 the length of this the length of this bucket array is 1 plus the length of our given array now let's create a frequency a frequency table here so one appears once two appears once and three appears once now let's iterate over this frequency table first we have one one we see the element one appears once so at index one let's add this element one we see two this element two appears once so at index one let's add two so here let's add it as a list now this we see 3 appears 1 so at index 1 let's add 3 so here we get 3 we find out 1 2 3 and the rest of the cell are null now what we're gonna do we're gonna iterate this array bucket array from right to left 
we see at index 3 we have null at index 2 we have null at index 1 we have this three element let's create here answer list and here we're gonna uh, we're gonna add all the element we have at this index so we get one two three and after adding we have to check the size we, we saw the size of the size of our answer array is equals to k so we're gonna break immediately and we're gonna return this answer array this is how we can solve this problem now let's implement this algorithm first let's construct our frequency table for frequency table we're going to use a hash math data structure so math as key we're going to store integer as value we're going to store integer let's call it frequency math frequency math equals to new hash math now let's iterate over our given array so for integer num int num in nums now here frick frequency math dot put our given number in our current number then here frequency math dot get or default if num exist in the frequency math return the value against the key num otherwise return zero and let's add one to it when we're done with this loop we will have we will have the frequency of each element in this hash map now what we are going to do we're going to create our bucket our bucket array so array list array list here we're going to store integer this is our bucket array bucket equals to in this bucket array what we are going to store we go, we're going to store a list a list of integers okay so at each index we will have a list of integers so here new array list new array list the size of this array list is the size of our given array plus ones so nums dot length plus one now what we're gonna do we're gonna iterate over the hash map so let's iterate over our hash map so for integer key integer key then frequency math dot key set so here we're iterating over the key over the key of this hash map using the key we can access the value so let's get the frequency so integer frequency equals to freak math dot get key for is frequency for is frequency or this we can say this is also a count now here we're gonna check if bucket frequency at this frequency index if we saw we have null then we're gonna insert a new array list in that corresponding index in our bucket array so bucket frequency equals to new array list this is our empty array list okay when we reach this line we are guaranteed that we have at the frequency index we have something that is not null so here what we're gonna do we're gonna insert our current key at our current index at current frequency in frequency index so bucket here frequency bucket frequency so we get our uh, we get the access of our corresponding list corresponding array list so let's add at that array list our current key key okay so when we are done with this loop we will have our bucket array prepared now what we have to do we have to iterate our bucket array from the right to left so let's create here a list of integer in this list we'll store our answer so let's call it list equals to new array new array list now here what we are going to do we're going to iterate over our bucket from right to left so for int i equals to bucket dot length minus one since this is an array of uh, array of list uh, array of list of integers so we have to use your length so i equals to bucket dot length minus one while i is greater than equals to zero i minus minus now here what we're gonna check we're gonna check if our current bucket bucket i is not equals to null if our current bucket 
is not null what we are going to do we're gonna we're gonna get all the element from that list and we're gonna add that to our list so list dot add all list dot add all here bucket i okay when we're done with this loop we will have all the element in this list but we need the top k element right so we're gonna check here if the size of our list if the size of our list is equals to k we're gonna break we don't need any more because we find out uh, if we saw the list that uh, if we saw the size of our list is equals to k that means we find a top k elements top k frequent element now at the end we cannot return here this list because we have to return the uh, array of integers so let's create here array of integers int answer equals to new int size of this array is the size of our list so list dot size now here let's iterate over this list and let's uh, copy all the value to our to our answer to our answer array so int i equals to zero i less than answer dot length i plus plus and here answer i equals to list dot get i and at the end we're going to return this answer array in this answer array we stored all the elements we have in this list and this list hold the k frequent element this is our algorithm this loop takes time complexity o of n this loop also for the worst case will takes time complexity o of n here also it will takes time complexity o of n and here this loop will takes time complexity this will takes time complexity for the worst case o of 2n which is equivalent to o of n because we might have all the element in one bucket we have to we have to add all element to our list so that will take time complexity o of n and in that case the overall time complexity is o of 2n which is equivalent to o of n and this loop will take time complexity o of n and the space complexity we're going to consider for our frequency hash map we will have here for the worst case o of n uh, items in our frequency hash map also here we might have o of n items in our bucket okay so the overall uh, and in order to store in order to find out the key frequent element for the worst, worst case it will takes also of in space complexity this is the space complexity okay this is of uh, the space complexity will take space complexity of in and also here it will take space complexity of n so average on average if we find out the time and space complexity it will takes of foreign kind of foreign and which is equivalent to o of n we remove or discard the constant part from complexity analysis and the space complexity is o of n as well maybe foreign but uh, overall uh, we, we remove the uh, we remove the constant part from complexity analysis so we get linear time and linear space algorithm this is our linear space and linear time complexity algorithms this is our loop using this loop we are constructing this frequency this frequency hash map or we can say this is our frequency math so here if we have one two two then three something like this uh, three then three and three so what is the frequency frequencies one appears once two appears twice three appears three times so using this loop we're constructing our frequency uh, frequency table and we are calling it frequency math then we are creating our then we are creating this this bucket array in our bucket array what we will store in our bucket array we will store at index at index so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 at each corresponding index we are considering the index as count as count so here at index 3 what we will store at index 3 we will store the element 3 because 3 appears 3 times here we will store 3 at index 2 we are going to store 2 because 2 appears twice and, and at index 1 we are going to store the element uh, 1 because 1 appears only once so we are doing this we are we're doing this using this loop right here okay we're doing this using this loop 
here we might have multiple elements as a list here also we'll have element as a list here also as a list if we have one two three then if we create a bucket a bucket array so in that case what we will have at index one zero one two three here we will have this three element one two three as a list one two three now here we have this loop using this loop we are finding out the top k frequent element if we have here k equals to 2 in that case what we have to do we have to get the element from from count 3 and from count 2 because this is the most frequent from the right and we see these are null or empty okay so this is what we're doing using this and we're finding out the top k frequent element and we're storing in our list in our list and then we're just copying from list to our array because we have to return array of integers so we're doing we're doing that right here and that we're returning this answer and the overall time complexity and space complexity linear this is our algorithm i hope you've understood this algorithm on a very high level now let's run our code we see accepted now let's submit it we see it passed all the test cases. It takes 11 millisecond time complexity. I hope you have understood this video explanation. If you have any question, you can post your question on the Q&A forum. Thanks for watching this video. I will see you in the next video. Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to solve this coding interview question. Find median in a data stream. For examples, let's assume we have a flow of integers. We have a flow of integers something like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have a flow of integers from 1 to 6. We uh, First we have 1, then we added 2, then 3, then 4 and so on. Uh, let's assume we have this uh, flow or this uh, stream of integers. We have to find out a median. What is the median of this uh, stream? What is the median? We see that we have here even number of element, even number of element. So the median is the average of the middle two element. So 3 plus 4 divided 2 equals to 3.5. So the median of this stream is 3.5. For example, if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, five six seven what is the median of this we have here odd number of odd number of uh, element in this uh, stream so the median is the middle element this is the middle element uh, this stream is in sorted order also this stream is in sorted order they don't have to be in sorted order they can be something like this three five one uh one eleven uh seven uh seven four something like this so what is the median in order to find out median first thing what we can do we can sort it if we sort we get one uh three four five seven eleven so uh, we see the length of this stream is even so the median is the average of middle two element, which is four plus five divided by two equals to uh, equals to four point five. For this stream, median is four. Hope you have understood this problem statement. Now let's see how to solve this problem. Let's assume we have a flow. We have a flow of integers: first twenty-two, then thirty-five, then thirty, then sixteen, then uh, then eighteen. We can solve this problem using a list data structure. First, we have 22. We will add 22 in the list. Then we will add 35. Then we will uh, we'll call a sorting uh, algorithms to sort the list. So first, in our list, we may have 22. Now, if we call what is the median, the median is 22. The median is 22. Now, this is 35. Let's insert here 35 and let's sort this list. We sorted this list now what is the median in this stream if we have this two integer the median is the average of this two element then we have 30 let's 
uh, insert 30 here let's call a sorting function so if we sort what we get we get 22 30 35 so what is the median in this uh, in this stream if we have this flow of integers which is 30 because 30 is the middle now let's move forward 16 if we insert 16 we'll get here 16 we'll get here 16 then we have 18 um, so what is the median in this in this flow the median is the average of this two element now 18 let's insert here 18 and if we sort it what we'll get we'll get uh, here we'll have 18 and 16 so this is our list so what is the median in this uh, stream the median is this middle element 22 so we have to write in 22 we can call a sorting function we can call a sorting function when you insert it uh, when you insert it an integer into the list or uh, or what we can do uh, we can first insert 22 then 35 and let's insert 35 in its uh, correct position in its perfect position then we have 30 we'll insert 30 in its perfect position by just by just iterating over this list and by, by just swapping so uh, this algorithm uh, this algorithm will take time complexity for inserting into the list if we use sorting algorithm the time complexity would be in log in where n is the length of the stream n is the length of the string or if we uh, instead if we just uh, swap by inserting the element the integer it will take time complexity o of n o of n okay and the space complexity we need o of n now let's see how to solve this problem efficiently using if data structure to solve this problem we're going to use min if data structure and max if data structure let's see how to solve this problem using min if and max if data structure let's assume we have this flow one two three four five six let's assume we have this flow of integers this is a stream now what we're gonna do we're gonna partition this array we're gonna partition this array into two halves into two halves so this is our first half this is our second half if we have something like this one two three uh, four five six seven if we have uh, if we have odd number of elements then what we will do we will split a right here on the right half we will have one more element than the left half now here let's let's uh, partition this into two halves so what do we get we get one two three and here in this half what do we get four five six and here what do we get in our first half one two three and in the second half four five six seven now this is our first half this is our second half for this now let's let's see how to solve this so here we have three here we have four if we can get the maximum element from this left and minimum element from the right so what we'll get the maximum element from the left is uh, three the minimum element from the right is four so three and four since we uh, since we see the length of this stream is an even number so the median is the average of the middle two element that means if we find out the minimum from the right and max from the left so minimum from the left uh, minimum from the right so max from the left plus minimum from the right divided by 2 for even number if we uh, if we saw the length of our given stream is an even number so what we'll get here we will get 3 plus 4 divided 2 equals to 3.5 this is the median now here uh, what we will do we will find out the maximum from the left and minimum from the right so what we will get we will get 3 and 4 but here what do you see we see that the length the length of this uh, stream is an odd number so in that case what i have to do we'll take the minimum from the right part so which is 4 and this is our 
median we can say this is the median but in our stream we may have flow of integers in unsorted order this is in sorted order this is in sorted order that's why we can do it pretty easily but if we don't have a sorted a stream of integers if we have a stream that is unsorted then what we can do let's assume we have this flow of integers this is not in sorted order this is unsorted uh, unsorted a stream so the stream is not in sorted order so how we can partition how we can partition here on the right we will have one more element than the left so how we can do that on the left somehow we will detect all the element are less than we will have two element on the left so we'll have on the left 16 18 and on the right what we will have on the right we will have 22 35 uh, 30 so here what we get we get on the right 22 so 22 is our answer 22 or is our answer the minimum from the right the minimum from the right is our answer but if we have unsorted string something like this 22 35 uh, 16 18 so if we have something like this then how we can solve it on the left we'll have 16 18 on the right we'll have 22 and 35 so in that case we will take the minimum uh, we will take the max from the left and minimum from the right so uh, the average of this max and mean so uh, 18 plus 22 divided 2 this is our median you understand up until this point from the left we are picking the maximum from left we are picking the max and from right we are picking the minimum now let's try to understand how to apply here min if and max if data structure now let's create here two data structure max if and min if so max if max if and mean if let's assume this is our max if data structure and this is our mean if data structure now let's let's insert in our max if in our max if all the element we have on the left partition so what we'll get one two three on the right what will insert will insert four five six we know from max if if we call a peak function it will give gives us the maximum number so which is three it will gives us maximum number three and if we call peak function from mean if what we'll get we'll get this minimum number four so three plus four divided by two equals to equals to 3.5 this is the median okay now for this for these examples so what we will have in our max if we'll have the left element one two three uh, the element from the left partition and in the right partition what we will have we'll have four five six seven now we see that on the left we have uh, one two three in max if and on the right in our mean if we have four five six seven so we can access the uh, the maximum from the left and minimum from the right since the length is an odd number so we'll return the peak element or if we call peak element from mean if it will give us the minimum element and this is our median four is our median we see that this is sorted and this is sorted so we inserted the element uh, we inserted half element here and half element here and for this uh, for this uh, stream we inserted first three then uh, first three in our max if and the rest in our min if but how to handle if we have unsorted uh, stream integer now let's implement our uh, logic that will handle if we have a flow of integers that is in unsorted order also uh, it will uh, also our algorithm should handle the sorted uh, flow of integers now let's see how to solve this problem let's assume we have this flow of integers first we have 22 first thing what we're going to do we're going to insert this 22 in our mean if data structure so let's insert 22 in our mean if data structure 
if the size of min hip is m and if the size of max hip is n then we will have in our min hip data structure we may have one more element than the than the uh, element of max hip data structure or we may have equal number of elements in the both data structure so in our mini data structure if our given stream if our flow of integers if the length of our flow of integers is an odd number then we will have one more element in our mini in our mini data structure than the max data structure now what we're gonna do we're going to take this 22 and we'll insert in our mini data structure we see the size of min heap data structure is greater than max heap data structure. It is okay. But in our algorithm, what we will do, we'll remove the element from min heap, we'll remove the, uh, the root element, that means the minimum element from min heap, and we'll insert that in our max heap. And if we, f if we saw the size of max heap is greater than min heap, we'll remove the max from max heap, we'll insert that in our in our mean heap so we will have here 22 don't be intimidated by this process i'll show you how this actually works don't worry at all now this is 35 let's insert in our mean heap so we'll pick element and we'll directly insert that element in our mean heap data structure so this is 35 we have inserted this element in our mean heap data structure now what we are going to do we are going to remove the minimum from our mini data structure and we will add that in our max if. So up until this point in this uh, in this window we have 22 and 35. We see that we see that from right from this mini data structure if we have 22 and 35 if we partition here from the right we have to find out the we have to find out the um, minimum element right so what is the minimum here 35? And from the left, you have to find out the maximum element. What is the max? Max is 22. Since the length is odd of this window, so the median is the average of this two element. Now let's move forward. This is 30. Let's insert directly in our mean heap data structure right here. We see that we see that the minimum in this mean heap is 30. So let's remove it and let's add it in our max heap data structure. Now we see the size of max heap is a greater than min heap. So what we'll do, we'll remove the max from max heap and let's add it to min heap. So we'll have here 30 and 35. Let's move forward. We have 16. Let's insert in our min heap. Now let's remove the minimum from this min heap, which is 16. This is minimum. And let's add it in our max heap. Now we see that the min if the size of min if is equals to the size of max if we'll do nothing if we saw after inserting so first what we'll do we'll insert in the min if we we are inserting in min if insert in min if then remove from min if remove from min if the minimum element the remove from min if and add it to max if max if and then if we find out the size of max if is greater than min if then we will remove from max if we will add it to the min if we will see this algorithm this is not complicated if you understand the intuition this algorithm is easy so we have here 22 16 and here we have 30 and 35 and you clearly saw that on the left we have element 16 22 on the right we have 30 and 35 now if we are told uh, find out the median in this window or in this stream what is the median median is the we'll take the max from this 22 and the minimum from this so the average of this two is the median let's move uh, forward uh, we have here 18 now let's insert here 18 let's pick the minimum this is the minimum let's insert here now we see that uh, in our max heap data structure in our max heap data structure we have one more element than min heap data structure so let's remove the max max is 22 let's add it here let's add it here so in this window we get these two we get these two uh if so in the min if we have 16 18 and on the right we have 22 30 and 35 so uh 
the length is odd number length is odd number so the median is this we will remove the peak element or the minimum element from our mini data structure let's add here one more element if we add here one more element uh, let's insert here a 90 let's insert 90 uh, let's not line not 90 let's insert here 15 okay so we'll insert 15 right over here let's pick the minimum minimum is this element itself so let's insert here and here we see that the maximum element is 80 18 um, and we see the size are equal so we'll do nothing we are done now we if we partition this into two parts on the left we get 15 16 18 on the right we get 22 30 35 okay so what is the median of this uh, stream median is the average of these two that is the max of this and the minimum of this okay i hope you've understood this concept let's assume we have this flow of integers so first uh, eight let's insert eight in our min if let's remove it let's add it in our max if we see the size of minif is less than maxif, so let's um, let's remove the uh, peak element. Let's remove the peak element and let's add it here. So we get here eight. Now, if we uh, if we are asked find it median in this window, what is the median? Median is this eight because we have uh, odd number of elements in our current window or in our current uh, stream. So we'll return the peak element from the minif data structure. Let's move forward. We have here two. Let's insert in our minif data structure. And let's remove the minimum. Minimum is two. Let's insert in our max if. Now we see that the element in the both if are the same. So we'll do nothing. Let's move forward. Three. Let's insert in our min if. Let's find out the minimum. Minimum is three. Let's insert in our max if. Now we see the size of minif is less than max if. We know that in our minif data structure, we will have always just, always just equal element. If the size of this m, uh, if the size of min if is m and uh, the size of max if is n, we'll have this condition m equals to equals to n. The size of the both uh, both min if and max if are the same, or we'll have one more element in the min if. So here we see we have one more element on the max if. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the max element from max if, which is three. Let's remove and let's add here. Now if we want to find out the median of this uh, stream what is the median on the left you have two on the right you have three eight since the length is odd number uh, so we'll return the peak element from the mini beta structure which is a three the minimum element from the mini beta structure now let's move forward four let's insert four in our mini beta structure and let's remove now from here the minimum minimum is three let's add it in our max if so we see the size are the same now if we want to find out the median here what is the median on the max if we have two three on the mean if we have four eight the minimum from me the minimum from this we get four the maximum from this we get three the average of this two is 3.5 the median is two uh, uh, 3.5 actually so three plus uh, three plus four divided two equals to 3.5 let's move forward uh, five let's insert here let's remove the minimum four let's add it here let's remove the max from here because the size of min heap is less than this max if so let's remove the uh, max from here let's add it to the min heap let's move forward we have nine let's insert here let's remove the minimum four let's add it here the size of the equal so we have to do nothing now let's find out the median from this uh, stream we see the size is an uh, the size is an even number so let's take the max from max if which is four minimum from min if five so the average of this two element is the median which is 4.5 let's move forward this is our current element let's insert in our min if let's remove the minimum from here that is one let's add it in our max if we see the size of this max if is greater than the min if so let's remove the max four let's add it back here so what is the median in this uh, stream is the median is four let's move forward this is a six let's insert here let's remove the minimum four let's add here we see the size are the same so you have to do nothing uh, what is the median of this uh, stream the median is the average of middle two element so the uh, maximum from left is four plus the minimum from the right is five divided by two so this is the this is the median 
median 4.5 so answer is 4.5 for this uh, stream i hope you have understood how to solve this problem now let me explain the time and space complexity in this algorithm we have two method first insert insert method will take time complexity o of log n in order to insert element in our heap data structure we may call our heapify function uh, the heapify function will be called internally by the heap data structure and the space complexity is also o of log n because uh, in order to call our uh, in order to call heapify function we may call that using recursion so this is the log n is the height of the of the heap data structure a height that means heap is a kind of t data structure we know that so in order to uh, perform the heapifying process it will take of log n space complexity for the recursion call stack and we have another method find median find median this operation find me d n this operation will take constant this operation will take constant time and constant space complexity this is a very very important coding interview question now let's implement this algorithm first let's create our heap data structure we can create heap data structure using priority queue in java so priority queue will store in our in our heap integer so integer let's call it mean uh, let's call it first max if so max if equals to new priority queue we have to uh, we have to use here comparator let's use here a b and here b minus a so this is our this is our max if data structure now let's create mean heap data structure so priority queue will store integer so integer mean if equals to new priority queue and let's use here this comparator a b then a minus b so this is our maxi beta structure this is our mini beta structure instead creating here instead uh, creating here this priority queue we can do it right here something like this max if equals to this we can call inside this constructor or we can do it right here so let's do it inside constructor let's use here this and here mean if so we created our max if and min if data structure now we have to add element we have to add number in our heap data structure so first what we'll do we'll add directly in our mean heap data structure mean heap dot add num so we have added in the mean heap now let's remove the minimum from mean heap so mean heap dot pull so it will remove the minimum from the mean heap data structure and let's add the minimum in our max heap so max heap dot add okay now if we saw the size of mean heap mean heap is less than if the size of mean heap is less than max if dot size then what we'll do we'll remove the max from our max if so max if dot pull it will remove the max from our max if and let's add that in our min if min if dot add this this is a, a simple this is a simple algorithms if we understand the intuition then this is super easy i'll explain this one more times now let's let's implement this function find median so in this function what we will do we're gonna check if the size of our min if and max if data structure are the same so min if dot size equals to max if dot size if we saw the size are the same then what we will do we have to take the minimum from our min if and maximum from the max if so min if dot pick it will gives us the minimum plus max if dot pick it will gives us the maximum from max if and let's divide it by two in order to find out the median okay and let's return this value 
this is the median this is the con this is for even number even number of integers okay now if this condition is false that means we have to uh, we have to return whatever element we have in our mini data structure because in the mini if we may have we will have always just one more element if the size is an odd number the size of uh, the current stream is an odd number so return mean if dot pick this is our algorithm uh, you you see here uh, this algorithm works in constant time and constant space so constant time and uh, constant uh, space and here this algorithm we are just adding removing element from uh, from our one heap to another heap so you may think this is also constant but when you add it element in our mean heap we may need heapify and when you add element in our max heap we may need heapify okay the heapify process takes time complexity o of o of n if we have n element in the heap data structure already then it will take time complexity o of n and the space complex it will take actually log n not o of n in order to do heapifying process it will take a space complexity it will take time complexity o of log n and the space complexity is also log n because we may call our recursive function inside the heapifying uh, process we don't have to worry about that when we created this priority queue inside this priority queue we have all the process like heapifying process so for complexity analysis we just add it here this is our algorithm now let's compile and run this code we see accepted now let's submit this code i think it will pass all the test cases all right we have solved this problem successfully now let me explain this algorithm one more time if you already know how this works how this algorithm works then you can skip uh, you can skip the rest part of this video this is your maxif data structure and this is our minif data structure now let's insert element in our heap so first we have one so let's insert one in our min heap right here now let's remove from min heap the minimum element let's add it to the max heap now we see the size of min heap is less than the size of min heap is less than max heap so let's remove and let's add here let's move to this element too let's insert in min heap let's remove the minimum let's add it here we see size are the same the size of this two data structure are the same so this condition is false now let's move forward three let's insert here three let's remove minimum let's add it here so we removed minimum from min heap and we added to the max heap now we see the size of max heap is greater than min heap so let's remove the max from here and let's add it to the min heap now four let's remove uh, let's add four in our min heap let's remove the minimum two let's add it to the max if we see the size we see the size of max if and min if are the same this condition is false now if we want to find out the median from this uh, stream what we're gonna do we're gonna return the the max from max if which is two the minimum from min if which is three so the average of two plus uh, three uh, the average of two and three is 2.5 so 2.5 is the median now let's move forward we have 5 let's insert 5 in our min heap let's remove the minimum 3 let's add it to the max if we see the size of max if is greater than let's remove the max which is 3 let's insert right here so what is the median in our uh, in this uh, stream what is the median the median is the maximum the median is the minimum we have in this min heap because the size is because the size of uh, our current stream is an odd number so we're doing uh, what we're doing right here so if this condition is false that means we have to return the peak element or the minimum element from min heap uh, let's move forward six let's insert six right here let's remove the minimum which is three let's add it in our max heap this condition is false so we are done now if we call our find median what we will do we'll find the max from max heap three plus the minimum from min heap uh, 3 plus 4 divided 2 equals to 3.3 .3. this is the median this is the median the average of this middle two element so we partitioned our element into two uh, two heaps so first one two three and here we have four five uh, six so minimum from the right and maximum from the 
maximum from the uh, left. We are storing this in our maxif and we are storing this in the main heap. This is how this algorithm works. When we are inserting an element in our heap data structure, it creates three inside uh, inside the computer memory. Okay, and in the root we have the minimum element. If we insert a maximum element here, so it have to move the element to the bottom or somewhere else. Here we should have minimum element for mini data structure, and that's what we uh, that's what we gain by the heapifying process. You don't have to worry about the heapifying process. So that heapifying uh, heapifying process takes time complexity of a uh, log in and space complexity also of log in. I hope you've understood this video explanation. This is how we can solve this question. If you have any question, you can post your question on the Q&A forum. Thanks for watching this video. I will see you in the next video.